Um, we need to make sure we're going to that tornado safe place. That's a small windowless room, a place where you can wrap up in blankets and pillows, put on a helmet to protect yourself from debris and stay there until we can give you uh, the all clear on this. And so it is fairly high up that we're looking on this. And I do want to talk to, we have our meteorologist, uh, Gabe Maynard and Chris Knowles that are in the Tilatoba area. We'll talk to them here in a moment. Uh, if we could get a hold of them to just kind of see what they are seeing as uh, this thunderstorm been going on for a while, producing big hail earlier. Let's track where we're specifically kind of focused on with this for a moment. And it's very near Charleston. Um, and we're just looking really high up. So give me a chance here as I kind of go between a couple of questionable choices just because of how far away we're looking. I put just on the north side there of Charleston where we have our area of circulation and moving northeast at the speed at about 50 miles per hour or so. Uh, let's go 60 miles per hour on it. So 60 miles per hour, Long Branch, Water Valley, Taylor, and Oxford all uh, eventually in the path of this. So Charleston, we're looking at this for you for uh, 824 there. Um, working our way toward uh, Oakland at 832, Water Valley 849, and uh, Oxford at 901. So this is Doppler radar indicated rotation could potentially develop into a tornado here pretty soon. So um, got to make sure we're uh, taking this one seriously there. Uh, as we kind of back things off, just kind of get a sh shot of what we're looking at here as a whole. I do want to make sure that, you know, just for long st distance calling purposes, you know, some folks out here um, near um, the north of Yazoo City, near Belzona, um, south of Greenwood. This one is heading toward Winona. This one is a tornado emergency. Um, nearly mile wide tornado on the ground with that a few minutes ago. And that's what we last couple days we talked about. If you got that lone storm by itself doing its own thing that it could be really bad. This is one where the tornado could stay on the ground for a while. There's nothing out there to really kind of impede it. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to double check our speed. We're going to do a long track on this to give as much heads up as possible in advance of this one because it's 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 a bad one there. So let's check the wind. As you can see, I mean, clear cut, strong tornado on it, and the description there, not pleasant, obviously. Um, and so on this long track, they go, they're going 55 miles per hour on it, so let's keep it 60. And I want to get that get, get a time for folks that are in Winona, because this one is one that will still be causing problems at that point. Winona, I show this uh, getting closer to you by 925, assuming about 55 to 60 miles per hour. Duck Hill, 932. French Camp, 938. Alva 942, Catarata 947, and 951 there, Eupora. Um, it's worth thinking ahead, and this is one where I would highly recommend that if you look around the four walls around you and you look at these tornado safety rules and you don't know that that necessarily applies to you, snap a picture and let some folks know this is a bad one causing significant damage at this instant and could, no guarantees it'll stay on the ground this long, but could affect some of these folks there. Snap a picture if you know someone that lives in Montgomery, um, Webster County's got a ways to go before it gets to you, but that one is a bad one. Um, it's kind of the worst case scenario of what we thought might happen today ongoing with that, and it is still heading our direction. The tornado warning that has been issued for um, uh, locations around Oxford, Water Valley, and back out here uh, north of Tillatoba is one that we're watching. I'm trying to figure out, do we have Gabe and Chris? Okay. Um, we'll get them up here in just a second. As soon as we do, go ahead and let me know. Um, so we'll talk to them. They are in the Tillatoba area. The area of rotation is just a little bit west of them. Um, we're right about there in Tillatoba. So this is not something that's going to hit Tillatoba. That's why we have them there. Um, we have them close, but we don't want to put them in a path of um, something bad. And obviously, we don't want you to be in the path of something bad either. So very near 35 there, approaching Enid. This would be Enid Lake right there, all in the path of this area circulation. So let's get a storm track on this for some folks and um, closer time there. Enid, of course, that would be pretty close to the Enid Dam there. Uh, Enid, we're looking at about 832 for you. Hubbard Creek at 837. Eureka Springs at 841. The Shuford area at about uh, 843. Water Valley, of course, a lot of folks in there. And Water Valley, 850 and 853 in the Springdale area. Our uh, meteorologist, Gabe Maynard, joining us here. Um, I'll go ahead and step out of the way here for a moment. Gabe, what are you all seeing? Yeah, so we're currently in, just off of 55, facing west behind me. You might see a few lightning flashes, but the wind, the wind is really starting to pick up along with that rainfall. So it is something to monitor. We are just outside of a Exxon gas station and everyone in there is weather aware. They have a bathroom just in the interior part. So as you're saying, they found that safe place. They know where to go 
And outside of this, just five miles down the road, there is that volunteer fire department if you're looking to find that safe place. So there are plenty of spaces available if you're looking for somewhere to go. Just make sure you know where that is before it's right in your area. You, you're talking about it, Matt. It's making its way towards I'm right here. And so it is just something to monitor continuing throughout the night. Hey, Gabe, okay, I want to keep you up for just a second here. Um, the, the winds where you're at, um, do you still think you're in inflow winds where you're at? Are they kind of south-southeast, or have they kicked southwest and cooler yet? I would say they're still a little bit warm, but they're trending cooler. I, it started out, I mean, a lot warmer than what we're experiencing now, but it's cooling down as that continues to prog progress on through. Um, at first, when the lightning was really picking up and we saw it starting to move in just over I-55, that's when we felt the warmest. Now, now it's feeling a little bit cooled down, and so I really feel like you know the worst of it may be a little bit north. Um, but just so far, it's just something to, something to monitor. But yeah, I would say it's cooling down. Okay, the last 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, same or any sort of difference that you're noticing? It's getting a little bit worse regarding the rainfall and wind, but. I would say the lightning has but temp temp temperature down wise, a little like bit. Temperature wise, does it feel like it's about the same? Temperature, temperature wise, I would say it's dropped a little bit, maybe a degree or two. Not really anything too major, but yeah, there's definitely something starting to happen in regards to the temperature difference. Okay, we'll talk to you. Keep keep your shot up here in a second. Once you, once you start to get a little bit, um, we'll look we'll look at the shot. Might have you guys um, where you're protected. We'll look at that here in a couple of minutes. All right. That's our meteorologist Gabe Maynard and Chris Knowles. They are in the Tillatoba area right there, uh, kind of monitoring this. And so the reason they are outside is they are just outside of this tornado warning. Uh, Oakland, we need to make sure that you are in your tornado safe place. And just north of Charleston, here's where that area of circulation is the most pronounced. Hubbard Creek, of course, up around um, Enid Lake is where this is heading with the potential that it could try to produce a tornado. I'm Chief Meteorologist Matt Lopin alongside, as you saw a moment ago there, our Gabe Maynard and Chris Knowles uh, in Tillatoba in Yalabusha County, our John DeLusic here behind the scenes, as well as our Anae Scales. And John and Anae, is there anything that you're seeing in our chat? I mean, it's night, so sometimes uh, not a lot of information comes in. Anything you're seeing on Twitter or social media? I'm not seeing much of anything right now. Uh, again, it's because but the big one is down there in the Rolling Fork, north and east of Rolling Fork. Again, nothing seen uh, from the one that's now been issued here recently for Lafayette County and Tallahatchie, excuse me, for uh, Yalabusha County. Not seeing anything online right now. Okay, and, and you're right in saying Tallahatchie because that's northern Tallahatchie there. Same, same thing, Anna, nothing yet? Okay. Okay, yeah, I mean, and like, like she said a second ago, uh, nothing yet, it's just rolling fork. Um, I have all of our storm shelters on here. It's important to, to kind of point these out for a second. There's a lot that we have logged at WTVA.com if you're ahead of this. Um, we talked about it earlier that we need to be getting within at least steps of that storm shelter or at least moving to someone's house that counts. If you're outside of this tornado warning, we still have a few moments. Be thinking ahead about um, where you would go. Um, she mentioned Rolling Fork a moment ago. Um, there have been tons of reports of uh, a tornado down there and still a significant tornado emergency ongoing out of that. That's that storm we said long track there heading toward the Winona area. I'm going to go to the wind mode on that and I'm going to take off all of the lightning strikes that you're looking at here. Um, and I mean, you don't have to be a meteorologist to pick out where that's bad. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a really rough one. So I want to make sure long track here that we have a good angle based on where we're looking at here. Um, I think that's, that's fairly close to where we have it. So again, we're looking Grenada on this wide shot. We don't know precisely where it's going to go, uh, but we do know that this has been well forecast in a lot of our projections as a storm that could do bad things, already likely has touched down with a mile wide tornado, um, and if tornado is still in progress at this moment. So we're looking at Winona at 927 there, Grenada at 935, Eupor at 952, and Bruce at about 1005, Calhoun City at 1001. Um, John, I'm gonna trade you places here for just a second here okay. um, as, as we kind of look and see what uh, what we're seeing? We can pull up John's shot for a okay. second. Okay. Well, just uh, as where I could pull up my shot over here. I, I'll be on this. I'm on three. Okay. So again, you can see that storm again in the Rolling Fork area. I'm telling you right now, folks. I am. Uh, these are not pictures that are allowed for us. I can at least describe to you what I'm seeing online. It's major destruction in Rolling Fork. I can tell you that right now from the pictures. I've seen a few. 
uh, that have come out so far. And that tornado is headed northeast and will stay uh, just a hop, skip, and jump off to our southwest here for the immediate future, but it will move into our area. So folks like in Winona, you need to be very careful that uh, this storm is headed your way. Uh, it's going to be uh, moving uh, in your area here in the next half hour or so. And again, this is a tornado that was on the ground, and I'm, like I said, referring to, I'm not saying that, you know, it's, uh, uh, Matt, there is some major destruction on, online on some of these photos that are coming in, but we are not allowed to show them because they're not to our... We have not yeah, they, yeah, we haven't cleared yet, but I'm telling you, it's a major, major time in the rolling forward. I'm reading that there are people trapped, so there's major... They, they're asking and and, and we, and we have to be careful on. because we'll, well, that, that information will come, come as we go, as so we sure. can kind of verify that, but okay. um, uh, clearly they're, they're not a good sign. So that's, that's the long term. That's why we're tracking this, even with another tornado warning closer at hand. We know that one's doing bad things, and unfortunately it is still targeting part of our area. As we come back up here um, and we look at this uh, tornado warning, we'll reset here for just a moment. I'm Chief Meteorologist Matt Lawpon alongside John, as you've heard from our meteorologist John DeLusic a moment ago, our Nay Scales here behind the scenes at WTVA 9 News as well. Um, we talked to our Gabe Mayner just a, a few moments ago and Chris Knowles in the Tillatoba area. Um, let's talk to our Craig Ford that's up in the Oxford area if we can um, bring that up as he. I'm trying to go out back behind the. Okay, we'll look at we'll get um, Craig up here in just a moment. As he, as you saw a second ago, he is doing the right thing. As much as I want to show you, you know, video of what's going on, Craig is coming out of shelter for a moment. Now he does have some time. If I'm in Oxford, I show 9:02 current time is about a half hour away, so he has a few moments to walk outside. But as we've talked about, you have to be within steps of your shelter. He was in his safe place in his shelter. That's the way to do it. I would always rather show you inside shelter shots when we get signal as opposed to being out there hot dogging it. We want to make sure that we keep our people safe so we can report on it and not become the story itself. So we show Enid at 832, Hubbard Creek 837, Springdale 852, Alesville at 858, Oxford 902, and our meteorologist, well, he's a lot of things. Meteorologist isn't one of them, but our Craig Ford there uh, in the Oxford area um, ahead of this. What are people saying? How's it going there? What are you seeing? Now let me give you an idea. We are behind fire station number four, which is on the west side of the city. Right behind the fire station are a couple of storm shelters. We've already had some people. You could probably hear the, the uh, tornado sirens going off right now. Obviously, there are people who are concerned because of this tornado warning. We've been seeing flashes of light for probably the last uh, 30 to 40 minutes. You know, driving in from Pontotoc here to Oxford, you can see it out in the distance, but obviously there's fo there are folks here who are trying to take cover. Again, there are multiple storm shelters in Oxford, in Lafayette County. I happen to be at the one at fire station number four. Again, this is on uh, Mall Drive. It's literally just, uh, just south of uh, West Jackson Street, and you can see those flashes of light. People already taking shelter, taking precautions because of this tornado warning that's been issued. Craig, I mean, does it, we talked about, you know, with the ball game tonight, do we think the people are taking this seriously, getting to where they need to go? Or, I mean, I'm still seeing an awful lot of folks on the street on them dot camps. Yeah, and it would not surprise me. In course, you know, West, you know, West Jackson versus the Square. You know, that's night and day. As as we showed earlier in our newscast, there were a lot of folks there on the Square. I don't know if those folks are necessarily taking it seriously. Of course, they're already inside, which is good. But still, you've got a lot of folks who will be milling around outside. So my guess is those folks are going to have to try to cram into some of those places there on the square uh, if it gets really, really nasty. And of course, you know as well as I do, even though we've got this advance warning, once it turns, once the weather starts going downhill in, in a big way, it goes fast and that's when things can, can go sideways in a hurry. Oh, by the way, let me, and, and I don't think I'm, I'm out of school here, just gonna let you know, again, this is fire station number four. This is one of multiple storm shelters in Oxford and in Lafayette County. The storm shelters are those green, green things over there in, in the distance you probably can see. But uh, there you see the firefighters there. Again, a lot of folks standing by. Uh, we're basically just waiting to see what happens. I'm gonna flip the camera over here again. You may, hopefully you can see some of the swaying in the trees there. 
Uh, we're just waiting, watching, and again, sirens going off here in Oxford and in Lafayette County because of that tornado warning. And of course, we'll take, we are taking cover and hopefully it will be, uh, it'll be over sooner rather than later. Okay, that's our Craig Ford there in Lafayette County. I appreciate uh, his report and would like to see a few more of these people heading in. If you know some folks, maybe your kids go to Ole Miss, let's give them a phone call. Let them know that something is up that they need to be paying uh, close attention to. Along that route, this is what this looked like when it was back um, to the south and west. I believe this is back in Bolivar County. Let me double check here. Um, this is our stand with the North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters uh, taking some pictures here and sending this, uh, the, some of the rotating part of that thunderstorm when it moved through that area there about an hour ago. So as we continue to kind of monitor this, I'm going to bring this back to Storm Track Doppler radar. Uh, and as we do, we're looking, of course, at that, that storm now about the rotating part of it trying to cross into sections there of uh, northern, I'd say, Yalabusha County, pretty much right near Hubbard Creek and close to Enid Lake, where we're looking at that at the moment. Um, my wind is showing it just slightly back behind that. I'm going to try to see if we can pull up um, a different wind mode here, and we might be just outside the realm of it. Nope, there we go. So this is from the Memphis Airport. Uh, and it has our area of circulation slightly north up there, just north of Hubbard Creek, just north of Enid Lake, where it shows it at this moment. So I'm going to track it based off of that, and then we'll, we'll, we're going to you know, review this and look at a couple other sites to get, make sure we have the most up-to-date time there. So we're showing 8.57. Current time is 9 excuse me, 8.35. So 8.57 for Oxford. Looking at Taylor, 8.51. Aylesville there at 8.53. This is Doppler radar indicated rotation. Um, it could potentially produce a tornado. It's now just east of Highway 55 and will approach US 278 uh, as it makes its way toward the Oxford area. Double checking our angle now to see the angle takes it will take it pretty close to Oxford. It's kind of on a, on a on a route that would take it pretty close to Oxford there if it continued moving in. So um, if parents you have been able to convince your kids to pay attention here for a couple of moments, let's give them um, what they need to know as we show the time frame here, and this might be also something you can do, just um, shoot them a text with the time here that we're showing. Uh, so I show Oxford somewhere around 8.55-ish. Let me check another radar just to make sure that that, that all kind of lines up correctly. Yeah, that's about the right spot. So we're looking right about in here. That radar is that radar's running behind, so we're going to stick with the one from the airport, generally speaking, right about there. And so near the Shufford area, Shufford area. Uh, and so we track that Oxford 855. Okay, now parents, snap a picture, send it to the kids, make sure that they're aware that this is a storm that could potentially produce a tornado. Um, and yeah, I mean, Weather Service and also mentioning it, and it's crossed I-55. We're at about the right spot on this, so make sure they're aware this could potentially be a tornado moving toward Oxford. Obviously, it's over top of the Shufford area. Burgess at 847. We show Taylor at 849. Give or take a couple minutes here, Oxford about 855. So we're within, um, within about uh, 15 to 20 minutes of it crossing. Uh, that location there. Let's go wider here for a moment. Let's double check the the big bad storm down south because again, long tracked, long lived tornado um, still possible back here near Belzona. Uh, the warning for that running ahead going not quite to Winona or Duck Hill, but certainly they're trying to make sure they have a lot of heads up that this could be something rough heading that direction there. We we'll go back to the wind mode. And it unfortunately remains a situation where meteorology degree not necessary to find this one. That's bad. Uh, still showing the tornado debris signature on that near the Silver City area. Um, and so making sure we have an updated time based on that updated debris signature location and give you some extended times on this. And this, there is more than a decent chance this tornado does not make it as far as this track is going to go. But I would rather give some folks a long, 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 long heads up, say Tupelo close to 11 o'clock, uh, Houston close to about 10.20 or so, Mantee at 10.13. I want to make sure that you know, that folks know that this is a confirmed tornado that has been large, um, has potentially, according to early reports, caused some significant damage uh, and certainly needs to 
um, be taken, taken seriously. I mean, just for a second here, I, I did this track a moment ago, and the folks uh, at the Weather Service just mentioned, hey, this is going to come, could potentially come through Monroe County. There we are, Aberdeen. They're thinking the same thing we are. Because here's the thing. When we have high-end tornadoes, typically there's one or two storms that produce that kind of activity, and that's it. Um, but they can produce those sorts of severe weather for hours and over the course of multiple tornadoes. So I don't think it's too excessive to track this as far north and east as we have. In fact, I'm going to take it to where it goes all the way out of the WTVA 9 News viewing. I'll see if it... Um, unfortunately, I can't cycle out some of these, some of these cities that aren't in there. Um, but, I mean, we're talking uh, one that could potentially hold on for quite a while. Let's reset he things here for a moment. I'm Chief Meteorologist Matt Lawpon alongside our meteorologist John DeLusick. We're watching a pair of tornado warnings, one that does include the WTVA 9 News viewing area, one that will potentially, if it continues at the rate it's going now. Both storms are moving about 60 miles per hour. And if you're watching us right now on the Mississippi side of things, you are under a tornado watch. And while this looks like it barely cuts off for Lowndes, Monroe, Itawamba, you're also included in that tornado watch because of these thunderstorms. One positive thing is that I have not spent even a second talking about this storm here south of Macon. Our Ethan Foster is there in Macon. He's at the emergency management location. This was one of those lead storms that was rotating, um, really concerned us during five and six o'clock broadcasts. It's now starting to weaken just a little bit, so positive sign there um, that at least that one that far east uh, has been uh, unsuccessful at producing something. Um, we'll have to watch there. I would like to talk back to Gabe. Uh, if we could here in a moment, he's going to probably be in the rain. He's probably going to have to shoot from inside the car. That's okay if that's what we need to do. Um, also, these storms near Coffeyville, I know there's some heavy rainfall there, and obviously it depends county to county on whether or not tornado sirens go off for the whole county. It's reasonable, Yalabusha County, they're going off. Coffeyville, the tornado threat is actually with this part of the thunderstorm there. It's in Panola County working up toward Oxford. So if you're in Coffeyville, this is heavy rainfall. Probably some lightning to go along with it, though I don't show a ton of lightning showing up with that. And the storm is kind of sort of rotating, but it's got a long ways to go before, um, before it could do something else. And saying that, though, there we are um, being able to pick up that area circulation a little more closely. This is from Monroe County, a long ways away, but it has a good angle. Okay, and let's look at the Memphis radar, the Memphis uh, airport radar. That's about the right spot there. So still about that Shufford area. So subtract that near Highway 315. That'd be Mississippi Highway 315. Again, still heading toward Oxford, somewhere between about uh, 858, some give or take a few minutes. Again, 855 to 9 o'clock is when that moves through the point on the map that says Oxford. And what you'll probably notice where Oxford is is there's a city grid back there. In fact, most of Oxford looks like it's southwest of where that's actually pegging. So southwest side of Oxford, probably closer to that 854 um, that we're showing you on there. So that is a Doppler radar indicated area of rotation, potential tornado uh, that uh, certainly needs to be respected uh, as it moves into southwest Lafayette County. The southern storm here, they're upgrading this uh, lead warning to a tornado emergency as well. And report now coming in from one northeast to Rolling Fork. One individual was injured so far. Uh, trapped in what was described as a truck stop near Rolling Fork after a tornado moved through town, at least one injury at that location. So unfortunately now we have our first injury from this thunderstorm here when it's back around Rolling Fork, a lot more intense there. This is still working toward our area um, and we do anticipate that it will be, um, unless something changes, prayers always welcome there, um, eventually that's heading toward Winona and the Vaden area. But in the nearer term, this is now at a point where this is kind of moving on the north side of Enid Lake or just north of Enid Lake as we kind of go between a few different radar sites here to see if we can find one that has the best look at it. That's Memphis. It's looking all the way from Monroe County. I'm going to keep that one, even though it's not perfect. That's the one I'm going to go with. And we're going to show our area of circulation that definitely looks more uh, pronounced than it was just a little bit ago right there. So um, it's going to track near Mississippi Highway 328 in Lafayette County. Let me know in my ear when we do have the opportunity to talk to the folks um, uh, down there, if, if we can, Gabe and Chris. I don't, I don't know if they're, if they're out of pocket now, but okay. So yeah, whenever, whenever that's ready, just go ahead and let me know. 
Um, so this is about to cross into Lafayette County on the southwest side of town. And Taylor, we show uh, at... Uh, 852 Altus at 904. I did a ridiculously long track on the other storm. I'm going to do a track, but it's not quite as long on this one that gets us um, farther through the area um, just to kind of you know cast a wider net on this one. It's not as intense, but projections have shown storms in this zone attempting to produce tornadoes as well, perhaps even a couple that are strong. So that exists there. So 959, about nine o'clock, obviously for Oxford. We're looking at Springdale at 850, uh, Taylor at 852. But if it goes down, down, downstream, we're Denmark at 906 there, uh, Bethlehem community at about uh, 917, Darden at 920, and eventually there Myrtle by around 925, New Albany 929, uh, north side there, New Albany by about 930. So we still, obviously, that's about 45 minutes away. A lot can change over that time, um, but but we'll have to watch this one closely. Let's go to the wind mode here, um, a little closer in. And so we show the wind mode on the Memphis one. Yeah, I show it right at that intersection between 315 and I believe that's 328 there southwest of Taylor. That's where we would put our area of circulation, our potential tornado as of now. Um, can we can we pull up our, our Gabe Maynard? Let's talk to him for just a second. Okay, Gabe, what do you got down there south? So. It's currently quiet. I mean, the rain was pouring in. Earlier we had to back all the way up about 20 feet because the rain was blowing basically straight across. I mean, horizontal to the surface. So it was the crazy winds, crazy rainfall. One thing I do want to point out was how much lightning was taking place. You mentioned that the tornado warning and that inflow was just a little bit north of us. So I got my camera, I pointed it north, and I saw tons of lightning just circulating that area. And I mean, that was just showing a lot of convection in that place because of the lightning that was happening. And so I, I posted it on Twitter. So, I mean, you guys can take a look at it, but it was just crazy how concentrated that was. Other than that, the wind has been crazy. The rain has been crazy. We heard a little bit of the tornado warning, uh, but since it's north, I mean, we're staying prepared and we're staying aware. So we know where to go, but luckily that has avoided us. I did talk to our anchor, AC Barker up in Oxford, and she's currently going to her safe place, but she was talking about the tornado sirens. She said it looks eerie and it's just overall a scary situation. So she's taking cover over there, and I recommend all the people at Oxford to do the same as that system continues up towards that area. But I mean, listen to it. You can hear that rain happening, the lightning in the background. It's, it's just continuing as the night progresses. Okay, that's our meteorologist Gabe Maynard. Um, can we pop Gabe down and Gabe still hear me for a second? Because we need to make, make it to where Gabe can hear me if you can and keep his, his microphone up. Let's talk about where they go. I'm, I think we're gonna cycle them south. I wanna get them, let's see timing here on how far out this, this um, tornado emergency storm is. So uh, I put it, what, right about there? Belzona, I show, let's double check that, about 40 minutes to Winona. So I think it would probably make sense if we went to Grenada, what do you think, Gabe, here? Grenada, or do we feel comfortable? I don't know we need to go to Duck Hill. I think we can go to Grenada on 55 and then cycle behind it. You agree? I would say stay on 55 and be ready to move. Um, I, would you say north as that system is making its way on through? No, no, no. Uh, I, I would say we go 55 to Grenada maybe just on the south side of Grenada, let okay. the, the, the strong tornado, if it's still producing, either way, let's let it pass through Duck Hill um, and then come, and come on the back side of it, uh, either follow Highway 8 there, back out toward Calhoun City or, or cycle south if we know that we potentially had damage there. That makes sense? Yes, sir. That sounds good. Okay, that's our meteorologist Gabe Maynard, Chris Knowles. Thank you very much. Be safe, be safe, be smart. Um, Okay, call, call the confirm. Thank you. Appreciate that, Pat. Um, so again, we're, we're looking at this because we anticipate, I'm anticipating, and hopefully we're wrong about this, but, um, but this thunderstorm here could continue to produce a tornado for quite a while longer. I mean, so to kind of nail down what we were talking about a moment ago there, assuming still 60 miles per hour, and we'll probably verify that. Winona, we're looking about 932 for you, what has been a a, a significant confirmed tornado. Let's make sure that that is moving 60. We've, we've spent enough time tracking this. I want to just double check that we're agreeing with Weather Service. No, they're down to 45 on that. John, can we double check that speed? Um, if we could, we'll double check that. Um, that would be that. that uh, 
the Belzona. And that's where that's where Stan is at. He's so he's on that one. He's on that one. Is he his... had zero visibility here about five minutes ago? Okay. Well, let's see if we can pull up a nay on your computer. There, we should hold on. Let's see here on your computer. This should be Stan's video. Yes. So let's make this put it in play and make it full. So this is that thunderstorm that's moving toward uh, Winona now. Give me a moment to pop it up. Weather three. So this is the one that's moving there toward uh, Winona. Um, near zero visibility from our Standora a little bit ago. He is uh, in the rainfall there trying to you know, stay in the correct spot to keep himself safe, but obviously find out um, what this is producing. We do not recommend that you do uh, storm spotting like this. The folks at the North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters have been doing this for years. Um, someone was mentioning on social media where you know, basically to the um, anniversary of one of the Tishmingo tornadoes a couple years back, Stan was in that one. Um, and almost almost literally in it. Um, so so they have um, a lot of experience, know what they're doing, and we recommend that you stay uh, in that tornado safe place. And again, that tornado safe place in either of these cases, a small windowless room, a place where you can wrap up in blankets and pillows, put yourself there until we can give you the all clear. Speaking specifically now about Lafayette County up here, um, as we come back to this one, Oxford, you know, for folks there uh, in the Oxford area, highly encourage you to be uh, in your tornado safe place. A new tornado warning issued downstream from this that does include the New Albany area and it is for this area of circulation. You'll notice that it kind of changes a few times here and I'm actually covering up the area that's probably most likely spot there to be the tornado. Somewhere in that Taylor area south of 278 is where we show it right now. So downstream here um, I would encourage you to pay close attention to the times here for the bottom half. I'm going to refine this here in a moment. So I'm going to make sure we've got the exact spot for you in a second. So use these with a grain of salt for a second here. This is what I'm trying to pay attention to. Downspring there, uh, we're looking for ECRU at about 927. This is Doppler radar indicated area of rotation that could potentially be a tornado uh, moving toward you in New Albany. We show 930 as we had in that storm track a little bit ago. Blue Mountain by about 936. And let's do an extra long track at that same angle there. And that extra long track says perhaps even uh, Ayuka, um, close to about 1023. But once again, I think, I think that is still at that 60 miles per hour. And that's where I need to bring our meteorologist, John DeLusic, back here for a moment to make sure that we have the right speed there. John? The, uh, speed for the one that's down there, that was at a rolling fork heading into our southern viewing area, that one's going at about 50 to 55 miles an hour. That's a pretty the good The southern clip. one? Yeah. Okay, so they're, they're so track, actually not... tracking a little too slow, okay? Yeah. So and no, this I, I... one, I think we just had at 50 as well. I'll check that one out too. Okay, so, so let's adjust the time, and this is what we talked about a moment ago there, that perhaps we'd have to tweak some of these times. There, we show about 9.39, so we've given you an extra few minutes there in New Albany, uh, Blue Mountain at 9.46. Might not hold together all the way down here, but there's a tornado potential, and certainly uh, there's a hail potential with that as well. Um, so we're watching that as we bring it in closer for folks there who live in the Oxford area. Um, highly recommend that you make your way to your tornado safe place. Uh, as we often say, that small windowless room, that sturdy structure that we're mentioning there. As we bring up some of our cameras there in the Lafayette County area, as you would imagine, they are starting to light up with a more lightning, um, the heavy rainfall, obviously, as well. It looks like our cameras on the west side of town far west side of town aren't coming up, so let's go right there at the intersection. I believe that's um, 6 and Jackson. As they're slowly coming up, uh, nearly nonstop cloud to ground lightning there. I do at some point here in a minute uh, want to try to touch base with our uh, Craig Ford, who's there. Um, he There's more than a decent chance he is in the shelter, and that is just fine if he is in the shelter. Um, and uh, so, so we'll see if we can get, get in contact with him here in a minute. As we um, he's good. We can bring him up. Okay, let's bring up Craig here for a second. We'll take him full and we'll be about minute, minute and a half at most so we can make sure we're still, um, we're still tracking this. All right, let's go. Craig, what you got? Max, I'll tell you what, the past 15, 20 minutes, I've heard some, uh, probably the worst uh, thunder I've heard in a very, very long time. For those of you who don't know where I'm at, I'm actually coming to you from inside of fire station number four in Oxford, where we have had, uh, you know, we've, it's Anything been windy. Of course, it's been windy uh, for really a, a good, good part of the evening. Matt, you still with me? Yes, I can. Yeah, I can hear you. Say, yeah, go for it. Okay. All right. Just want to double check. We're still. 
And, and we and we've been following the the weather service chat just like you and John have been. We know that whatever this is, it's not anything that's touched down, but still it's something that is of concern. We know that it's a, it's apparently headed for the Oxford area. I guess they, they you know in the next five to ten minutes. So right now it's rainy. You can probably see the flashes of lightning in the distance. Again, we're on the west side of Oxford. I know the trees kind of obscure, but I think you could pretty much get you get an idea as to what kind of weather we're experiencing here. And we're going to stay put till we get the all clear. Okay, that that is our great point there in Oxford. Stay safe. Um, I would I would be in that tornado safe place just to be careful there. I show it near Taylor, kind of coming up old Taylor Road from the southwest, pretty much over top of Taylor where I'd have our area circulation. So we're going to stay in close here for the next few minutes uh, as this approaches uh, the Oxford area. Uh, of course, what we're looking at this moment is a Doppler radar indicated area of rotation. Um, that, that we're tracking there into the Oxford area from the south and west. We might talk to Ethan here in a little bit. We can go ahead and power him down to save power though for a little bit. It's going to be a while before we go there. Probably 15 minutes. Let's make a, let's double check that. Or Ethan Foster down there in Noxaby County on that storm. That just to double check, John, the Noxaby County storm is not one we have to be on at the moment, right? Right now, no. It does not look like it's uh, uh, the last I saw. It was not even a, a warned um, tornado warned at least. Okay. So, so keep keep an eye on that one. Um, okay. we'll, we'll, as this is basically coming into a populated area, we got to watch this very closely in the Oxford area. So the south side of town, uh, where this is kind of moving in at this moment, um, area of rotation. Uh, Ane, are you seeing anything on Stan's uh, live feed there? Because he's looking for damage uh, back in that southern storm. Does he have some there? Looks like he has some kind of damage. Uh, let's go ahead. I will pop that into a box for just a moment here. I think we still have that in a box. There you go. So that's some of the damage on that storm that's moving toward Winona. So that's uh, Stan with the North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters with that shot there. Um, so that is not the same storm that we are showing you here. Um, and Anae, I'm going to have that up for a moment. So you want to probably double check the monitor before we, before we bring that down. Um, but it's just a reminder that, that we can get damage out of these storms. And so Oxford, we show 902 the time as it's moving in. So I, as I'm, I'm going to pull up the, the track where we can kind of pull in basically everything, uh, all the little road stops and everything in here. So we'll go 55 on this one. Meteorologist John Delusic says it's about the speed we've got this. As we track this into the Oxford area, um, obviously we hope and pray that you are uh, taking this seriously and in that tornado safe place because um, this is an example of some of that damage that they have in the Delta. We'll bring that back up when we go south here in a minute. Um, but obviously this is a, a near-term track of all the different places there. The university, we're showing at 9 p.m. there, Oxford Elementary School, 9.02. Current time is 8.56, so our time is almost out for these folks. Your yeah, kid goes to Ole Miss. Um, at the very least, this is going to be hail, um, but it's probably also going to be some strong winds and the potential that this could try to produce a tornado. As I bring this back and we check some of our MDOT cams there, well, that's a vastly different shot than we would look at this a minute ago, isn't it? Let's see if we could pull this up here for a moment. Uh, it's... Uh, definitely looking rough going through town there. You can see the sheets of rainfalls. We're looking uh, back to the east. We're going to look the other way into it there as we're looking back to the west. We're going to kind of take it full on. Um, what I'm looking here for a moment is seeing how much this is kind of bobbing around. West side of Oxford um, is kind of the area where things would be kind of curling back into that thunderstorm, that rotation. So here we have those folks on the road. Call, call, call some folks. Believe it or not, your phone call might be the thing that helps them pay attention uh, and, and actually get to safety. So unfortunately, a lot of these MDOT camps there in Oxford uh, showing that rainfall picking up as this uh, dangerous storm is moving into town pretty much as we speak. So as I go back to the wind mode here on Storm Track Doppler radar, I mean, we're basically um, coming up Old Taylor Road right now into Oxford. Um, so... I'm going to, again, for a moment here, I'm going to pull up the square as we kind of show uh, the cameras there. And as you might imagine, um, the rainfall picking up there as well, uh, starting to. It looks like it really hasn't quite. You can see it in the foreground there. The sheet's kind of coming in. See how that's picking up? I'll see if I can um, pull that shot up there. I believe that is our west camera. Give me a moment. 
Um, gusts 36 miles per hour, but picking up as you see those sheets of rainfall with the wind kicking up. Wind gusts as quickly as they're kind of moving across there, still probably only about 40 miles per hour, but expected to increase. This more of a potential for um, a tornado, honestly, than it is, and hail than it is uh, damaging winds at this point here. So coming right up along uh, Old Taylor Road where we have this area circulation now. I'm going to check the um, radar site out of the Memphis airport. Its positioning is not quite the same as what we looked at on the other shot there. I mean, it shows it pretty much near Highway 7. Let's check to see if that lines up. That one might, might be running just a little fast. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's reasonable. South Lamar Boulevard in Oxford, where we show this uh, area circulation, at least on the rainfall mode. Yeah, still showing up there on StormTrack Doppler radar. Let's check for debris. And thankfully at this point, I do not have indications of tornado debris on this. Uh, as I kind of quickly go back and forth and poke and prod this here, um, I'm going to look from down in Monroe County at it. Yeah, I mean, I put it right along Highway 7, south side. I mean, honestly, southern half of Oxford. I can't say definitively exactly where this is, um, but it's moving through Oxford now. Let's check our cameras kind of on the east side of town. I'm going to check the camera looking south. Um, looking into that, obviously moving around a lot. This is, um, I believe that's Highway 7. Looking south there, and unfortunately we still have cars that are on the road moving around in this. So um, really hoping this doesn't turn into something worse than this. Got to make sure we call folks and let them know that they are in the danger zone. Um, go ahead, John. What? Lamar and University. Hold yeah, on. Check it, check it. Winds are at least about 40, I'd say. They're coming uh, in a really good is this, clip right now. Hold on, hold on, jump, double check here. Um, okay, yes, I see what you're talking about. That's the one we were looking at a moment ago there. And let's look at the northern cam camera. So obviously, I think, what is the big heads up in this for a moment? If you're in Oxford, this is what it looks like outside. We need you to be inside. We need you to be in your tornado safe place, a small windowless room, a place where we can um, wrap up in blankets and pillows and stay there until we can give you the all clear. Um, and obviously that guy, Jeep guy, not the case. But you know who is? That's our Craig Ford. He is in shelter right now as this storm is moving in. Craig, uh, 30 seconds. Let's talk here real quick. What are you seeing there? Matt, I don't know if you're seeing. I'm looking out the front of fire station number four. You can see the heavy rain. You can see the wind. It is pounding right now. Obviously, what you've been talking about, you are seeing it right here. Of course, we've got lightning as well. Folks here taking shelter. Hopefully, this will be over sooner rather than later, Matt. That's our Craig Ford there, and, and, and we'll make sure that we kind of back, back, I mean, back a little farther away from those doors there. But I think the good thing is, is that at least looking at what we're looking at here in Oxford, it, um, it, the worst is basically coming through now. The heaviest rainfall and whatever that hail is there potentially um, moving now just east of Highway 7, as we've shown you on multiple cameras there over the last few minutes. I would show our area circulation down here close to uh, Lafayette County Highway 403 on the southeast side of Oxford uh, where we have that. So I'm going to put on a storm track here. We'll see what we kind of come up with on, on these folks on this side there. Um, we show East Oxford Church uh, at 904, Apostles Movement Church at 907, Altus at 908, and we're looking at 908 in the Bethel Church. This is a tornado warning in effect for Lafayette County, also sections of Union, Pontotoc, and uh, I believe, let me double check before I say Tippa County. Lafayette, Union, Pawtuck, and um, Marshall County. Not, it is not quite the tip of county yet. So if you're downstream of this in the, uh, in the New Albany area, we got to watch this one pretty closely. Um, as I look down, downstream of this, I want to make sure we don't just have something suspicious looking, that this isn't something else. No, it's just um, kind of the shape of it at this point here. But w watch this shot. Watch as this comes through. You can see, you can even see the precipitation circling around it. Watch this as we let this loop for a moment. So, I mean, it's clearly a rotating thunderstorm with that center of rotation kind of on the central to south portion there of uh, Lafayette County, just south of Oxford where we have it at this moment, embedded in rain. That's the problem. Like, if this were producing a tornado, there's almost no way that you would be able to see it. Um, it would be extremely difficult to see it in this setting here. So let's come back to the precipitation mode 
and I'm going to do a wider shot. Yup. Okay, so let's track this now. Let's get you a longer track New Albany. Then we're going to look at that other thunderstorm there that is approaching the Winona area. And again, longer track taking it past New Albany. If you're ahead of this, want, let's make a reasonable assessment here if you're in some of these other spots. Do we consider where we're at a sturdy structure? If not, we have a list of area storm shelters we talked about last night, showed this exact graphic then. If you're downstream of this, I would say past New Albany. So we're out here. Uh, Reese or Bluff or Ellistown or McCary there, McClary, excuse me, Alpine, Dumas, Bethany, Geeville, Baldwin, you're downstream of this. Now let's make an honest assessment of where we're at, whether or not we feel like we want to go through whatever this is. It might just be a heavy thunderstorm. It also might be a storm that produces a tornado. I'd highly recommend we work our way to one of those area storm shelters uh, or grandma and grandpa's house if it's, you know, stronger, a friend's house. We probably need to be there um, downstream of this because I, I think this storm's probably going to hold together and at the very least it's going to be a scare uh, and hopefully that's all it is. By the way, uh, WTVA 9 News on WLOV at 9 o'clock, of course, started here a couple of moments ago. And so with that, let's go ahead and uh, let's uh, do a wider shot here to kind of reset our situation. Um, and let's talk about who we have and where we have them. And is Stan's video still up over there at an A? Um, let's go ahead and pull it up. The video's not loading well. It's not? Okay. It's not. Well, we had our stand door, and they was uh, looking at you. Can, you can see the circle there uh, <laughs> on, on, the, on the monitor. Um, this storm that we have here south of Greenwood that's working its way generally toward Montgomery County, perhaps Grenada County, Calhoun County, Houston, eventually um, Webster County. This has produced um, a fairly significant tornado down um, uh, reports of significant destruction uh, on Jackson Avenue in Silver City from a, a well-known storm chaser. Um, numerous entrapments and significant injuries. So that is the baseline that we're talking about here, unfortunately, on what is possible. We talked about these lone, isolated supercells, discrete storms that get out ahead of the activity. That's what this one represents. And so while, wow, yes, we're going to come in extremely close here in just a moment on this one up north again, we need to make sure that we are not missing what's going on in this one farther south. Um, so uh, our meteorologist, John DeLusic, while I'm getting a track on here, what do you got, John? Uh, you should check out what Stan posted about five minutes ago on, uh, on the chat, some damage. Which chat? Not, on our um, storm chat or our storm. Okay, got chat. it. Okay, and this is going to be where? Do we? Uh, he did not specify. Belzona. Bells, okay. Okay, so it's give a moment okay, here. Okay, so actually says Silver City is location. Silver City is the location yep. on this. Yep. Okay, and so this is that that location um, we were talking about a moment ago there. Thanks. Uh, that's now now. In all fairness, that does not look particularly thick, and this might just be. This might be a tractor, uh, the trailer on tractor trailer, and this was probably loaded inside and knocked off. So this might be worse than it looks. Um, what I'm trying to see in the background there, and I'm having a hard time looking at, is the trees. See, you can see that we have at least that one tree there, or something there that snapped off. Might have been, might have been a tree. Hard to say. You have debris that's lofted up in the trees there as well. So this is in Silver City. Um, Numerous reports of damage from it there uh, when it was back toward the Rolling Fork area as well. So with that as the backdrop, that's the reason we're tracking a tornado warning um, that's not officially in our area yet. But I don't want to let a minute go by that we don't say, listen, this is one we got to watch really closely. We'll take all the prayers we can get, but we need to react in Winona by getting to that tornado safe place at some place other than our mobile home. In Kill Michael, we can't be in our mobile home either. We've had some rough ones in the past six years or so there in the Kilmichael area. So you know well enough that we need to um, be getting to a sturdier place. But if we're in Eupora, we're downstream of this in Calhoun City. Um, I get it. It's nine o'clock on a Friday night. And the last thing you want to do is a watch us, you know, take up your television uh, screen and B, you know, get out of your house. And, you know, you just might want to stay there and do it. But but the reality is, is that this one could be uh, substantial. It could be deadly if not respected. And I want to make sure that I have the right spot that I'm tracking on that there. So I'm going to bring it to the closest radar. I'm going to bring it back to the wind mode. Um, the, the, the only positive I have on it is uh, it is not quite as ridiculous as it was a little bit ago, but that's just because this was textbook bad a little bit ago and now remains still a potential for a large tornado producing considerable damage. Um, and so still reporting um, the potential that this could be causing a tornado and honestly, there's one behind it as well. 
So that's bad news for Chula and locations that way. So I'm going to refine our storm track, and we've got to go up north um, and look at that storm there. But our time continues ticking down downstream. So I'm going to make an excessively long storm track here um, with the idea that, listen, will this hold together in Tupelo? It could. Will this make it to Houston? It might. The storm will still probably be going by the time it gets to Eupora for sure. The question is whether or not it's still producing a big tornado. The environment is such where it definitely could. That's why we've talked about that strong tornado potential, and that remains our concern on this because what this storm doesn't have is a whole lot of stuff southeast of it. Now, it has a little more than it had earlier. Um, we have a few things kind of merging into it there, so that's a good sign. Maybe this will cut it off. Maybe this will weaken. Always something to be praying for there and hoping for as well. As we come northward toward our Lafayette County tornado warning um, and kind of a, address where we're concerned with this, I would say near Altus is where our uh, historic rotation has been. I say historic, not necessarily an all-time bad or anything like that, but instead where the area that we've been watching over the history of this storm has been near Springville there. And then I show near Altus where we have our area circulation. So let's go ahead and circle that. Um, just east of Oxford. So I would say if you live in Oxford, we can come out of that tornado safe place, including our Craig Ford that's there in town. We can probably bring them out of uh, the tornado safe place there in the Oxford area. Altus near 278. This is kind of north. This is west, primarily west there of Lafayette Springs and west of Thaxton as well, south of the Keel community, south of Mississippi Highway 30. Um, we can, if, you, if, if we could, I wouldn't mind looking at Craig's video, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead, I'm, I'm going to probably keep going here for a moment, just double check um, if we could bring it up. And I don't know. Okay, let's pop it up here for just a moment, and let's take a look at it, just, just to verify that we've kind of got past the worst of it, make sure radio, radar is what we're looking at. Yep, yeah, doesn't look all that bad there. So um, as far as Craig is concerned, um, I do want to keep him there a little longer because there's an area back here that we're watching close to the Paris community. Let's go back to Storm Track Doppler radar here for a moment, um, if we could. And it looks like the lightning flash there might have taken them down. Watching the broad area rotation, it is not, not what some of the other stuff is. And unfortunately, I think we're going to tra start transitioning where we're looking for notches here along this line, um, which can sometimes be poking around looking for looking for something so at least we don't have something yelling that it is a, a tornado on this at the moment. Current time is 9-11 p.m. I'm Chief Meteorologist Matt Lawpon alongside our meteorologist John DeLusick and uh, Anais Scales. And I want to give a shout out to Courtney in the Water Valley area for sending in Safe Place Selfie here. We appreciate that. As, as, as much as it is helpful for us to see pictures of tornadoes, it helps me more to see pictures of families teaching the kids to be safe, going to that safe place there. Um, luckily, Water Valley is pant past the worst of this and not something we need to be too uh, terribly worried about at this moment here um, because it's past that. But obviously, um, definitely going to have to watch um, some of these other thunderstorms. I think Water Valley might, uh, certainly the heavier rainfall is still there. And I mean, if you want to stay in there a few more minutes, it couldn't hurt, but that initial tornado warning is uh, past your location at this time here. Um, as we bring it in a little closer, looking at the latest data, looking at the wind mode on storm track Doppler radar, let's, let's clear that off. And it might be more the keel area now. There are a couple spots there where we have the rotation. Um, neither is, is overly impressive, and thankfully we do not have, looking at this, any tornado debris to report. So that, that's a positive as long as we're able to continue to say that. Wind mode, a couple of different radars we're going to look at on this. Um, trying to pick out if we have something up there by the, the keel area. Looks, I'm concerned that maybe the angle's changing a little bit on that as it approaches the Darden area. So we're going to track that independently from the other, uh, other area circulation. Um, so for the Etta area, we're at 914. Current time is 912. So Etta, we need to be in that tornado safe place. Darden there at 918. Myrtle at 924. The west side of New Albany from one of two areas that we're watching. Um, we've been looking at that for you in New Albany about 929 there. Uh, the Bluff community at 936 as it works its way toward the northeast. Speed on this is about... Um, about 50 to 55 miles per hour is what, what this has been going. A couple different radars here to check our location. That's still probably the best look at it from down in Monroe County, though it's pretty similar shot from Memphis, just with 
It just looks a little different because of that. By the way, I hear the noises in the tower above us telling me that the strong winds aloft have started to arrive. Um, one of the things that's concerning about this is that um, while we had a peak in fuel during the day, it's now overnight in the next few hours that the strongest winds aloft arrive, and that then helps these thunderstorms to tap into more rotation ability, unfortunately. So uh, we're not at the end of this. We're still kind of on the front end. We expect to probably reach our peak somewhere around 11 o'clock or so with storms continuing after that, especially for locations West Point, Starkville, Columbus, Macon, where it could take a little bit longer. Uh, by the way, a new tornado watch is likely coming to the east of the one that we have in effect, um, probably for our Alabama counties. I would anticipate that within the next, um, within the next uh, 15, 20 minutes or so is probably when that is coming. Um, so still reports of a confirmed tornado doing damage out here southwest of Winona. As we look at the debris mode on storm track Doppler radar, I'm going to make sure we're on the closest one here for a second. Um, and it's going through the different ones there. I can th see near Alcoa there. That might barely be a tornado debris signature. Let's double check. Yeah, that's, that's still kind of showing up. We're looking really high up, as you hear us say very often, for a lot of spots, unfortunately. Um, and so a little bit of debris still showing up there. That, that circulation in Chula. Ah, near Grass Lake, I'd be, I'd be concerned with that one as well. I'm going to track the front one because that will impact us first. So back to the wind mode. I mean, clear cut, long track, tornado circulation still on this. Um, I place that moving toward Winona, Bell Fountain, Eupora. Um, I'm going way beyond where the warning ends. Um, so Winona, 939. We've been talking about you for... About 40 minutes now. So potential that this could be a tornado that moves through or very near the Winona area. We've already had locations that have had damage related to this. Um, I want to I'll bring up Stan's shot here from uh, Silver City a little bit ago as just kind of a backdrop. We're going to get more pictures in over the next few hours here, um, but but this is not good. Um, as you can see, at least a tractor trailer that, that had some issues, some trees in the background there, and reports from reliable storm chasers of entrapments uh, and damage there near, uh, near Jackson Street, Jackson Avenue. I'm not sure exactly where the street or avenue there. Um, so that is what is moving that storm toward the Winona area. And so when I say Winona, a 939, yeah, I know we still have a little time. You're not officially under a tornado warning. The word to go along with that is yet. We anticipate a tornado warning will come for you within probably the next 20 um, minutes. Uh, certainly, you'll be under one by the time this moves through. I'd be absolutely shocked if they dropped it um, completely. So out there, Lodi, Alva, Catarata, um, you all need to be in that tornado safe place. Um, let's go, we go northward to our... Uh, storm that's prompted the tornado warning up here near New Albany and Thaxton. Again, as we mentioned, if you live in the Oxford area, we can come out of that tornado safe place. I show near the Darden community. Uh, that's where our area of rotation is probably the most pronounced. There's a couple spots here where that, and that might be a more of a wind enhancement, but still it's some rotation there near the Darden community, uh, moving into western Union County near Etta. Um, we've already had a tornado issue there earlier this year very near that. So you all know what we need to do to make sure we're in that tornado safe place. So I'm going to track that ahead. I'm going to track it with our track where we put on every single possible location in advance here. And I'm going 55 miles per hour on that. Uh, so that's in Union County, that, that area of circulation. Um, and so Darden at 919. By the way, our tornado warning for down south has come out and it's uh, it's one of those higher end tornado warnings. We'll talk more on that here in just a second. We've talked a lot about it. Hopefully we've given you an extended heads up. If that warning's coming through for you now, we need to be in that tornado safe place. Again, right there, moving toward New Albany. Um, while I have not had confirmation of this producing tornado damage in New Albany, um, 929, we need to be in that tornado safe place for you just in case. The atmosphere is structured where strong tornadoes are a possibility out of this. So we just need to assume that's what it is. And if you live or if you know somebody that lives ahead here, snap a picture, send it to them, and let them know that uh, tonight's not a night to mess with. Um, we've already had at least one very significant uh, tornado in the state. Um, and thoughts and prayers with the folks down there. Uh, Rolling Springs, uh, Rolling Fork, excuse me, 
um, and then back towards Silver City, unfortunately. So these are your unsafe places. Cars and trucks, mobile homes, upper floors, rooms with windows, snap a picture, send this and so that if someone you might know is living in one of those unsafe places or planning to stay in one of those unsafe places, that that's not good enough tonight. Um, I'm going to briefly show you a picture of some hail that came through um, the Oxford area. Um, Kerrigan sending us this picture here when this uh, storm moved through Oxford a little bit ago. That's, that's a pretty jagged, pretty large piece of hail. Hard to say how large Kerrigan's hand is, um, but that's, that's, that's a pretty large uh, hailstone there as well. So unfortunately, some damaged hail potential, potential uh, showing up with that as well. And so that's still a possibility out of uh, this thunderstorm as it moves uh, to closer to New Albany uh, in the next little bit here. So as we pull that down, our tornado warning, as anticipated, extended all the way past uh, Eupora at this time into Webster County. Um, just behind the scenes here, if you'll let me know where Ethan is, not Ethan, not, not Ethan, um, where Gabe and Chris are, just so we have an idea of where they are. I just want to make sure they don't go too far south into this because um, I don't know that they'd be able to get past in this in time. I know, I know they wouldn't, and I know that they shouldn't try to. Um, so Winona, we've been mentioning it over and over again. We've said your name a ton of times. This is heading toward you right now, an area of rotation um, that, that has been a confirmed tornado um, for most of the last hour plus um, and could potentially still be causing uh, tornado damage. In fact, right there south of Coila, um, that is on, uh, just east of Highway 17. That is still an area of tornado debris being detected on StormTrack Doppler radar from this tornado. So the description from the folks uh, at the National Weather Service on this, uh, a large tornado producing considerable damage ongoing right now that's moving toward the Winona area. So as I get you a closer track in here, um, 937 for you. We've been give or take about five minutes on that time for quite a while now. Um, we need to make sure we're in our tornado safe place there. Um, the report of the Sharkey Issaquena Community Hospital um, back there in the Rolling Fork area where this tornado um, first started inflicting damage reports of uh, damage to the hospital there in Rolling Fork related to this. Um, unfortunately, those damage reports continue to come in related to this storm and will for a while. I want to bring in our meteorologist John DeLusic, who has who's been looking uh, at this in more detail. Uh, just um, th right this is this 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 is a bad one. Yeah, this is a bad one because I'm reading. So we cannot yet say on um, confirmation from our spotters. Yes, even Silver City too, not Rolling Fork and both Rolling Fork and Silver City. Bad one, and this is a bad one heading toward the Winona. I'd say, yeah, Winona, uh, Kill Michael, all those areas that are right there, uh, just uh, everybody south of Winona, in the Winona area, everybody. Well, look out, this is a bad one. This is like a bowling ball going through. And reports of significant injuries. We're yeah. hoping it doesn't become more than that. Yeah. Um, so, strong tornado on the ground. Let's adjust everything forward. New scan there. Um, strong tornado approaching I-55, approaching Winona. Let's get, the, uh, let's, let's get the exact angle right. So I think it's conceivable that the tornado might have lifted briefly, but it's, it's definitely still on the ground causing damage at the moment. That's a pretty significant damage signature. So based on the exact angle, I want to get this right. Okay, and let's track. I mean, it's... That's not good. I mean, it's heading, it's heading right toward Winona. So Winona, based on about 50, 55 miles per hour, and John will double check the speed on this just to make sure we've got it exactly. I think that's still what it is. We show about 11 minutes and 11 miles away from Winona, middle of town. We show it now, obviously, near I-55, southwest of Winona. Um, we're looking at nine minutes and 10 miles from you. A uh, damaging tornado. Um, the description by the National Weather Service that the uh, debris is being lofted um, at least 12,000 feet. Why is that important? When we start talking about debris lofting, we can use the science related to that to figure out how strong it is. Now, latest report, 16,000 feet. Typically, when we're talking about 13 to 20,000 feet, 16,000 feet in the middle, we'd be talking about an EF3 tornado. For perspective, the tornado that came through Tupelo in 2014 was, um, was an EF3 tornado. 
the one that moved through the north side of Columbus, not, not Steen's last, year, last, last um, November, but a couple years back that moved through the north side of Columbus there, um, kind of very near downtown and moved north and east. That was also an EF3 tornado. So we're talking strong tornadoes that have the potential to do damage to uh, sturdy structures. So we need to make sure if you live in Winona, as you can see the time ticking down there, less than 10 minutes, less than 10 miles away, we have a tornado that is likely causing damage and could be a strong tornado at this moment. We're waiting, unfortunately, for the next update on just how high that debris is being lofted. But we have to make the assumption that this one could be a really, really bad one as it approaches Winona. Um, another way I can tell you that is my radar is all bleh, all over the place. There we are. It's cleaning up a little bit there. Um, Still difficult on the rainfall mode or on the wind mode even to pick it up. Rainfall mode's a little clustered. I think that is probably my debris. It is. See that brighter return we have there, those brighter reds? It's very reflective, meaning it sends back a lot of energy to the radar because it's hitting big stuff. So um, clearly, Winona, we need to be in that tornado safe place. I'm going to get you the all track here for a moment. Um, everything I can throw on it. And then we got to go north to Union County. So, um, Winona, 935, 10 minutes. This is a tornado that has caused significant damage. This is a tornado that may have caused loss of life. That's something that we're working to confirm. Um, and so, I don't want that to be the things that impact you uh, in Winona, uh, in and near Kilmichael, um, and north of Kilmichael. So if you know somebody that's traveling along I-55, before we go north, let's do our due diligence there. I expect that our tornado on the next scan is going to be east of where we have it there. And so I would say our time until I-55 is six minutes. US-51 on the south side of Winona, eight minutes. US-82 just east of Winona, 11 minutes. This is a strong tornado producing significant damage that could cause loss of life. This is one of the strong ones that John and I have been talking about the last couple days, our meteorologist Chelsea Simmons. Please, please take it seriously. Let's go north. Let's come up here to Union County. Um, National Weather Service in uh, Memphis looks as though they've gone ahead and extended a uh, severe thunderstorm warning tornado possible ahead of this. That tells me confidence in the tornado potential on this has decreased some. Still, that's damaging winds probably moving into New Albany at, at the very least related to this. Um, by the way, Pat, we'll get Pat over here for a second so we can talk some strategy on, on where we need to start uh, thinking about people. First off, do we know where Gabe is? Yes, Gabe is in Grenada. Okay. Uh, he's going to go to the Walmart, which is up on a rise. He's going to set up safely. I'm going to do a storm track on the north one. Look and the then south. But he is in Grenada, and he says he is safe. He is safe in Grenada. Okay. Is that okay? Is yes, good? that is. So okay. we could potentially get into a situation where we have multiple communities that have damage from this single storm. Okay. So when I'm thinking about where we're placing people to get them in position to cover that damage, um, obviously they would slide southward to Winona first. Do we need to think about moving Ethan northward in case I'm we need to? Columbus, right now. Columbus, that's not a bad place. And then if we need to, I guess, shift him to Eupora, that's what we do when we do it. Once you tell me it's safe, I don't want to send him west right now. But he's, well, he's okay. I, I, I might want to go to Eupora. Um, okay. Yeah, because there's another one back behind it, too. So, yeah, but the, so we'd send him back that direction. And then Craig, I don't think we need to necessarily, I mean, it depends on how you want to utilize Craig. I mean, I'm okay if we, if we float him back along 278 um, once, once that gets clear to kind of um, head back this way in case we need him in Houston or if we, we need him back here later this evening because, I mean, cycle him back towards Tupelo? It couldn't hurt to start rotating back here as long as we can, you know, do so safely. Coordinate with John, make sure that we have... Okay. Is it safe to move Ethan right now? Um, we could move Ethan. You could get Ethan to Starkville, I think, safely, and that, that would be no problem. Well, he's in Columbus right now. Would yeah. Go a little further west? I would like him to go a little okay. further west, yes. Got it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, so, let's go ahead and let's reset here for a moment. Um, as you can clearly see, the, the description on this, as high level as tornado warning as you get, a tornado emergency in effect that includes the city of Winona. This is a loss of life situation. People are going to die if they don't 
go to their tornado safe place. Okay? So, as we're getting the rattles here at the TV station, but that's because, uh, um, that's because of strong winds aloft kicking up on this. So, there's our tornado right there. It's a strong tornado near Mississippi Highway 35, approaching I-55, moving into Winona. As the time ticks down for folks in Winona, if you know, if there's anybody that's an acquaintance that you know that, that, that lives in Winona, lives in this area, call them, please call them and let them know. This has been a damaging tornado, um, producing widespread power outages um, and potentially loss of life um, and injuries back southwest. My weather call is going off. Hold on a second. Hello? This is WTVA Chief Meteorologist Matt Lawhorn with a weather call mobile notification. The National Weather Service has just issued a severe thunderstorm warning for within one mile of your smartphone's current location. Severe thunderstorms can produce dangerous lightning, large hail, damaging winds, and very heavy rain that can cause localized flooding. If you must drive your car, do not attempt to drive through water covering a road. If possible, seek shelter in a sturdy building or stay in your car. Avoid open areas and stay away from isolated. Okay, I'm going to go and stop that there for a second. Bring up John for a second. Go, John. Uh, the storm down south, 50 miles an hour confirmed, and also uh, reports from the Yalabusha County EMA Director Stuart Spence reporting down trees in the county on the northern end of the county and also power outages on the northern end from that storm that passed through. That's this storm here, yeah, yeah. This, storm, this storm complex. I'm tracking the whole leading edge of this. Um, as we bring John down here for a moment, I'm going to um, put up the tornado safety rules for a moment. And I understand that says severe thunderstorm warning. I'm not going to get back up here for a little bit, okay? We've got to stay on Winona and that storm. It's now moving into the area. It's causing significant damage. We're just not going to make it back up to this storm. And I apologize. I know this is high population centers here. It's going to be a while before we come back north. We've got to make sure people don't die down there, okay? So snap a picture of the television. This is coming in with stronger winds. We're going to watch that in Ekru. And if that ends up, we, um, John, I'll have your eyeballs on Ekru if we could. Um, on closest radar to make sure on, on wind to make sure that doesn't wrap up uh, a bit more damaging winds with that um, certainly likely and that storm uh, that's driving some hail this is about to become a major wind producer this is where we could have those 70 mile per hour plus winds possible that's probably going to accelerate we'll come back also tree on a house in 100 block of county road 104 in Lafayette County from that storm that moved through there but we have a tornado emergency for the city of Winona, Sawyer, Kilmichael, Lodi, tornado emergency. There's not a higher level than this. This is as high as it gets. We, I'm trying to think of the last tornado emergency we had. It might have been in Columbus a couple years ago. These don't happen very often. And so when significant loss of life is possible, that's when these tornado emergencies are issued. As I go between my different components here, I show our tornado producing damage along I-55 on the southwest side of Winona. All that time that we said, we have a couple minutes, we have a couple moments, we no longer do. It's 931, we told you over an hour ago that 930 it was moving into Winona, and yet here we are. And I really hope that folks there in Winona, if you're the type, say a little prayer for them. Hopefully they're in a safe place. Hopefully they'll be okay. Um, we show the Young School at 941, Shady Grove Church at 942. You said 50 miles per hour on this, right, John? Oh, correct. correct. Okay. Let's double check that here for a moment. Uh, that, that's what I have. Yeah, I'm showing 50. I'm going 55. It's a little fast. South side of Winona, this is moving through as we speak. This is a strong tornado that has had a history of producing significant damage. Um, if your signal goes out downstream, we do stream live at WTVA Weather, WTVA News is the app. I see Facebook Live going there. Um, Facebook is what Facebook is. Sometimes that doesn't stick around. Uh, this probably won't do you a whole lot of good in Winona, but if you're downstream of this, let's make sure we're in that tornado safe place. I got to get a longer track here for just a moment. Just a quick longer track. We're going to come back in street level there, Winona. Tornado moving through the south side of Winona now. Long track on this. I want to make sure we have a long distance track, very similar to what we talked about a moment ago there for, um, for Winona. We gave them an hour heads up. So current time is 933. 
and I show Houston at 1034. Okay? Give you an hour here. Get to your tornado safe place. You have an hour if you live in Houston, okay? And if you look around and this is not strong enough, tonight is a night that I know the wind is rushing. You've got to get someplace stronger. Most tornado fatalities occur in these unsafe places, cars and trucks and mobile homes. How cars and trucks? Maybe you're taking the last second, you decide the last second you want to hop in that car and go someplace, and then you get caught in it. Cars are easily rolled over and you can get killed in one of those. Mola homes, same things. Large open rooms, upper floors, and rooms with windows, all unsafe places. Use your smartphone on your camera there. Find storm shelters in your area. If you're downstream of this in Aberdeen, I don't know if the track's going to be perfect for Aberdeen. We'll have to see as it gets closer. We're going to refine this. Oklahoma, we show at a 10 uh, 52 for you. I mean, all the way to Solgent there, Smithville, I have in that track. Um, I don't see Amory in that track, and I think it probably should, um, but I clearly average the difference there between Aberdeen at 1052 there and Smithville at about 1117, so about 1108 or so in Amory if it holds together. Um, so we are looking at a strong tornado on the south side of Winona. No matter which radar site we look at, see how it's changing there? It's between radar sites. I show uh, probably now just east of Winona. We have a strong tornado on the ground that's moved through the southern city grid of Winona. Um, we can start sending them south. By the time they get to Winona, it's going to be through. So we'll send them south on 55. Um, our Gabe Maynard and Chris Knowles are up there in, um, in Grenada, and we're going to send them south uh, because by the time this, this clears, it's cleared 55. So um, they're going to have to go into town on the south side of town there. Unfortunately, tornado uh, producing significant damage potentially. Bring in our meteorologist John DeLusic here for a moment. John. South side of Union County, northern Pontotoc. Okay, south side of Union County, northern Pontotoc. The, 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 the circulation starting to look a little, I, don't, I mean, I'm just seeing what is looking a little. Yes, like. that is, that is that trying something. to spin something up on yes. top of a significant damaging wind potential. Thank you, John. Yep. So first things first. Let's make sure we don't have something of our own uh, farther north. Okay, so I don't think we have tornado debris on this, but I do think this is a very significant strong winds, and I do think it's trying. Um, let's look in Blue Springs. First off, let's get a storm track on this, and I'm going to go faster than what we've gone. I'm going to go 65 on this. Um, I think it would be foolhardy to assume it's not going to pick up speed. So let's go eastward as we pull that up. And while we're doing that, um, you can see some times there. Let's go back a couple of scans. This is strong straight line winds, potential for wind damage, perhaps on the south side here, um, there north of Pontotoc, moving toward New Harmony, moving toward uh, western Lee County, a potential that this could try to uh, spin up a tornado if it continues to take the next couple of steps. So you can see some times there. Uh, it definitely looks like one that's trying to spin up there near Ekru. So as far as the TV station, folks here are concerned. We have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect that will probably pass just slightly north. Let's take tower cam, John, or an A, and if we could, let's point it back toward the west so we can um, get kind of a shot at this, maybe west-northwest. Um, right there's where our area of circulation is picking up. I know this is a highly populated area. Um, and I hate to do this, but we got to go back down south with a strong tornado on the ground. Um, we could be near a, near, near a loss of life situation down there, unfortunately, because that's very strong of the latest update here. So there's your times. Saltillo, 955 for you. Um, and this is assuming only 50 miles per hour. Um, it will probably be going a little bit faster than that. Slice off about eight, eight minutes or so. Let's go south. Now reports that this thunderstorm down south here, by the way, new tornado warning coming for that thunderstorm. So all those tornado warning weather calls are coming out here in a second. National Weather Service issuing a tornado warning. So let me pop that up before we go south here for a moment. So a tornado warning issued for Lee Itawamba Prentice Union. I don't think they clipped, they might have had Pontotoc on that there. I'm not sure if they included Pontotoc. There's a couple areas of rotation in there that they're watching and you're going to get wind producing tornado-like damage. This is those 70 plus mile per hour winds we were talking about at the least. Um, and hopefully it doesn't become more than that. I don't have tornado debris that I can detect at this point here. But when I'm looking at this, and I'll pop this on here, and then I have to get south for a moment here. Um, I show near surface wind speeds. I mean, you can read along with me. Um, near surface wind speeds there, at least at that one spot, 
of 100 plus miles per hour. I guess I'm covering it. Might be hard to read while I'm covering it. So that's extremely strong winds showing up on that. By the way, this is my tornado warning weather call. I'll let that read while I go south. This is WTVA Chief Meteorologist Matt Lapon with a weather call mobile notification. The National Weather Service has just issued a tornado warning for within one mile of your smartphone's current reported location. Take protective action now. To view a Google map of the exact warning area or to read the full text of the warning, tap on the tornado icon button on the main screen. Repeating, a tornado warning has just been issued for within one mile or less of your current reported location. Seek shelter in the lowest part of a sturdy building. Okay, so that is for the, the storm up closer to Tupelo. We're going to make a judgment call on people here at the TV station here in a minute, but we have to spend some time down here near Fox and Lodi. This is a strong tornado. Last look at it, the debris was extending up to 22,000 feet. Why is that important? Number one, that's high. So 5,280 feet per mile. So you're talking the debris is up more than five, excuse me, more than four miles in the air. And that is important because there's a correlation between how high that debris is lofted. When we start talking about 22,000 feet, that's when we start talking about a strong tornado. You want to talk EF4 tornado? EF4 tornado would be Louisville in 2014. Now, maybe that's not the case. We hope and pray that's not the case, but that's what's gone very close to, if not through Winona. So if you live in Minerva, if you live in Lodi, what we're talking about here is a life altering tornado and a possibly life taking tornado. So I cannot in stronger terms say how important it is that at 943, this is coming through Minerva, if not sooner, and that if you're not in your safest spot, you might not be here tomorrow. So Lodi, 947, New Liberty Church, 950. We show Mount Vernon School. This is um, down here in um, Webster County, I believe by about that point there at 954, 954 there, Mount Vernon Church, Macedonia Church at 957, 958 South Union Church, Embry at 959, Eupora at 10 o'clock. This could be a life-changing and life-endering tornado. Um, Lodi community is definitely in the path of this. It's right along Lodi Road. Um, so as I pull off that tornado debris discussion there on top, and we bring it back to the rainfall mode here on StormTrack Doppler radar, um, what I'm looking at right along Lodi Road is the tornado debris moving along that toward Minerva and toward the Lodi community. Okay, Blue Springs camera. So which, northwest. Which, which one is that on? Okay, is a that tower on cam three? northwest, and it looks like a lowering uh, on the tower cam northwest. Tower cam northwest, the lowering. I'm going to leave this up here for a moment. Um, hold on, I'm going to bring that to weather three. I'm going to put that there. We're going to come up north here for a second. Let's look at the wind mode here. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to show I'm going to look at tower cam Tupelo for a moment. So I would anticipate what right about here in the middle, John. A lot of cloud to ground lightning. We told right there in the middle, right there, is that area we're looking at. So that's trying. I mean, you can see nonstop lightning on this thunderstorm here. It is very, very strong winds. You don't get this kind of lightning without a very tumultuous atmosphere, and clearly that's what we have at this time. Um, if you live in the Tupelo area, if you live. Um, Fairfield, Sherman, Longview, Alpine, Guntown, Baldwin, Marietta, Ratliff. Um, we need to be in that tornado safe place. Specifically for Tupelo proper, north side of town, yes. South side of town, no. North of the mall here, yes, in that tornado safe place. We need to be there. This is at the very least strong damaging winds. Um, it's enough to make the radar unhappy on what it's looking at. And now I need to make sure that that is not debris. That does not line up where I would have. That is not tornado debris. But I would be shocked if this wasn't some wind-driven hail out here, Blue Springs. Do you have that Blue Springs camera still up? Okay, if you have that up, give me a moment here to pull it back up. Blue Springs camera, I mean, very strong winds moving through there, the curtains of wind, um, the worst past that there. I'm gonna actually look on the west side of Tupelo here for a moment, um, kind of northwest side of Tupelo to see if we have a better shot of that, and then we've got to go back south. We can't go poke that, that, that one looking west there. <sighs> da, 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 da. 
Lots of stuff coming through our discussion here. This is looking back toward that storm. Let's give it a moment. So this is that area of rotation right there. So there's kind of the clear spot. Let me, let me wait for this to come around here. So lots of little notches that we're looking at here on this lowered area right there at the tree line. So here's what I need. John, Anae, if we could, let's look at, um, let's double check Sherman. I'm gonna double check Sherman here for a moment, if I can. But I kind of want McCullough and 22 looking back toward the west, if we could. I'm gonna pull up Sherman. Let me see if it'll bring up the Sherman camera for a moment here. Sherman, and I'd want west. Eh, hard to say at this moment. I'm going to give it a couple lightning strikes and then we've got to go south. I can't be poking around on something here that, that may or may not when we know we have something that could be life altering. Um, west on Coley and then we've got to go. Um, Tupelo. No, I need, I need you guys, I need you two to stay if you can on um, McCola I-22 West. I'll look west on Coley real quick here. Um, give me a moment. Did you have something there, Maddie? Okay, it's just, just bouncing around quite a bit there. Um, so, okay, that's what we've got. Let's reset here things for a moment. Um, as you can hear, the tornado sirens start behind the scenes here. A couple things we're watching. Number one, tornado warning up here for um, northern Lee County, sections of Prentice, Itawamba, and Union Counties. Now, new tornado warning. Uh, issued for locations including Houston. We told you a little bit ago that you still had some time to get to that tornado safe place. We better be within steps of that here. By the way, we're in ear here and, and what, what Maddie, one of our producers, was asking someone else was, hey, do you need to call your family? Do you need to call your family? Um, let's call ahead on this one here because we believe it's still a strong damaging tornado. Um, the reason I give you that reaction is because you can kind of see a swirl here showing the broader overall circulation with way the, the debris potentially is falling out of this thunderstorm. Um, as we look back a couple of scans, I'm not 100% I'm not certain looking at that precipitation that this is still producing a large tornado, but considering its history, um, let's go ahead and assume it will continue to. The debris is still there, uh, and with the history it's had, if I'm in the Lodi community, I, I, I'm praying that this but this weakens and certainly it is a strong tornado potential still moving in. By the way, okay, yeah, and they include portions of Calhoun County on that. Um, so let's get the track that includes all those folks all the way up here toward Houston. And by the way, let's just extend it even farther. So there's gonna be folks in there, as you can see, Tupelo will show 1106 for you. It's possible, could stay this far north. Um, so we're looking Aberdeen now. Your time ticking away at just before 11 o'clock. This is a different storm for the Tupelo area, by the way. Houston, 1031. Current time is 946. That's about 45 minutes-ish based on about the 50 miles per hour it's moving right now. You've got 45 minutes in Houston. Let's get to someplace safe. To make that assessment, I'm putting this up here while we talk about it. These are not safe. You scan that, it'll show locations there that are safe. And there's another circulation kind of back slightly behind this as well that we're going to watch. So um, as I slide back northward, because now we have a uh, population center here as well for a moment um, where the rotation is starting to tighten up a little bit more, unfortunately, Alpine. Anybody called Kelly yet? Yeah, we're there in the shelter in Alpine. Okay, good. Um, appreciate that. Um, Alpine, this is, this is trying really hard here. Yeah, Ma National Weather Service saying they're also seeing debris fall out on that other thunderstorm there. So hopefully that means that, um, that, that, that maybe it's weakened a little bit. It's no longer sustaining it. At the very least, this is some, some blistering rainfall and damaging winds there moving through Alpine and Bethany, the Birmingham area. Let's look at the Birmingham Ridge area. We are... I was having some radar data issues there because of the angle. Let's go back to Memphis radar, look the opposite way. As you can hear stuff on the roof here doing what it's doing. That's still rough. New Albany, you can come out of your tornado safe place in town, but Bethany, Baldwin, Frankstown, um, this is a strong area of circulation and potentially a tornado there uh, moving through those locations. So Hobo Station, Frankstown, Bethany on the path of this, your long track. Uh, we show the Jericho community at 950 over top of um, Alpine right now. Um, 
Bethany at 951, Baldwin 957. Obviously, a lot of folks we know live in Baldwin, fairly large community. Frankstown at 10 o'clock, Wheeler at 1001, Hobo Station 1010, New Site at 1013, and Altitude Community at 1014. Let's clump, come up here a little bit closer. Um, hold on a second here. I, I want to, before we go there, I want to check, check the second storm back here in Winona for just a second. Because there's this second storm we've been watching for a while. And I saw the rotation, it's kind of bugging me a minute ago, and I want to make sure we got this. And I'm, so I apologize, I'm disengaging one to go to another for a second, but I just want to make sure while, while we also have crews on the way to this one that we don't have them in the wrong spot. This is still rotating on this, this back storm here closer to Winona. It might not produce a tornado, but it's definitely still rotating back there approaching Winona. So in Winona, I need to keep you in your tornado safe place, assuming that you can even you know, see us at this point in time. Um, we need to be in that tornado safe place, I would say, still. I'm going to track this second area circulation up to Lodi, and we got to track the other one as well. So there you can see Winona, 952, 953 Sawyer, Fox 956, Minerva 1002, Lodi 1007, Alva 1011. Uh, Doppler radar indicated rotation on this back one here. Let's hope it's not producing, but potentially it could be. And then the um, front one here, that we're looking at, as we go back, and I'm gonna look out at Jackson, I feel like that's got kind of our best angle at it, at least when we looked at the wind a minute ago. Yeah, it still kind of does. Right there near Alva, near Lodi, where I have our circulation at this time. The tornado debris does not look as pronounced as it did just a little bit ago. That's a positive sign. There's still a ton of lightning, um, and that's just the current moment. I can't see it. Um, we're also entering an area, and I still show some near Alva, Let's look at the rainfall mode. It's still in the precipitation, still in area circulation. Hmm. I'm gonna. What this makes me do is I'm gonna cast a wider net than we've been casting. So I have to wide out, uh, widen this out a little bit more to do that. I want to make sure we have both Alva and Lodi, and the folks in advance of this kind of in. So here is your times, as you note here, Edgeworth Church at 9:52. Uh, we need to be in that tornado safe place. Here is what has probably happened. This is a cyclical supercell. What does that mean? It goes through a cycle. What does that mean? It produces a tornado, it lifts, it produces a tornado and lifts. I think it might be strengthening to where it's about to produce a tornado once again as well. Yes, look at this green here on the front side. Okay, hold on, last scan, let's come back to this. Then we gotta come north to the other storm. Yeah, this could be strengthening. If, it's ha if a tornado is lifted, it might not be for long. It looks like this is about to try to do it again. So I think we need to still assume this is a large tornado potentially um, on this uh, as it moves toward the east and northeast. So all those times there, if you know someone that lives near some of those places, snap a picture, let them know. We've got to come northward uh, as we're balancing a couple of these different storms with uh, different impacts. This high impact because of the places being involved. Um, let's look Saltillo. Uh, we have a camera. Um, Mississippi Department of Transportation camera there that looks back northwest. Let's take it north shot here for a moment along uh, US 45. And is it down? Okay. Well, that does not seem to be working. Um, also, if we can, for, for Maddie behind the scenes, we need to try to start talking to some emergency managers if we can to get the latest on this. I appreciate that. So that looks like that camera has come down. We're simulcasting right now on KZ103 and likely uh, uh, on the farm as well, our radio partners there, um, as I kind of position this and get a storm track on this. If for whatever reason you can't, don't have enough data where you're at to be able to pick us up on, um, pick us up on, on the app, you can also hear us there. Um, battery powered radios obviously involved in that as well. So uh, appreciate the good folks there that work really hard to help us out during severe weather as, as they usually do. And of course, I've been working with Rick at KZ103 for a long time as he texting to remind me. I always tell him you gotta remind me. Um, Guntown, 954 for you. So this is only a few moments away. A damaging winds, perhaps this trying to produce a tornado. And I don't think whether it's tornado or not makes as much difference as this is tornado-like damage from straight line winds or it's a tornado, and in either case, the damage comes from the winds that are 70, 80 miles per hour potentially out of this as it works its way toward the east. So very strong straight line winds, at least, and potentially uh, trying to produce a tornado there um, just near Guntown. 
show another spot. Let's look at the north one part, north part here. Let's look for debris. I don't know, even though I got that spinny stuff there, I don't know I can say tornado debris on this, thankfully, because all the blue is kind of out there in advance. So it's trying, but I think it's still damaging straight line winds primarily right now. So let's get a longer storm track on that with the note that this could potentially produce a tornado at some point in the near future. And this is kind of a fast track. So within, obviously now, the Guntown area, Sotillo 955, Wheeler 956, Chapelville 957, uh, Marietta at 1003, Centerville by about 1008. Let's head south here, a tornado warned thunderstorm that um, has been producing um, tornadoes for hours, has produced significant damage. I don't know if we have confirmation of loss of life at this point uh, on it, and hopefully that's something that doesn't happen. Um, but, but certainly there have been early reports that that could be the case. Uh, not in our area yet, um, and hopefully they won't be. Hopefully we got enough warning for that. Um, looking at the wind mode here on StormTrack Doppler radar, I mean, clear cut still strong rotation showing up. Looking for debris. I don't show the tornado debris as well pronounced as we had it earlier, at least not from Monroe County. Let's look at the debris from Jackson. I don't show debris from Jackson. Let's look from Memphis. That's, that's harder to say. We're looking a long ways, a really long ways away from Memphis. Maybe it's still detecting some debris aloft there. That's still a possibility that that's I mean, that's still debris aloft, at least at the scan level of that. So rough stuff potentially still there and likelihood that this, I mean, we should make the assumption that this is still producing a tornado um, out here near Bell Fountain, southwest of Monta Vista, um, southwest of Hohen Linden, Manti, Anchor, Woodland, all in the path of this Atlanta community. Um, this is potentially a tornado causing damage and certainly a circulation that has done it over and over again. And so we just have to be concerned that that could continue to be the case. While I show you that for a moment, I'll pop up behind me a safe place selfie. Um, one of our storm chasers sending us this one a little bit ago because even storm chasers aren't too big and bad to get in their storm tornado safe place. You do what makes sense and what makes sense is to protect your family. Um, so they were on their tornado safe place. I believe I think that was Corey that sent that one in. I'll have to double check that, but appreciate him for sharing that there. Um, some wind damage in Blue Springs as I go, go and cycle north to that thunderstorm here for a moment. Um, some chairs and stuff knocked over. Um, I don't know exactly, it looks like part of that table knocked over as well. Um, as we come back northward here looking for it, I know a new tornado warning has been extended downstream. That does include Tishmingo County. Um, our circulation up here closer to Baldwin and Frankstown. The wind mode is messy, but continues to show kind of right over top of Baldwin where our area circulation is right now, moving toward the northeast. Speed on this, I've been tracking it close to 60 miles per hour, double checking with the folks at the National Weather Service. They have it 55 miles per hour, so I think we're still good sitting at 55 miles per hour for that storm track. So let's get that on there. And John, just to double check, the south rotation is still 50 miles per hour, correct? Last time I checked I'll bring in our meteorologist, John DeLucic, here for a Last time John. I checked, it was between 50 and 55 miles an hour. So I can go check again. I will uh, then give you a little more uh, determined, a uh, better number on that. OK. I appreciate that. Um, John sharing that report, that, that information with us. So what we're going we're gonna to double tap there. Um, let's double check some power outages around the area um, as we kind of assess wh wh what this is doing because that'll also help us to know um, what has mm. okay so here are our power outages as we mentioned some major power outages back in southwest Mississippi but now as of the latest update Montgomery County of the 3,800 uh, customers that are monitored almost two-thirds of folks in Montgomery County are without power right now because of a tornado. Hopefully it's just hit transmission lines and other things, um, but, but that's, that's clearly not a good sign there for folks in Montgomery County. Our, our um, Gabe Maynard and Chris Knowles are on their way there. We also have a large number of people, it looks like, not a lot of folks in Calhoun County monitored, 
Um, so that's kind of uh, larger than it looks like. But we do have Grenada County, about 1,400 without power there as well. So we might have some kind of major transmission line that's had some, had some issues there. Let's bring John back in. John, what you got? Uh, 55 miles an hour moving off northeast for the storm that's on the south side. Okay, so we can put, give them both at 55 now. Yep. Okay, thank you, John. Let's go back here to wind mode. We're up here on a tornado worn thunderstorm. New data coming in as we speak to give us a better idea. Um, my new wind data should launch here in just a second. I mean, I show it trying to wrap back up here toward the Frankstown area, wrapping back in. I mean, this kind of looks like an inflow channel of wind trying to get back up there toward Frankstown, and then Baldwin trying to curl back around as well. Uh, while I can't guarantee that that's producing a tornado, it is trying extremely hard. I mean, that's what this is. That's the inflow back there. And right along County Road 5111 uh, there northeast of Baldwin is where we have the, the greatest area of circulation on this potentially. So I do think that that that's running just a little bit behind the wind mode on this. So um, Hobo Station, new site, Burton, Bay Springs Lake, all on the path of what could potentially be a tornado as it moves toward the northeast. The speed will say 55 miles per hour. Um, this is damaging wind at least. Hopefully that's all it is. We don't want any damaging wind, but obviously um, we don't want any of the worst of what this could end up being as well. Current time is 9.59. WTVA 9 News uh, at 10 is going to start here in a, in a few moments, and you know, Maddie will count me down to that. Um, we have tornado warnings for multiple locations, and unfortunately, we've had damaging tornadoes this evening. Um, we're continuing to monitor that potential. Okay, I'm Chief Meteorologist Matt Lawpon. You're watching WTVA 9 News at 10 o'clock. Multiple tornado warnings are in effect for uh, two different storms, one of which has produced significant tornado damage over the last hour, including a significant hit near the Winona area. We're trying to find out just how strong, how significant that damage is. But as far as preparation is concerned, if you live near Embry, at Hoen, Hoen Linden there, the northern section of, um, this would be uh, Webster County, this has prompted a tornado warning as well for northern sections there of um, uh, Clay County and northeastern uh, Webster County as well. But this is our area of circulation. This has been a tornado off and on for, uh, for a couple hours here, uh, unfortunately. And when we kind of look for the tornado debris on it, one thing I can say is I see less of it than what we have seen. And I cannot say I for sure have a tornado on it at the moment. Still, because of the history, it would be uh, unwise for us to think anything but this could do the worst. Um, but we have crews trying to figure out exactly what that worst is down in the Winona area as we speak. But if you're downstream from this and you live here uh, in Monta Vista, Hohenlinden, in Atlanta, Mantee, Woodland, and I'm going to make sure I crank this north just a little bit. I want to make sure we have a time for Houston on there. Houston 1026. We've been telling you now for more than 45 minutes that this storm was heading your direction. Um, actually more than an hour as we did the really long track. We're watching this for you now within the extent of this broadcast, uh, what would typically be 10 o'clock broadcast. This is going to be very near your doorstep. So Bell Fountain, Monte Vista, Hohenlinden in the direct path of an area of circulation that has produced significant tornado damage when it was back south and west of our area um, over the course of the last little bit here. I'm going to see if we can Try to pull up, if you can, um, John, in the weather pictures. I know we've got a bunch of weather pictures starting to come in. If we can put some of those uh, into the chat, or maybe uh, Daniela behind the scenes, some of those weather pictures in there. If we can drop those in the chat, uh, we'll try to use some of those. Appreciate that. Um, let's go up to our other tornado-worn thunderstorm here. And it's moving through a more populated area um, with less history, but unfortunately um, still continues to show at least some very strong winds up here approaching Hobo Station, some hail probably as well. Um, and there's just a couple of spots there where the, the, the reflectivity doesn't look quite right. I think this might be a radar error over top of the Hobo Station area, but wrapping in there near Frankstown, a strong, strong winds with this as well. Let's get you a storm track based on where the rainfall mode is here as we look at where that could potentially be trying to wrap up. I'm just going to track the leading edge right there, basically over top of Hobo Station and get you a track forward. So it will show Hobo Station at about 10.04, um, working its way northeastward. Um, and as it does, damaging wind potential, certainly a, a very real possibility on this at the least. And perhaps 
a situation where this attempts to produce a tornado. I'm going to come to a grittier version of a stor storm track Doppler radar here in a moment. It doesn't show storm tracks or anything like that, like what we typically show, um, but it allows me to kind of uh, assess things a little bit better on just to make sure we have the right wind. So give me a moment and I apologize this isn't going to be as pretty as what we typically show. So here is radar and let's look at the wind mode on this. Okay, that cleans up my wind signature somewhat more. Still showing it kind of circulating back into Wheeler. This part in Baldwin hasn't quite wrapped around as well. That's just such a weird signature there. I don't know that this is producing a tornado. It's got an area of circulation. Let's prepare as though it could produce tornado-like damage, though, because I show the wind, or I show the movement on this as of the latest update. It shows 63 knots. So I show the leading push of wind there moving about 70 miles per hour. So if the leading edge of wind is moving 70 miles per hour, how strong does that make the wind that's pushing along with it? Probably faster. So Marietta, tornado-like damage for you, a possibility out of this. Now that we've cleared that up, I'm going to go back to our regular version of Storm Track Doppler radar now that I have a stronger idea of what we're looking at there. It looks like a significant damaging wind potential with tornado-like damage out of damaging wind. Um, all of that to say, this graphic. Make sure you know where your tornado safe place is because your severe wind safe place is the same as your uh, tornado safe place. And we need to be assuming that we could be contacted with that. So I'm gonna take this up to 70 miles per hour as we track that leading bow echo there um, that if you watch some of our broadcasts, even last night or on Facebook Live earlier today, um, this was uh, uh, one of those big strong wind pushes that we were talking about. This is where it's coming through. That's what the projections were showing. We show if it continues at 70 miles per hour, and it might slow down, but let's give you the time just in case. Tishmingo 1018 for you, new site 1008, 1005, Hobo Station basically on top of you now there as it works its way out of the area after that. Strong straight line winds, yes, maybe trying to produce a tornado, though I have not had confirmation of one as of yet as I kind of go back and forth here. There's lots of stuff in advance. None of these blues line up with where I have my circulation. So because of that, I think we're still, thankfully, barely good to go on that one or and, and so it needs to be treated as tornado like wind damage but i can't thankfully confirm tornado on that as we come south here a couple of areas of circulation that we have been watching on this and it's the one near eupora now wallfall that has strengthened a bit more hold on okay we've had a couple areas back here there was our second winona i gotta move it to where y'all can see it Let's pull this down. Clearly, if you're in these tornado warnings as we've been talking about, we need to be a tornado safe place. But we did have one there, uh, area circulation kind of moved through Winona. That one's still near Lodi. That's the second one. That's not the original tornado. We have the original tornado that's up here and then another spot that's closer to Walthall as well. The reason I point that one out is because it's not inconceivable that this has transitioned. John, I'm gonna, let's leave it on this shot here, but I want, I want John and Anae to, to, to use your meteorological theory for a moment as I pull this off for a second. Okay, is it conceivable okay. that what has happened is we have watched the original circulation include up into there. I still, I still show possibly we can get inflow on that. I was curious if we thought it had occluded and then maybe this was the development of a new one. This Could almost be. looks like a separate cell. It, it, it does look like strange like that. Like you said, one that's uh, lo like losing its punch and then the other one that's now trying to replace the other one, which happens sometimes with long track tornadoes. Sometimes you get like secondary or even third tornadoes through time. I mean, it's just like one track ends and another one kind of starts within miles of the old track. I'm not saying that's happening right there, but you bring up a good, pretty good point. Okay, so agree, agree in A? Okay. Um, so there's where I'd say are two areas. You have your legacy area, the area that's been the area of circulation that's caused the damage back out in the delta um, that probably caused damage. Do we have, by the way, confirmation, um, additional confirmation of damage from Winona yet? All Emily? Power outages and trees down. So we know we have trees down it's there. Early it hits really early. I'm hoping maybe it stayed just south of town, um, but certainly. Mm. What other counties do we need to check? Um, we need to t check with Webster. Um, we need to continue to check on Union, Prentice, um, perhaps Northern Lee, and then eventually Tishmingo County. Um, couldn't hurt to maybe do Pond Talk in Union, but, but we, we, we can get there at that point because I don't, I don't think it was as strong when it moved through there. 
Okay, so you can see in advance of this, Houston, the discussion has changed. For hours, we've talked about a confirmed tornado, tornado emergencies. Um, we are not at that level. I can't confirm tornadoes on this now, okay? Um, that is one shift that thankfully has occurred with this. But I can still tell you uh, that these storms are still in an environment where it could possibly happen. John, I want to check. You, you've been putting some things in our chat, uh, you and Emily. What, what, what's kind of coming in there? Well, we got a lot of uh, shelter photos. Uh, but we do uh, have reports from uh, Ellistown here in the last uh, half hour from ma major hail in the Ellistown area. A couple of times that was reported by one of our viewers, Chuck. Uh, also, uh, we're looking at, again, uh, just a lot of photos of people just uh, sheltering in place. But it's nighttime. You know, we're not l asking anybody to go out there and, and risk their life by going out there and seeing any kind of damage photos like that. But again, a lot of folks on a Friday night, you know, one, one uh, group of folks, I forgot where they were, I think they were in New Albany, had a wedding rehearsal going on, I think, and they even sent their photos. So again, a lot of folks out and about on a Friday evening. Isn't it the rain on your wedding day, get your ring free thing? Yeah, they might not do that anymore there, but hopefully they, they, they were safe in their safe place. I appreciate this, this picture coming in from a safe place selfie from the Algoma area a little bit ago. Everyone there at the shelters um, within steps. When we say within steps, that's what we mean. You know, you don't necessarily every have to be for hours inside the safe place, but once that warning is issued, yeah, you do. So I hope those folks are all good tonight. Um, as we look at the areas of circulation down here in Chickasaw and uh, Webster counties, I do think we have more clarity on this northern circulation. That's unfortunately looking stronger. Let's see if that still that's a little ahead of where maybe we'd see it near Hohen Linden, obviously, where I'd have our circulation there south and west of Woodland, um, continuing to kind of move east and northeast. I'm interested on this little appendage there. Let's. No, that's a different, different precip core. Um, so at least we're questioning this because there was unfortunately for hours on end no question. Um, at least this is questionable now. So let's get a storm track, and we need to head back north. Um, so I'm going to do two storm tracks. I'm going to track the northern one, the, the one that's been doing it for a long time. We're going to clip Houston with that. And so we show Woodland at 1016. View current time is 1010. We're looking at Houston at 1022. We've been talking about you for a long time here. Tornado safe place, Van Vliet at 1019. We're looking at Wren by about 1040. And a reminder that tornado safe place, the lowest floor of a sturdy structure, but also unsafe places or any time we find ourselves in a car, truck, a mobile home, we need to make sure that we are not in those places there and that we find sturdy storm shelters. Um, out here, Wren, eastward, we can make an argument that you can do that. All the rest of these folks, unfortunately, we're kind of locked into our location at this point here, and hopefully it's a safe one. We've, we've tried to give you as much heads up as possible. Current time is 10, 11 p.m. You're watching WTVA 9 News at 10. I'm Chief Meteorologist Matt Lopin alongside our meteorologist John DeLusick and Anae uh, Scales. Our uh, Ethan Foster is uh, on his way. Ethan's in Starkville. Okay, in Starkville and Shelter. Okay, and then our Gabe Maynard and Chris Knowles are working toward Winona, where we believe we've had a pretty significant tornado track very close to town. Um, Ethan's in a safe place in Starkville right now. Ethan's in a safe place in Starkville. Okay, perfect. Um, that's where we want to keep people, is uh, our people, and hopefully you keep your people is in those safe places. Luckily, we're still questioning whether or not this is a tornado up north. What we aren't questioning is whether or not this is strong straight line winds. We think this is probably 70 mile per hour winds. So tornado-like damage along the leading edge of this, approaching Moores Mill, Tishmingo, working near mine not there in Cherokee, Alabama eventually. But it's uh, eastern sections there, right, pretty much right at Bay Springs Lake. You can see the outline there. That's Bay Springs Lake. We go back to the precipitation mode there. And we're going to, again, we'll say 65 miles per hour is the forward motion, which might honestly be a little bit slow. And so Bay, Bay Springs Lake, we show at 1013. Tishmingo at 1017. Dennis at 1020. Uh, Peterstown 1023, Belletti Springs at 1024, and Mod Community at 1024. This is Doppler radar indicated area, area of uh, circulation that could potentially be a tornado. Um, and at the very least, it's strong straight line winds. It's issued because Doppler radar saw rotation. Um, the hail is uh, also potentially there 
uh, as well on this. So let's talk about everything else. Let's just take two seconds here and talk about what, what, what has everybody else got. Okay, so on the very broad scale, I have two storms that we still have significant concerns about. The rest of this, I mean, maybe there's something back here we'll have to watch um, because this, is a, this still has some clean inflow from the south, so we'll have to watch that. We'll look closer at that here in a minute. The rest of this is just rainfall right now. Um, maybe some hail from time to time, but primarily just rainfall. So that's why we're concentrating on a couple of these spots and we're not mentioning you in Columbus. That's a good thing. We're not mentioning you in Starkville at the moment. That's a good thing because you're still kind of ahead of this as well. But that's why we're concentrating on a couple of these uh, specific areas there. Um, our long-term circulation down here though in uh, southern Chickasaw County continues to approach the woodland area. Um, I'm going to check it from a bunch of different radar sites to see if we have the best angle. We're, we should be with the best angle from Monroe County, um, but that does a pretty effective job of showing it also from Jackson and from Memphis. So I show it approaching the woodland community within the next few minutes here. Again, 55 miles per hour. We'll put that in the woodland within, I mean, what, the next two minutes, maybe three minutes at most. So this is a Doppler radar indicated area of um, wind that could potentially be a tornado. Uh, at, it has not been confirmed in the last few minutes, but previously we had strong uh, tornadoes out of this thunderstorm. And so we have to assume once it's done that, that it could make a comeback and do it again. Um, discussion with the National Weather Service talking about how the winds aloft now getting up uh, above 70 miles per hour. And some of that could potentially be trying to um, push, push down toward the surface, but still potential there for strong tornadoes in their assessment as well. Um, so as we look at this, where this storm has been for just a moment here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a couple of, hold on. So we also have right where the arrow is near Mantee Road. Rainfall mode. Mm, let's, let's bring it in closer to Monroe County and let's see there. Near Mantee Road, that's trying to get more organized as well. I mean, you can see the, the mid-level, the circulation up aloft showing up there. Still a little broad in comparison to what we had earlier, but trying to get more organized. And for one reason or another, I'm just not getting a good look. I think it might, I think what's happening here is extremely strong winds aloft are kind of messing with the radar, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to get this to wrap back up and produce another tornado. I'm trying really hard for that. Um, yeah. So as we said, watching that longer term, track here for a moment. Back here, long turn track, we'll get that eventually towards Smithville. These are kind of shadier numbers, aren't as perfect as the numbers we've get, been giving you up close, but these are closer than what we've given you. Shannon, Nettleton, we show Shannon at 1044, 1046 there uh, in uh, Nettleton, Amory at 1048, Smithville at 1055, uh, and eventually close to Fulton by around 11 o'clock. As we go back to the precipitation mode, the rainfall mode on here, I want to uh, bring up some of the uh, power outage reports that we have been receiving from folks. And if I look at Montgomery County, unfortunately that number is uh, not improving as all this, uh, all the data comes in here. As you can see kind of beside me there, these are power outages. That dark red tells us that Montgomery County is now at 92%. That's more than nine out of every 10 customers no longer has power because of this thunderstorm and the tornado damage that it produced. There's no question, by the way, that this was a tornado. Weather Service will tell us how strong. Um, but unfortunately, that's, that's a very large percentage of Montgomery County that are without power uh, at this time. In fact, as I move that, that'd be Entergy. If you give me a moment, I'm going to see if I can bring up uh, some of those. I do want to bring John back in here for a second. Um, John, what, what are we seeing kind of social media and stuff? I know we're getting a little more information. Here are some in. reports we got from, first of all, from Montgomery County, Somewhere trees Oxford. down, pa uh, sure power building. outages. Webster County, no problems as of 10.05 that we know of. Union County, uh, they report heavy rain uh, reporting power outages in Union County. That's from one of our folks here that works with us, Bill. Uh, Prentice County also reporting some uh, flooding in the Boonville area. Lee County, uh, also heavy rain there. In Lee County, traffic lights out at Lakeside Drive and uh, 145 North, and uh, no reports from Pontotoc County right now of anything bad that we know of. Okay, okay. that's um, our meteorologist, John DeLusic, with a bunch of different reports. Uh, thankfully, those aren't as bad as they could be. Unfortunately, as we kind of look back out here toward Winona, um, 
now we're getting kind of an idea on the scale of the power outages and what, what exactly we have. This coming from uh, the Intergy folks there as I kind of bring this on for a second. These are all the unenergized lines and as you can see everything in the city grid there of Winona is out. Uh, in fact, wider shot here, it looks like power is out um, north of town. It comes back in up toward Duck Hill with power. Those are probably the folks there in Montgomery County that have power right now. Power out, Kill Michael. Power looks like it's out all the way. Intergy customers there through Stewart along 82. Um, not quite to Eupora um, on that shot there. And then all the way south there into northern Tala County as well through Vaden. So large number of power outages associated with this. And, and the wider shot. I mean, it's kind of easy to tell where this tornado kind of came through all the way through there, unfortunately. So massive power outages, reports of damage continue to come in, um, unfortunately. So we'll be getting more information on those as we go throughout the night. Current time is 1019 as we're watching tornado warnings for a thunderstorm that has been in the reorganizing phase for about the last 15, 20 minutes or so. And we're hoping it doesn't take the next step. We're looking up here uh, near uh, Woodland and the Anchor community and Dancy. There's a couple spots along here that we have to watch. I'm going to use our, um, our track on this uh, in a couple different spots just in case because I'd, I'd rather be safe than sorry and I, a lot of times we try to pinpoint it down to the street I don't have that kind of accuracy at the moment on it because there's nothing that I believe is on the ground at this instant but I think it's working to try to produce another one man team we show that 1020 for you Sparta at 1024 this is the same storm that produced all those power outages we were showing you back toward Winona where the entire community is out of power at this instant from what was a likely tornado very close by if not overhead um, so Keep that in mind, uh, and the reason why we're doing this coverage, we're talking with the intensity that we are, is that it's possible this could strengthen again and produce more again. As I show this, the heaviest uh, rainfall portion of this moving through the Houston area, hail likely with that portion as well. As I adjust our track here, moving generally toward Food Basket, as you can see by the Food Basket store there at uh, 1029 Treblock, at 1031 Gibson, at 1038. And if it kind of continues at that angle there, back to the northeast, uh, we show that eventually getting to Amory about 1049 or so, Oklahoma 1039. Doppler radar indicated area of rotation that could potentially produce a tornado. Let's come northward for a moment. Let's look at our other tornado worn thunderstorm up here into Tishmingo County. I know we've been off of this for a few minutes here. We've got to come back in. I apologize. We're trying to kind of juggle a couple of things as this has moved into and through Tishmingo in the last couple of minutes here. Um, so as we as we look at this, um, we're looking at the wind here. Uh, this is primarily still straight line winds, but a potential that this could still try to wrap up and produce a tornado on the north side there. It's a it's a very rough looking return. You can see where the winds are kind of going into the thunderstorm. There's some question of whether or not it's perfectly wrapping around. It's a good thing. Questions are good things um, because unfortunately there was no questions in Winona and you see what the re result of that has been. So looking at this here, I show Maybe north here we have the spot where the, 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 the wind is kind of getting in just the wrong spot. It's possible that maybe this could try to produce a tornado. As I look back here, I do not see a point where I think we've had tornado debris. Like I'd be watching this part there near the altitude community at about 1010. Um, and if I go back and look at the tornado debris at that time, I just don't see it. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we have not produced a tornado on this, but radar is not perfect. Um, and so at the very least, this is damaging straight line winds. It's come through the Tishmingo area. We will try to talk to the emergency manager here in Tishmingo County here and uh, hopefully in a little bit to find out about that as we're also trying to um, kind of assess other locations where we've had some damage as we get that information in. At night, the things move slower. And a lot of times when you have major damage, uh, the information only trickles in at first because the people who would give us information are trying to save lives. So. Um, so that's one of the reasons why sometimes even on day like night where we know we had big stuff move through Winona, we haven't shown you and we haven't talked about as much is because the people there are trying to um, trying to get people to safety and trying to do everything they need to do. Um, Winona Police Chief Tommy Bibbs um, said, and I believe this, uh, he said he heard the tornado pass near his home. We might try to speak with him at some point here. Tanya has that contact. Um, this picture uh, coming from him. And I mean, clearly he's got, got more important things going on. That looks like a lot of trees in the lights there um, as they're trying to figure stuff out, power out all throughout Montgomery County um, because of that storm. And so that's clearly what he's looking at there is uh, some of that 
a tornado damage that occurred there in Montgomery County. Appreciate Tanya for relaying that, or Tanya Carter um, from the Winona Police Chief Tommy Bibbs, uh, as they're unfortunately trying to continue to assess um, what exactly has happened. Current time is 1023. I'm Chief Meteorologist Matt Lawpon alongside our uh, meteorologist John DeLusic here. Um, the rotation on this thunderstorm moving through southern Chickasaw County is not what it was 45 minutes ago. It's not what it was 30 minutes ago, but it's still maintaining some rotation, broad rotation. I would honestly, you can argue a couple spots along here where it's the strongest. I would say down here closer to Sparta. Frankly, the, the radar site there out of you know, nearby Monroe County just doesn't have as good a look at it, I think, as some of these other ones that are just doing a better job of showing it. And maybe that's just because we're also looking higher. And that tells me that the lower one uh, is, um, is, not as, is not necessarily um, concentrating as much here. Um, John, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toss this to you for a second here as you kind of give me, give me an overview here for a second um, and, and just kind of a, where, where things stand at this moment here. Oh, right now, again, uh, from the ones I things I reported just repeating uh, just a few moments ago, uh, everything's in uh, pretty good shape in the Pontotoc area that we know of, uh, other than some hail reports and some gusty wind reports. Uh, we do, do have still some traffic lights out in portions of Lee County on uh, 145 North on Lakeside Drive. Uh, Prentice County uh, reports of the heavy rain here in the last hour or so. Again, very intense rain that uh, caused some flooding in the Boonville area. Uh, Union County, WTV, uh, the, uh, our, one of our reporters from WTVA here and works here at WTVA, Bill. He was reporting power out in the New Albany area and heavy rain here in the last hour. Webster County, no problems as of just a little while ago. And uh, Montgomery County, uh, down trees and power outages. Just one thing to mention from just a little while back, we did, uh, when that storm went through the Yalabusha County area, that uh, storm that went through the Winona area and Montgomery County and those areas. Well, that did uh, prompt some downed trees in that portion of the world along with uh, no north end of the county seeing a majority of the downed trees and power outages in the northern end of that county. So again, a very serious situation across our neck of the woods. We got, uh, again, a couple of pockets of thunderstorms out there. One that passed through northern Lee County, now working its way into portions of Prentice and also Tishomingo County. That one right there still continuing on the severe side. And we have also some more strong to severe thunderstorms as we have mentioned through the Winona area and uh, still not getting much from Winona, are we? I mean, uh, we're not, 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 not much. Uh, okay. Uh, this is unconfirmed possible uh, damaged homes in Guntown. Okay, okay. So, so we're going to be checking out on that. We do have possible. Uh, Craig Ford up there. Our, our news director, Pat Peterson, mentioning that we do have some uh, possible damage in the Guntown area to some homes. Uh, Craig Ford's headed that way. Uh, one thing to mention uh, again, if you've been following, obviously that storm went through the Lodi area and also the Winona area, and, and still keeps moving now through portions of our viewing area. That one uh, again has the, not uh, to the intensity as it once was, but when it went through ro rolling. Fork in Silver City, unconfirmed right now that we know of, but there are several reports of fatalities and just destruction, uh, according to uh, m numerous sites on the internet. Uh, folks just re reporting right. destruction. There are reports of multiple injuries, still trying to officially confirm sure. the fatalities, sure. but. Yeah, Unfortunately, we think that bad situation, yeah. yeah, bad situation, and uh, here's Matt again. And that's our Pat Pearson, John DeLusic talking through some of that. Also, um, our Chris Knowles there, along with our... Um, our Gabe Maynard making their way into my, Winona. Reports from the emergency manager there of roofs um, off of houses there. Um, so there in Montgomery County, unfortunately, with that. So that is the thunderstorm that has prompted this tornado warning uh, that is in effect here uh, in Chickasaw, northern Clay counties. National Weather Service is going to have to make a determination on whether or not they want to extend the uh, tornado warning. It's set to expire here in four minutes. They might go severe thunderstorm warning tornado possible. That is a positive improvement. Um, that doesn't mean the threat has completely passed, but at least we're not talking about what we were talking about where we knew something bad was moving to Winona um, earlier. Now, I will say that this is a fairly sharp edge on the south side of this and it is trying to curl around, but luckily we have some precipitation down here that hopefully is uh, choking the storm off a little bit um, near Sparta, though, and um, southwest of Macondi is where the strongest portion of this thunderstorm is right now. So let's get time to Macondi, Gibson, and it's going to be a lot of spots that pops on the screen there as we continue to look. And so, um, okay, and so we're looking here at uh, Bethlehem School at 10:33, uh, Treblock at 10:36, uh, Gibson at 10:44. Aberdeen at 10.52, um, the Monroe County Airport 10.56, Becker at 10.58, Amory at 11 o'clock if it continues at this pace. Some damaging winds at least. 
We've had strong tornadoes in the past. Hopefully, we're past the worst of this, but hope doesn't protect you and your family. That's your job, to make sure you're in that tornado safe place so that you can do that. Um, wider shot coming up to our other uh, storm that prompted the tornado warning. I'd say the rotating part of that has now exited Tishmingo County. Again, it was moving extremely fast. It's up here around Malone. Strong straight line winds with this. As you heard, some damage in Guntown. Uh, uh, it sounds like also downtown Baldwin heavily flooded, uh, according to uh, law enforcement there, the fire chief. Um, telling us that information there. Plenty of road flooding also in Thaxton. Power lines down in the Ecru area where one metal carport was uh, um, flipped over due to the wind. That would be in the Ecru area. So that would have been this thunderstorm uh, in the past. Both of those would have come from this. Also reports of golf ball size hail um, with this thunderstorm when it moved through Baldwin. Um, so that's what this black sort of color is that you see there. That was the golf ball size hail that this produced, some big hail. So, and that's probably also, also, we probably had some of those reports. We talked to Prentice County up there uh, near Boonville as well, likely what that had. So that was probably some of that big hail, probably also had some there up north of Tishmingo as well. So that has exited Tish Tishmingo County. The park going through Belmont is nowhere near as strong as the other sections there. I have the former police chief okay. for Wynona. Okay, we have the... Uh, Tommy Bibbs, we, we showed his picture a minute ago, former, former police chief from Winona with us here on WTVA 9 News uh, tonight. Um, Mr. Bibbs, I, I appreciate you taking a moment to talk with us. What do you have? Well, we have a lot of trees that are down around my house, but uh, I have a little house damage, but I think right down the road, I had not got down there yet, um, but a former mayor stays. And a firefighter tell me that some of those houses are completely gone down the road from Highway 47. And and wh where in town ish do you do you live? Um, like southeast of Winona on Highway 47. Okay, southeast on 407. And and uh, um, when you say gone, I'm assuming we both mean the same thing when you say gone. That, that's, that's what was called and told me that um, it's, a, it's a house right on the road for me, probably. With 60 or 70 yards, it's going to be completely gone. Mm. Um, well, so let me ask this question. Do you have any idea on, on injuries or people in need at this moment, entrapments, those sorts of things? I, I, I do not. But I do know, um, I don't think it hits directly over town. Um, this is kind of on the outskirts of town. So um, I hope it'll be a minimal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm assuming power out all, all around the area still? The whole, the whole town, I think, is out. Okay, I mean, you've been in a position where you know, you've, you've done some of these before. Um, um, how bad would you, you know, do you feel, um, I mean, what's, what's your just overall opinion? Um, let's say from 1 to 10, I'd give it an 8 or 9 from what, from what I can see on my porch looking out. But if I go, get to go down 4 or 7 where it went direct over, I'd probably get it at 12. Whew. <laughs> that's that's not encouraging. Um, right. And anything you want to pass along to folks at home that might be listening now? Um, stay in and let the first responders do what they got to do to clear the roads. So it's more dangerous to get on the road and look rather than it is to let them do the job. Absolutely. Uh, that's uh, Tommy Biggs, uh, former police chief there in Winona. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. I appreciate it. We're showing your picture right now. And I'm assuming from that picture, I'm looking at headlights and things um, where people are trying to get in and figure out exactly what's happened. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, they, they, that's far as Highway 407 right there. They're trying to clear Highway 407 right now. Okay. I appreciate your time. You know, be safe. Our thoughts and prayers are with you folks down there in Montgomery County. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. Okay, so again, they're trying to clear the highway there. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't look like that's um, going to happen super quick, unfortunately, there um, as we look down there in uh, Montgomery County. So that was about 930, about an hour ago when that t tornado, large tornado potentially, produced damage and moved on the south side of Winona. And I, I will agree, kind of looking at this, it... it, it and again, when, when we're looking at this data, we're looking fairly high up in the storm, so it does not necessarily sandwich down at the surface perfectly. But at this point here, we were he getting reports that this was lofting the debris up more than um, 20,000 feet at that point. Now, that might have been, it takes a while for that to move four miles up in the air. But as you can see, that does correlate back to the potential that this was a strong 
high end tornado, which unfortunately was one of our concerns coming in today. In particular, John and I had a discussion earlier today about, I mean, do you, do you say EF4, EF5? I wasn't 100% sure on whether or not we did that, and John did, and I'm, I'm really hoping that, I'm, <laughs> I'm, no offense, I'm hoping you're wrong. Uh, but I know we're both hoping you're wrong on that one there, but there's a, unfortunately more than a decent chance you were right. Um, current time is 1033. Chief Meteorologist Matt Lawpon. So significant damage reported there in the Winona area in Montgomery County with widespread power outages throughout the county um, still at this hour. Um, uh, reports. Uh, now, uh, John, I'm going to bring you back in here for a second. You put the, to the text report in here um, of... Well, and we'll bring the cross shot in here. We'll bring John up if we could for the folks in the back room there, please. Just to say that uh, confirmation of just what you just heard a few moments before, 78 reports just from folks on social media that uh, it's plural, homes destroyed. I don't know if we can hear you. Is your, is your mic on or is it? Is it on? Yep, yeah, you're on. on. Okay, yeah. back room. Now okay. let's go. Okay. Six uh, cross shot and then double box. We can bring John back in here. Okay, so again, uh, confirmed reports, as you just mentioned just a couple of minutes ago when you're talking to the uh, folks, the officials, um, uh, 407 just reports online, people saying, uh, and uh, people refer referring to that as homes destroyed, not just the one or just one home, homes, plural, on 407 south of Winona. Now, is that so on, like, Twitter, Facebook? That was, a, that was that? actually one of our emails, and I just uh, basically copied and pasted and sent the email to our... Okay, that makes more sense yeah, why you yeah. said it. Corey sent it, I sent that report there. Yeah, so. Corey. Mm. Well, so, I mean, may, may, uh, thoughts and prayers with those folks. Maybe maybe we're fortunate enough that it, that it missed the city grid. Obviously, if you yeah. live south of Winona, there's nothing fortunate about that, and I get that. Um, and so our prayers are with you this evening. Um, as we pull that down, this is the part of the thunderstorm um, that has been rotating for hours. This thunderstorm with a history of producing uh, tornado damage all the way back when it was uh, in southwest Mississippi. Um, reports near a uh, rolling fork of significant damage. Uh, injuries, reports of um, damage in Silver City. We showed you that significant damage earlier on. And that is the thunderstorm here that's near Treblock um, that is kind of moving northeast um, because that also produced that significant damage you heard John just talking about a moment ago there uh, in Winona on uh, 407. Let's go ahead and make sure that goes in the National Weather Service chat. Um, Ane? Would you be able to, um, you can go over here to Jackson okay. and uh, make sure they're aware um, of the location okay. along 407 on the south side there of Winona. Our concern is, is that perhaps this is, and we've been watching for a while, it's been a concern that has yet to be realized that this could try to strengthen once again. This is as organized as this thunderstorm has looked in the last probably 20 minutes or so, maybe 30 minutes, um, where we have a distinct area here where we have the, um, the precipitation on the backside here trying to wrap back around this. Um, and so that could be conceivably what this is trying to do again there as it gets more organized. Um, even the National Weather Service saying Eastern Chickasaw is trying. It is trying. And it's got a little window, unfortunately, here. Because what we have now is we have a little bit of a break between where the other showers down south are, so the potential to maybe get some clean inflow on this. John, um, if you get a chance, let's look at dew points and see, we were waiting on a moisture surge coming north and see if this is still, I mean, we assume it's riding that moisture surge. Um, and I haven't talked about flooding and there's some flooding issues out there for quite a few spots. Um, okay, I'm a, I, I noticed that our over the air on NBC is down the tower. and ABC. Okay, there's an issue there at the, at the Woodland Tower. Okay. So no NBC. No NBC. ABC. No ABC. Only on, Fox. Only on Fox. And we're also on the WTVA Weather and WTVA this News apps. Over the air. So, uh, and MeTV. So our over the air signal has gone down on some of those. Um, but we are on Fox. Okay. Good deal. And MeTV. Okay. Fox and MeTV. Okay. Um, so WTVA News, WTVA Weather apps. Um, if your signal goes out and it does look like we are back. Nope, that looks like a locked up image there. So we'll see if it comes back over the air uh, here in a minute on our transmitter side up there. Um, for a moment, before we get, go in too far, I want to take two seconds here 
Yeah, they're upgrading to a tornado warning. We're not going to do that. We're going to come back in. So new tornado warning. Yep. See, we talked about it. Had that little little zone there out here. Amory, Smithville. They're going back with tornado warning on this because of the history of this storm, and it definitely has strengthened. Uh, heads up for you. Uh, new tornado warning coming on this here in just a moment. They're going to take it all the way to the Alabama state line. So as you can see now, until 1115 p.m., tornado warning issued here for eastern Chickasaw and most of Monroe County. Um, the most impressive part of this is a little bit north, potentially a little north of Aberdeen. Let's, let's check it. E That's close. I would say it's centered more on Becker, um, but certainly we show Wren at 1048, Amory at 1053, Hatley at 1056. Um, watch the potential there that we could have um, a damaging storm and potentially a tornado moving towards Smithville at 11 p.m. This is the same storm that caused all that damage um, south of uh, Winona and all the way back into the Delta, and it's trying to strengthen and do it again. Um, it is probably not at this instant doing it, but it is close because what's happening here is this inflow area is going to wrap back in and this is going to kick back out and it's going to try to do it out here close to Gibson, maybe just east of 45 alternate is where it's kind of looking at. I'd be looking closely. This is Egypt right there, very near Egypt Road, about a mile, mile and a half east of the um, 45 alternate area where it is going to try very hard to wrap back up and produce another tornado. Um, Amory, with what we have had happen tonight, Smithville, I know how you feel when I call you out on any storm. Um, this might not be at that same level, but it has gotten a lot stronger and it has a history of doing it. That's enough for me and I hope that's enough for you that we go to that safe place. We'd say best case scenario, we're looking at uh, around 1057 for Amory. It might be a little bit faster than that, maybe a minute or two faster than that. Smithville, close to 11 o'clock for you. A lot of other folks here that I'm not listing, such as Wren at about 1050. Obviously, the Egypt area, it's over top of you right now. And I'm gonna bring in our meteorologist, John DeLusic here for a second, who has, has some information. Yes, John? The dew point, that little moisture surge that is showing up right now, basically we're at that point right now in Tupelo and area southward toward the Golden Triangle. As a matter of fact, uh, Oxford, excuse me, Starkfield coming in at about 70, lower 70s dew point right now. And there's a good surge going all the way up into about feeding that storm that's been coming in basically on, it's on the tip of that dew point surge. Yeah, you're right. It so, looks like, a, I mean, it even looks like a little wave there. Yeah, it's a big wave. It's just coming in. And again, I'm not sure about that uh, Starkville 72, but that's a pretty high dew point for Starkville. So, so what this is, is this is riding, this is a moisture nose, and it is just, it's basic, think of a surfer riding a wave, right? And this is riding the wave of moisture here, um, and it's, it's followed that leading nose of the stronger winds aloft and moisture for hours. Um, the likelihood is that this could produce a tornado and a strong tornado soon. And so if it's producing one or not right now, doesn't matter. A strong tornado could be coming for this storm very soon. Yes. Hold on. Okay. I, while tornado damage, let's pull John down here for a moment here. While tornado damage isn't something I can confirm at this moment here, I would say where we talked about a moment ago here, Right there near Egypt Road, this is probably going to be a tornado within the next scan. So I believe that we are within moments of seeing this produce a tornado once again. Um, the only positive here is that this is not the most populated portion of Monroe County, but unfortunately some of the most populated portions of Monroe County are in the path of this. So as I go back to the wind mode here, that is, that's not, not a good thing. When you see the red, and it's kind, it's, it's kind of a radar error there, but when you see it like that, a lot of times we're looking at debris the next time we get data. And I can't say for sure that that's not already Turnbull Road right there on Egypt Road. We'll get a new scan here in a moment, and there it is. There's our tornado, right where we talked about a moment ago. Here we are. So we now have a tornado on the ground, Monroe County, 
Uh, Egypt Road, just east of that by less than a mile. Tornado on the ground doing damage at this moment on Turnbull Road in Monroe County. We need to make sure that we're in the middle of a sturdy structure, a small windowless room where we can wrap up with blankets and pillows, put on a helmet to protect ourselves from debris, and stay there until we can give you the all clear. Significant damage possible out of this storm uh, at this time. Let's look at the precipitation mode that's going to make sure we get the right angle on this. This is moving more north. Wren, right now, this is wrapping more north. White Rock Road, up here, working in the direction of McAllister Road. You're in the path of this in the next couple of moments, and it might be moving faster than what I think it is. I'm going to track this a little faster. I might be too fast. I'd rather be too fast than not. But, Pat, we now have a tornado in Monroe County. Where's Craig? I've got Ethan in Starkville and Craig going to, to Boonville. Okay, then let's take Ethan up to this. Okay. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Is it, can he safely get from Starkville to... We'll look at that. Remind me in about 30 seconds here. Okay. Um, there are some times. Ren, 1050. I went up to about 60 miles per hour on this. This is textbook stuff here, unfortunately. Um, tornado damage on what is possibly a strong tornado occurring right now in Monroe County, just east of 45 alternate approaching US 45, where it shows Ren there at 1050, that would be where it crosses US 45. So as you can see, large tornado, considerable damage possible out of this thunderstorm, an extremely dangerous thunderstorm, and they've ta taken it up to 65 miles per hour on the movement. We're gonna get a shot here in a moment of the angle, that's coming toward Ren. So it didn't move as far north this time. Unfortunately, this storm's finding balance, and that's not a good thing, because the balance is going to allow it to maintain this tornado. Bigby, Wren, Amory, let's go wide here for a second. John's going to have to tell you whether or not Ethan can get up there. I'm not going to have time to go to that. Um, so, Wren, yeah. close. Maybe just south. I wouldn't go by my maybe on this here. We need to be in a tornado safe place. There's going to be people with Wren addresses, people that consider themselves um, residents of Wren that this is a strong tornado. Um, and Amory, this is a close call. Let's do a wide track here for a moment. I'm going to track it at 65 miles per hour. I'm going to go 60 miles per hour. I'm going to track it. Take this picture. Send it to somebody. Find somebody you know in Monroe County. Somebody text Craig's wife. Make sure they're aware that this is a strong tornado on the ground. This is a storm that's had a history of producing significant damage and could be producing, is producing a significant damaging tornado right now. And as the folks at the National Weather Service Birmingham looking at this storm say, velocity's off the scale. I mean, this is a bad one. Middle of a sturdy structure, a small windowless room, wrap up in blankets, pillows, put on a helmet to protect yourself from debris. If your city is in that list there, we need you in your tornado safe place. Now, let's come street level here. Let's look at what we're looking at. And by the way, this is a situation where, unfortunately, there is no question. White Rock Road, this is a strong tornado producing significant damage now approaching McAllister Road, moving 65 miles per hour. That's more than one mile per minute. Call ahead. Wren, people need to know. I mean, you see that dot there in the middle? That's the middle of the tornado. And there's the damage, the debris circling around the middle of the tornado right now. We're very close to the radar site, so it's highly likely that we're sampling a good chunk of the tornado um, and certainly the circulation just above the surface. This is a strong tornado that Ren, let's show the time here, and I show current time is 1046, 1047 Ren. Now old Ren Road, this is going to be extremely close. So I highly recommend that you take this seriously. This is a tornado emergency for Wren, for northern Monroe County. A confirmed large and violent tornado potentially on the ground right now producing significant damage. We need to be in our tornado safe place if we expect to survive this. Let's show you the, the wind mode here, how fast that wind is rotating. And I show a wind change of more than 150 miles per hour on this. 
moving into the REN area. Looking at the debris mode, still showing about that stock. And this red ball that you see right there is all the debris moving over McAllister Road now. Where would we say it is? I expect the next scan that you will see this right about here. Honestly, it might be slightly ahead of that. So let's adjust our track appropriately. Ren, we need to be in our tornado safe place. You can see some times there. I'm going to make sure our angle is correct on this because the angle matters. It has actually moved slightly, slightly more east on this one. But that is still the darker purple colors you see there is tornado debris and damage on a strong tornado approaching US 45. This is a bad one. And this could be a loss of life situation. If you know folks who live on Little Kunwa Road, US 45, approaching uh, 45, this is regular 45 there. Um, this is 278, we're west of Amory here. This is a tornado on the ground, Watley Road. Every bit you see here is because of a significant tornado causing damage. This is as low as our correlation gets. What we're looking at is we're looking at trees, tree branches, dirt, and possibly structures. This will be a killer if it hits you and you're not in a sturdy structure. This is a strong, damaging, life-threatening tornado. Now let's get an angle for Amory for just a moment here. As I place, I'm gonna just do it on my screen here. Make sure we have the angle right. Okay, this is north side of Amory. Maybe just, maybe just, maybe just north of the waterway. I'm gonna adjust our stuff here in just a second. Let's get it to the latest scan. We're now just east of 45, just east of 45 now on the latest scan here. Just uh, east of 45, we're hearing significant damage reports coming in there. We'll find out more. Is, hey, Pat, where is that at? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, we'll look at that here in a minute. So some, some, damage, some wind damage in the Tupelo area as well. Um, with, with, I mean, that just shows you outside of this. So some significant damage even outside of these storms. But Amory, um, clearly five minutes, best case scenario, Midtown. This is a close call on the north part of Amory. We've got to be in a, a tornado safe place. This could have the potential for catastrophic damage. As we mentioned about five minutes ago, tornado emergency now in effect for locations in Amory, Big B, Flynn, and Smithville. As I extend this track ahead, make sure that we have Smithville in that track. We showed 1103 for you. Um, New Salem at 1108, 1110, Tilden Academy at 1114. But Wren over top of you now, a damaging and potentially deadly tornado. If you're a praying person, I don't, I, We've had to ask for this a couple times tonight. Hope you'll save some prayers for those folks down there in Monroe County tonight. They definitely need everything they can get. Coontail Road. Now we show it just south of US 78. This is the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway there. This is Bigby. This is going to track extremely close to where we had a damaging tornado a couple of weeks ago. Looking at the wind mode, yet to update on the position, but um, that's a strong tornado at this moment. It does look like we're back on over the air. In case our over the air signal goes out again, we uh, are streaming live on Facebook Live, WTVA News, WTVA Weather app. Check that out. That's a place where you can stay up and ahead of this. Tornado debris lofted so far at least uh, 7,000 feet up in the air with this. As we talked about earlier, the height of how high that tornado debris is lofted uh, correlates back, comes back to how strong it is. So now we're talking possibility that we're dealing with a strong tornado, at least EF2 in strength there. Considering the strong winds that we've had on this um, and the wind reports we've seen on StormTrack Doppler radar, uh, there's nothing particularly shocking about that. Um, the wind mode yet to really update on that. There, oh, okay, so a couple things going on. We have a big radar error here. That's a huge radar error on that, but that still shows likely a strong tornado here just east of Amory. How far to Amory are we talking about? Let's get a storm track that has everything I could put on it on it for a moment. And then 
I'm gonna move that down just a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna move it to the middle. I'm gonna try to cram as much stuff on here as I can for a moment. So I wanna keep Amory City Grid on this. And again, assuming we're moving 65 miles per hour, I would say the western few streets in Amory were now less than two minutes away. This is a strong, life-threatening tornado that's going to move either extremely close to Amory or in through the northern part of the city of Amory. And here's the thing about this. Y'all trust me too much, okay? I tell you where it goes and some of you are like, that's where it's gonna go. But the reality is, is that this could cha be changing directions, okay? So Amory, we need to be in our tornado safe place. We got a new scan coming in here as we speak. Oh man, like north side of Amory, this is coming in. Oh man. <sighs> Dear Jesus, please help them. Amen. Okay, so this is gonna track along Highway 25. Unfortunately, this is cut farther, a little bit more east. So I have it slightly beh behind me there. This is gonna cross the Highway 6 bridge within the next 20 seconds or so. Is that, first off, have we made all the phone calls for folks we need to talk to in Amory? For a second. Somebody called Craig's family just to make sure. Just, you know, just want to make sure we've had that conversation. I know Craig's probably done that, but I just want to make sure we've done that. Okay. Um, this is probably moving through the northwest portion of Amory now. It has shifted just enough. Golly, no, this is going to be right there. So we have to be in that tornado safe place. Small windowless room, place we can wrap up in blankets and pillows. This is moving along Waterway Drive as we speak. Lowest floor of a sturdy structure, Boulevard, um, North Boulevard Drive there in Amory. This is gonna be moving, I mean, really on the north side of town, unfortunately. Man, and this is bad one. Northwest side of town. This is moving through the city grid here. I really hope folks are in their tornado safe place because this one's really bad. Um, the debris is lofting now up in excess of 16,000 feet. Just a reminder what that means for a brief moment here. That means now we're up possibly EF3 or greater. It takes it a while before that, that stuff comes back in. So this is a strong tornado doing damage to well-built homes and structures on the northwest side of Amory. Um, this is going to track along Highway 25, Smithville, Flynn. We've got to be in that tornado safe place. This is heading right toward you. And again, as you can see here, this is a tornado emergency in effect, a large and destructive tornado on the ground at this moment. I, I don't know how more I can say it, but that if you know somebody that's out here, maybe their signal goes out from time to time, maybe it's Friday night and they're, you know, doing whatever people do on a Friday night. They've got to know that this could be a killer. 1101 into Smithville, based on 65 to 70 miles per hour. We now have debris up 15, 20,000 feet. Revisiting that unfortunate graphic. Um, now we're strong, EF3. Um, a deadly situation on our hands if not taken seriously. Back to the debris mode. This is on the northwest side of Amory. I mean, I show debris here with the northern city grid there on Amory. So this is tracked on the north side of Amory and it's along the Tin Tom Waterway. Whereas a couple weeks ago, we, we population wise got lucky and it was just north of the waterway. This is going right along 25 up to Smithville. So folks in Smithville, we've got to be in a tornado safe place. Uh, this, this is bad. I'm gonna go just a little bit wider on this for a moment to do a longer track, but um, this is a bad, bad night for folks there. Um, let's track that. Here's your longer track for a moment. Flynn, we show 1058. These three right there, we're going to revisit the time. That's pretty close to what we said a moment ago there, but I want to get it down as close to the second as I can here in a moment. Academy at 1111, Tremont 1113, Shotsville 1119, Weston at 1120, Vina at 1127, Atwood 1129. This is a damaging and potentially deadly tornado that's moving through northern Monroe County. John, if you get the chance, let's look at the mezzo that's come out, um, at which I'm, I will 
bet bucket loads of money is probably just because of this specific storm. Tornado debris north side of Amory moving along Highway 25. That's all this is. This is a tornado debris signature. If I put my next scan, my tornado is going to be a little ahead of it, probably right there. Moving towards Smithville. So latest based on that next latest location, I show Flynn. We're looking at that for you. 1058 Smithville Recreation Area, 1059, 10 o'clock for, or excuse me, 11 o'clock for basically all the different Smithville locations there. Um, a strong, potentially violent tornado doing damage at this moment, moving along Highway 25. Um, this, is, this is just a really, really bad one. Moving toward Turon as well. Let's track it longer. And if that continues, go ahead, New Chapel. We show at 1104, 1106, New Salem, Turon at 1106. This is a uh, damaging, strong, and potentially deadly tornado uh, in Monroe County. You can see that latest update exactly where we expected it would unfortunately be. We should have a new debris signature and unfortunately the debris signature looks like it could be a little wider uh, than it was a minute ago. I mean if we're looking at the width of this, looking at a width that is uh, a debris spread of probably more than uh, two miles, how wide the debris is showing up on here. Moving northeast at 65 miles per hour towards Smithville. So this is a strong tornado and potentially a, a life ending tornado. People's lives are changing tonight. People are going to be recovering for months from what we are watching right now. And so whatever prayers you're willing to send up for them, um, I'm sure they would appreciate it right now. I put our location of our tornado now pretty much right in Flynn along Mississippi Highway 25. This is north of Smithville Road. I'll get Smithville on here. I'm going to clear it off so that Smithville shows up on there for a moment. But Smithville, this is obviously for you. So I show it in your Flynn. Your Four Mile Road right now along Mississippi Highway 25. Within 20 seconds, it'll be Caldwell Road. Within 30 seconds, it'll be Davis, North Davis Road. Within the next minute, it's going to be Smithville Road near the intersection there of Highway 25 and Smithville. Pecan Road. I mean, this is moving right into town on the southwest portion of town. Within two minutes, we're going to be in Industrial Street in Smithville. Within about... Uh, um, maybe two minutes and 10 seconds or so, Walnut Street, and within the next two to three minutes, Monroe Street, and where Highway 25 curves northward in Smithville. This is a tornado on the crown that's prompted a tornado emergency. That is the highest level tornado warning. I have no extra gear that we can go on this. This is as bad as bad potentially gets, and I know you've had that before. That is not this sporadic damage. This is that wind we talked about in North Gloucester a minute ago, the damage that we had. This is not, you know, some stuff like this. This is a situation where instead of the awning being knocked down like that, it could be completely gone. Let's hope this thing weakens its possibility, but this is not minor. This is potentially major. Um, thou, I, this is not quite the same debris signature we had a moment ago there. We have to be in that tornado safe place in Smithville. Anything positive I say is a relative nerd term and has nothing to do with how strong this actually is. Four Mile Road, there's an encouraging sign that maybe it's weakening, but this has gone from an extremely strong tornado to still a, a damaging and potentially large tornado here near Flynn, moving here near maybe, maybe, maybe just south of Smithville, but it's close enough that people in Smithville, I'm taking that back. We need to be in our tornado safe place there, clearly. I, it would be way premature for me to hope it was going south, because that's, we'll see. But unfortunately, this is, I mean, no, it's not. This is, this is right in here, southern half of Smithville right here. I know folks that missed out in 2011, nobody thought missing anything but didn't get hit in 2011. This is kind of aimed more at the south side there than that tornado was. Still a very strong circulation showing up on this. And there it is on the latest scan. I would show it near Smithville Road right here is where it is. That wind is a little behind. That means a new debris signature showing up on the south side of Smithville area along Smithville Road, Gap Road, Seminole Road, all basically now by this moment, because it takes at least a second or two to get that data back, now in the tornado. So Pecan Chapel Road, Jug Shop Road, McKenzie Road, Kennedy Road, Faulkner Road, all in the path of this damaging and potentially deadly tornado 
the wind is just hanging too slow. So we're going to have to stick with the other factors on this. I mean, even this isn't hard to figure out how that's wrapping in there all the way around. And the, it's right there. That's potentially a big tornado still um, and likely. Huh, I am moving through the south side there, unfortunately, of the Smithville area. So let's now put it. Again, I put our tornado right here. This is where it shows up on radar. It's right road at this moment. And probably about as wide as what my circle here is showing, approaching Kennedy Road on the south side of Smithville. Near Pierce Chapel Road. As we wait for the debris signature to update, it has moved a little more east the last couple of scans. I'm going to cheat this up north just a little bit. That's where we expect our next um, tornado report. So again, what are we looking at? We're looking at a no questions here. This is an area of Doppler radar indicated rotation that's developed into a tornado that while I have not had it spotted, we have debris and that's good enough. We know for sure that this has been a tornado, that this probably still is a tornado and it pulled north. Let's get this angle. So we might have had both Smithville, at least a portion of Smithville and a portion of Amory yeah, it's pulled a little north on this last scan. See what the rain radar looks on that. I mean, there's little wobbles on this. It's pulled north just a little more at this instant, heading more toward Turon, but I think we still can probably keep primarily a northeastern track on this. So let's put, let's advance it forward. Let's put that right there near State Line Road. Um, obviously, just east of Smithville, a lot of Smithville addresses here uh, experiencing this at this moment. So I track that northeastward. We show Turon at 11.05. We've got to be in our tornado safe place if we're ahead of this in southern Itawamba County to get some times there on your screen. I'm going to double check kind of what we have. A lot of folks um, sending in their pictures, a lot of safe place selfies and things like that um, coming in. We appreciate that. I'm not going to really show a whole lot of those at this moment here, but let's just um, just hope those folks in Monroe County are in your in your court on this one. We're certainly going through this one with you, um, though it probably feels vastly different. Let's talk back here for a second. Amory, we can come out of that tornado safe place. Hatley, we can come out of that tornado safe place. And if you live east of um, Mississippi Highway 25, we need to stay in that tornado safe place. If you live west of it, in Monroe County, we can come out. Let's still stay in our tornado safe place up here near New Salem. Everything west of 25 up there maybe, but yeah, this has turned more toward Turon in the last scan here. Let's check tornado debris. It's still showing up. This is not as quite as intense as what it looked like a minute ago there, um, but still showing up with tornado debris on this thunderstorm. As we check the wind mode, um, yeah, that was still strong, still likely on the ground there um, east of Smithfield. This is going to update up here near the county line uh, in a moment. That's, that data is still processing at the moment, but I show it right along Mississippi Highway 23 in Turon is where our storm, our tornado likely is near Davis Road. Let's go ahead and circle it once again. Along Davis Road, moving near Turon, Duncan Lakes Road, Bento Knight Road, Salas Road, all in the path of this tornado that's likely still on the ground doing damage as we speak. Um, so your time has ticked down. Minute just changed to 10.06 on there. When I pulled the storm track out, it was 10.05. It's on you in Tehran. Um, as, as the folks in the National Weather Service noting on this as well, um, reports that this has um, been on the ground now with debris detected on this for at least 20 minutes. Um, so, so significant damage still. Um, possibly still occurring with this. Yep, so there's our circulation shield jump, jug shop road. We should have a new update with debris here in a moment. And this might be actually our new update. I'm um, starting to make it in there. So let's go wider. Just to double check, um, uh, John, Ane, any information coming in from the field, from folks on social not, media? Not from, from the spotters. Uh, there's not much uh, uh, for reports right now. Uh, and again, nothing from the Amory area yet. Which I'm looking around, just uh, even stuff that's not in a tent for our attention. I'm just looking to see if there's anything. I think everybody's still uh, in their shelter. Sheltered. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that's we, the best way to be. That, you know? uh, nothing makes me more excited to hear you're finding nothing 
because nothing means people weren't out doing dumb things. So, so that's, that's good. Um, but still, as you can see, tornado emergency, southern Itawamba County here. Um, the tornado debris is continuing to spread out. This is a good sign. It's possible one of two things has happened. Our tornado's weakened. That for sure has happened. The question is, is the tornado still on the ground? That's the second of these. I can't say for sure, but this is an indication that it might have lifted. Um, but it's also a possibility that we have, a, we have a zone here. If you look closely, do you see this right there, that lighter area and that lighter area there? We have a bad look at the radar from the radar site up here. There's some trees uh, and some other things that block this Monroe County radar up, up north like this. And so sometimes that can change our view because you'll notice that those lines stay put there. And so we're reading through it right now. I'm hoping that maybe it has weakened, but unfortunately, um, maybe some of the weakening we're seeing is just that we have that beam blockage. Whether this has weakened or not doesn't matter because this is still strong enough that even if it weakens, it could easily wrap back up very quickly. So we need to continue to assume that even though my debris does not show up as strong as it did, that this could potentially still be, I, mean, I show right there near Bentonite Road, that's where I'd have my circulation. So we need to start circling this again um, because it's less obvious on the debris mode than it was. But as you can see, a tornado emergency remains in effect for Itawamba County. If you live back here in Monroe County, back in Smithville, Parham, we can come out of that tornado safe place there. Let's see if we can clear Monroe County as a whole. There's still damaging winds on the eastern side of this, but our tornado is probably up here in Itawamba County based on the latest of what we're looking at. Um, and I, if, if by some miracle that tornado did lift, it's about to re-strengthen and set back down again. And it might have stayed down the whole time. It's very reasonable that it never picked up. We should get a new debris signature probably up here near Salas Road on the next scan that comes in. That's where we have our channel kind of feeding in there. Hold on, let's make sure that's the latest one. Maybe slightly south of that. I need to have a broader circle. It implies more specificity than I have at the moment. Check wind mode. Yeah, so this is a little broader than what we've had it. That doesn't mean it's necessarily a bigger tornado, but just to say that where it appears next, there's a lesser certainty. So Salas Road, um, approaching there, Booth Road, Hopewell Road. This is all south of Amory, excuse me, south of Fulton, northeast of Amory in Itawamba County, so south of Tremont at this time where this area circulation is. Let's get kind of a wider track for a moment. It's gonna have more stuff in it. There's kind of our wider shot. We show Guthrie Cut Church at 1114. I'm gonna get this a little better here in just a second. Basically this next five to seven minutes, we're gonna zoom in on that a little closer. But as you can see some of the locations in advance of that as this moves into West Alabama and out of East Mississippi over the next 10 to 15 minutes. Coming back to the wind boat on StormTrack Doppler radar, we have a strong area of circulation and potentially still a tornado that if it is not on the ground producing damage right now, it's, that, that would be a very fortunate turn of events. I still show tornado debris on this. I mean, that, that's still tornado debris right there being detected on StormTrack Doppler radar. So at this instant, Hopewell Road, where we show this approaching, as you can see, State Line Road Southeast, where our tornado is moving to at this moment, or at least very close to at this time. And there's a couple spots here where I can make my argument, but this is just extremely strong winds one direction, ramping around with extremely strong the other. Um, let's go up a scan and let's see if that'll clarify where our where our mesocyclone is, which helps this to, um, to kind of form the way it is. So let's go back here and we'll go up a scan. Okay, as you could, so if you go up a scan, it's almost more that little interaction right there that is the strongest. So I think our positioning here is pretty close and where we expect the next the next tornado report to be the next scan, probably right within that circle there. 
Um, National Weather Service is going to extend their considerable tornado warning. What that means is they're going to back off from the tornado emergency probably. I believe that's where they're going to go on this here with the next one. Either way, still expecting that this is a, a damaging storm, potentially still a tornado um, causing damage at the moment. I mean, I still show right there what might be debris, what probably is debris right there. So yeah, I still probably have a tornado doing damage at this moment. There's, I think, I think confidently I can say I have a tornado South Academy doing damage approaching the Mississippi Alabama state line. So this is I-22 at the top here. Let's figure out crossing time on I-22 as well. First off, let's address where it is. Hopewell Road, Frederick Road, State Line Road Southeast, White, Whitehead Corners Road, Pale Road, south of James Creek Road, south of Mississippi Highway 23. We still continue to have a tornado likely causing damage at this moment. That's what that blue is there. Now, it's not what we had earlier, as intense as it was, but right there near this triangle between Frederick, Hopewell, and south, north of Booth Road there is where we have likely still a tornado at this instant. The wind mode has tended to run a little behind some of our others. The precept mode is typically lead, and I do think our positioning is right on that. Let's address it. Let's adjust it eastward just a little bit more on this latest scan here coming in. I have less debris showing up, and my wind is still a little bit behind. Wider shot. Just a moment here to make sure that I've got a lot of stuff coming in on my phone. Make sure it's not something we have to have from some folks here. Okay, same stuff going on. Okay. A lot of prayers going up from around the area for folks ahead of this thunderstorm here. Um, and as it went through, we hope to have more information out of Monroe County here in a minute. Um, first responders, people like that, continuing to kind of figure things out on the scene there. That takes some time. While we are interested in trying to bring information, we also don't want to uh, get too much in their way or in their way at all, honestly. And we encourage you to stay in. We'll hopefully talk to the emergency manager in Monroe County here in just a little bit if we can. So we'll try to talk to the emergency manager in Monroe County. I don't know if um, Daniela is hearing me or not. Hey, Daniela, let's try to talk to the emergency manager in Monroe and Chickasaw counties if we can, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so when this makes it the Bexar there, 1118, that would be when it crossed I-22. So we're showing in about four minutes, assuming still about 65 miles per hour, uh, how fast it's moving. Um, so new tornado warning issued on this to, for the National Weather Service in Memphis, trying to give it enough time to get out of the county there. Um, still possibly a tornado, um, though I don't have as much debris showing up on this. This wind signature is still extremely strong. At the very least, this is damaging winds on the front side there near Lundy Road. I mean, this is still turned up enough there, that, turning up enough that it's... Um, if it's not producing a tornado, it easily could once again. Um, it would not be difficult for that to happen. We got a wide, for, give me two seconds to go wide. We have not looked at anything else for about 30, 40 minutes now. Um, let's go back to the regular precipitation mode on StormTrack Doppler radar. Make sure there's nothing that we're missing. I don't see anything, John. John, we don't see anything in here. Um, an A that we need to worry about. Let's just... There's nothing there, but we do have some information on meteorologist John DeLusick. Uh, go ahead, John, what you got? No, on a night that's been bad news. Good news is EMA director from Montgomery County uh, just talked to our Chris Knowles, and he talked to him and he found out that there were no deaths uh, in, um, in the Montgomery, Monroe County area. No, 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 no. Oh, Montgomery. Montgomery. Yeah, I'm sorry. Montgomery. Hopefully Excuse Monroe County. I'm, hopeful, I'm sorry. That was uh, Montgomery County. I'm in Montgomery County. Okay. Okay, Montgomery County, no, no, but, but unfortunately the other thing of what you didn't say there is do we know about injuries? That uh, I do not know. But, uh, okay, well, no. I mean, uh, we'll take no fatalities and hopefully the number of injuries were, um, were limited as well. Unfortunately, this is the same thunderstorm here, um, thunderstorm tracking over a long period of time, and it was not difficult to figure out where this one um, produced the tornadoes there as it's uh, wrapped up multiple times. Now, Bexar is the... Um, the next area in the path of this, 
um, very near I-22. I, I haven't mentioned this. We mentioned the time of crossing. I haven't mentioned this. We've got to stop folks back in Tremont. They can't be coming past Tremont and they can't be coming past Hamilton, Alabama. If you know some folks out here, at the very least, this is probably 70 miles per hour. Could be greater than that. National Weather Service mentioning just a moment ago, 80, 90 mile per hour winds. That's completely reasonable on this. I show straight line winds and it's not perfect angle from the radar site. Yeah, it shows 80 mile an hour winds and you know, wind change there of within a short distance of about, I mean, 100, 100 miles per hour or more. So at the very least, it's damaging straight line winds, but that's going to knock over some semis if they didn't stop along very on the kind of the west side of Hamilton there. Um, that's going to come through on Marion County and possibly knock some over if it's not producing a tornado. And tornado is still very reasonably possible on this as well. Um, while I do not have the damage showing up on here, debris being detected, um, that's not foolproof. Um, so. Let's get another storm track on this as we track this, generally speaking, um, still toward the Hodges area. Phil Campbell also in the path of this. I know some folks that have had some historic um, tornadoes over the years. Um, over top of I-22 west of Hamilton, Alabama right now. What is it? At least 80, 90 mile per hour winds. Maybe still a tornado in the generation phase. Um, uh, but you can see there, Hackleburg we show at 1137 for you, damaging straight line winds um, and an area of circulation that could produce a tornado. Uh, Phil Campbell at 1145, Russellville 1149, Mount Star at 1153, Old Bethel shortly thereafter. Um, reports of um, from fire department folks, um, lots of trees down and power out in Amory. That should not be a shock to anybody, unfortunately. Um, so, unfortunately, significant. That's the first, uh, what we've gotten. Um, also, potentially, and we need to try to get somebody, if we can, to confirm this, some reports potentially of gas leaks in Amory as well. That doesn't happen unless some, that's not a good sign. So, here's hoping that is not the case. Um, but even the National Weather Service says they're hearing of damage, the significant damage in Amory through Smithville. So with that as a backdrop, northwest of Hamilton, Alabama, that is what we are dealing with here. So first off, real quick for a moment, if you're in Mississippi from this specific set of storms, a specific long track storm that after causing um, significant damage out in Rolling Fork in Silver City, in Winona, or at least on the southeast side of Winona, and now in Amory and Smithville near Wren. After doing all of that, this storm has finally exited Mississippi and is now in Marion County, Alabama. So our tornado warning, as you can see now, being peeled off of the television screen because of that there. Uh, unfortunately, though, for folks out here on the north side of Hamilton, Alabama, you're still in the thick of this here. Um, last scan, we showed it near Bexar. As I look for tornado debris, I do not have it current scan. Um, that's not to say that there isn't something there that, 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 that's, you know, missing. I do show my latest scan as of 18, so we're two minutes old, so we should get a new one here in a minute. So let's get a storm track on this with kind of all the everything that we can put on it. I have it kind of behind me on the screen, so I apologize. I'm standing in front of the area of interest. I'm just trying to get as many roads in front of this as possible. So Gravel Springs Junior High School we show at 1122. We're moving toward the um, Bethlehem Methodist Church. This is, these are all in Marion County, Alabama. As I put up those tornado safety rules, um, you'll notice that um, we, those haven't changed all night. We need to respond accordingly to these. Uh, be in the lowest floor of a sturdy structure, a small windowless room where we can wrap up in blankets and pillows, put on a helmet to protect ourselves from debris, and stay there until we can give you the all clear. Um, and again, as we did a minute ago, on the Mississippi side, we are all clear from this specific storm. Um, but unfortunately, on the Alabama side, out here in Marion County, Alabama, that is not the case. And the phrase that I've used multiple times, haven't used in the last 10 minutes or so, um, tornado-like damage possible from this, whether it's producing a tornado or not, weather service folks um, reminding that it's possible to get tornado-like damage out of this thunderstorm because of all the uh, 80, 90 mile per hour winds 
So I look at the, see, you'll see all the colors changing a little bit as they're trying to get a better angle on it. I mean, this is a wide swath there of 80 plus mile per hour winds. And certainly just on the regular wind mode we're typically used to. I don't have the same kind of perfect interaction there, but it's definitely some strong and probably damaging winds out of that. I want to bring in our meteorologist, John DeLusick and Anae Scales here for a moment. Um, anything we're seeing on social media? Uh, well, stuff that's not at our attention yet, but uh, definitely uh, some Let's of the Let's pull things. John full for a moment okay. here. I uh, just want to mention that some things, yeah, it's, it's really bad in, in the Amory area, as you mentioned. Uh, but um, uh, again, like I mentioned, the good news is that the Montgomery County, again, Montgomery County, the EMA director says that everything is fine there, at least from the death standpoint. Uh, we do not know about injuries and obviously damage still, obviously, uh, but the folks are certainly looking into it big time. Uh, so again, Folks, it's just one of those things that uh, you just got to pray for the folks and hopefully get through it tonight. Absolutely, John. I mean, that's, uh, that's I mean, what, what do you do in this situation when you've had, you know, bad tornadoes potentially um, touch down there? Um, so that is the history with this storm. Is it producing a tornado at this moment? Well, it's for the last about three hours off and on produced tornadoes along its track. And mo most times they have been strong tornadoes. Um, so while I can't say for sure this is producing a tornado at this instant, I don't think that changes anything. I think we need to be in that tornado safe place because by the time we confirm it, it's already done something, right? So by the time we say a tornado has touched down, it's already done something. And so considering the history of significant damage and um, the size of the tornadoes uh, that we've likely seen out of these, um, we just have to make the assumption that this could produce it again uh, within moments. Um, this is not, uh, this does not look quite as well organized as it did for tornado production earlier, but I can definitely see if you just, if I make this blurrier, you know, sometimes things change and become a little more obvious. Maybe there's just an aging thing I've noticed, but as I get older, you squint sometimes and sometimes you could see something that you couldn't already see. As I change this over to a kind of a, a, a more smooth look and I pull off those tornado safety rules for a moment, you'll notice how this almost kind of looks like one of those hurricane symbols, right? This whole part here is rotating, and so it's, it's, it's definitely rotating. I don't know if it has clean enough air getting in to produce a tornado, but even if it doesn't, that rotation with it is definitely pushing some extremely strong winds. This whole area red here rotating around is 80 plus mile per hour winds north of Weston here near County Highway 25. These are in Marion County, Alabama, approaching County Highway 20. This is uh, County Highway 29 and uh, moving toward Alabama Highway 187. Um, all locations where these 80 to 90 mile per hour winds um, potentially, potentially as strong as that. Who knows? It's hard to say exactly at the surface. We might have some that are um, at least that strong, maybe even a little bit stronger. That's where those are showing up right now. I know it's really smoothed out here a little bit, but I want to look down here towards Solagent. It does look, um, there still might be some wind potential with this here. Let's take a look at the wind mode on this a couple different ways. Still some strong straight line wind potential out of this. But I think the strongest of that has stayed just a little north. Maybe Henson Springs there. I'm not as convinced for Solagent. Let's Let's put this back to where we go to the regular smoothing so we can see a little more detail out of it. Now we're done squinting. Um, as I look along this jagged line, there's, I'd say, more flooding potential than anything else on this section here because it's just not moving very quickly. And so there is going to be some flash flooding issues. We've already had them, but there's going to continue to be some flash flooding issues potentially out there uh, into tonight. I don't really see as much of the damaging wind potential moving through Solagent there. So, so that at least the best positive thing I can tell you. But up here where we have been watching this uh, storm that's produced the multiple strong tornadoes today, um, it's definitely an area of uh, strong damaging winds wrapping up and impacting this at this time. Hello? My weather call is trying to tell me you're all clear. It keeps trying to tell me I'm all clear. Um, and now I'm like, yeah, I get it. But that's one of those things. Sometimes it's important. I call you for the all clear um, when we do the, wet, um, the weather calls, but also we tell you all clear on the air. So that applies as well. Let's reset here for a moment. Current time is now 1127. I'm Chief Meteorologist Matt Lopon alongside our meteorologist John DeLusick.
uh, and Anae scales. Um, we have not talked to a lot of our folks in the field the last few hours. Many of them are trying to kind of assess damage uh, that has occurred. We have had at least one storm that has produced uh, significant damage on multiple occasions over the course of this evening. Started out back in West Mississippi and this storm producing damage near Winona. Weakened somewhat after it moved into Webster County, but then strong tornado damage when it moved into eastern Chickasaw County, Monroe County, southern Inawamba County, and that storm continues to move up through Marion and Franklin County uh, on the Alabama side. We do have our uh, Chris Nalls and um, he is right now in the, I'm assuming this, we're in the Winona area here, uh, along with our uh, meteorologist, uh, Gabe Maynard there. Um, Chris, what are you seeing there on the ground? Yeah, right now I'm in Winona. Crews are out. I'm going to step back and let you see what's happening. So right now, what you're seeing, there's a tractor here and it's pulling this tree. They're trying to clear these trees. These trees are actually blocking Highway 51 in Winona. And there are multiple trees here that have fallen down. Um, I actually have the homeowner right here, Mr. Terry, and he was inside the house when this all went down. And these trees are all on his property. Mr. Terry, can you tell me what, what happened here? Yeah, just me and my wife and daughter have been watching the news, you know, all night and we, uh, just uh, when it started, we heard it was getting closer and closer. So we went into a little in interior room and, uh, and stayed in there for a few minutes. And we heard a big boom and uh, waited for a few minutes to, uh, to come out. And when we did, you can't see it here, but uh, on our property, you know, it's about probably about 15 gigantic trees laying down on the ground and, of course, across the road here also. And so just blessed that we didn't... Uh, we weren't under one of them when they fell, so praise yeah. the Lord. And these are pretty big trees here. Me and Mr. Terry walked back to the back of the house, and many of the trees are uprooted. Now, I did talk to the EMA director earlier, and he told me that here in Winona off of Highway 407, there is a lot of damage there, a lot of houses damaged, and there are also uh, some roofs that are off of houses as well. And so right now there are crews, tractors out here trying to clear these trees up. About right here, I think he said six trees are here. Uh, right over here in this area. Six trees are laying across Highway 51, right outside in South Winona. This is all that we have right now in Winona. Right down the street, we were at Bob's Record Service. There's 10 everywhere and it, it is destroyed. That's why all we have here in Winona reporting live in Winona, Chris Knowles, WTVA 9 News. Hey, Chris, real quick, let's, let's, let's talk back and forth, Chris, for a minute here. Chris, mm -hmm. any, so uh, maybe, I, maybe I missed it because I was doing a couple other things. Any reports of injuries so far? No, I spoke to the EMA director and he told me that there are no fatalities right now reported and no injuries reported right now so far. So no, in, just to clarify, no injuries in Winona so far? No injuries, no injuries. Wow. None reported. Spectacular. Okay, Chris, um, keep, keep looking around there. You and Gabe, be safe. Um, and, and of course, the power lines, most of them are energized uh, as, as, as you would expect. Um, at this instant. And one of the, the things that we have been monitoring there has been the number of power outages that we have had, and they have been extremely significant in and around that area as we kind of address the latest on those power outages for a moment here, and then we're going to get to some Amory information. Um, so this is uh, coming from the Entergy page. As you can see, Winona, I mean, it's all out all around town there, all north of town as well, out to kill Mike, at least of course, the, the, according to the latest update here. I'm just gonna refresh this just to make sure we have the absolute latest data on this. Give me a moment. Yes, we still do. And then, so it looks like all the way down south there. So, um, Vaden out, even some outages back toward French camp as well. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of power outages related to um, what we've had so far this evening. I wanna bring in our Emily Leonard here for a moment. Um, We've had obviously a significant tornado um, move through Monroe County in the last um, last hour, really last 45 minutes. Um, I'll bring I'll bring you on screen for this. You know what what, what do you have? I didn't want to cover anything up. Okay, just heard from uh, Detective Andy Long with the Amory Police Department. Right now they have a lot of houses damaged, as you would imagine, mm -hmm. trees down as well, and the majority of the damage they're looking at right now is the downtown Amory area as well as the north side and the west side. They do have some reports of people trapped in their homes, okay. but so far, by the grace of God, it's early. everyone seems to be okay. Um, but he said right now you cannot get into the city of Amory. 
Like okay. you just, there's just no way you can't get into it. He says there's damage everywhere, and thankfully so far they have not reported any injuries. But obviously this is still the beginning. Be very early. Okay, yeah. I appreciate that, Emily. Um, thank you so much for that. So, um, man, okay, that's at least at least so far early. In either case, no reports of injuries, and then hopefully that is something that continues. I'm gonna play this again. This video coming in from the Amory area. You can see a. A vehicle there with a, with a tree that's fallen on top of it there. It looks like something on the porch um, possibly ripped away. Hard to exactly see at night here. Uh, e. Kellum sending us this picture, this video here um, of storm damage at their home in Amory. Um, unfortunate to see and unfortunately it's reasonable that we could see more of this ahead. This image is old data at the moment going back to about uh, 1050 or so as this moved through. As you heard Emily say a moment ago there are reports of damage from downtown on the north side of Amory what unfortunately has clearly been um, a significant tornado touchdown that also moved through at least a portion of Smithville there. Um, has anybody reached out on that second thing that Chelsea sent? Um, anybody behind the scenes here, let me know if we've reached out on the second thing Chelsea sent in the chat there and whether or not we can show it. Um, see trees blown down there. Um, and a report that you can't get through Smithville right now, trees across the roads. Um, let's make sure that we have uh, that information passed along to the weather service as well. Kind of both those reports that we have from Smithville. Hey, Emily. Emily, Anae, would you get with Emily and we'll make sure we can pass along those reports to the Weather Service, uh, make sure they have them. I'm sure they're, they're continuing to assess things. Okay, so resetting here for a moment. Current time is 11.34. Tornado warning continues now for Franklin County, Alabama. Um, same storm that we've been watching much of the evening is the one we're continuing to watch here. Looking at the wind mode on storm track Doppler radar approaching the Hackleburg area or near the Hackleburg area where it is the strongest at this moment. I'll say I don't think I have that same push of strong wind that we had a little bit ago, but we still have that area of circulation. Now you remember when this moved through southern Chickasaw, and northern Webster County, it was like, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. And then it strengthened again. We're at that, well, it's not stage again. And it very well could strengthen again. Now, it is wrapped up a bit more back in the precipitation, but as you see, everything's kind of clear out here in front. So I think we still have to stay on guard here for northern Marion and eastern Franklin County. The potential this could try to once again uh, produce an additional tornado and certainly some uh, strong straight line winds, a likelihood out of this as well, based on kind of what we're looking at uh, here at this instant. Um, so we show that near Hackleburg and Phil Campbell moving northeast toward Newburgh there. Um, if it continues at the speed still, we're going about 55 to 60 miles per hour. I'm going to still keep it about 60, we'll say. And we'll track that. So Phil Campbell, Crossroads, Newburgh, kind of in the past. So we show Nick's Mill at 1139, 1140 at Liberty Hill. Phil Campbell, 1143. Carroll Crossroads at 1150, Newburgh at 1155. This is a Doppler radar indicated rotation that at this moment is not officially a uh, tornado at this moment. Hopefully it stays that way, but thankfully at this moment we cannot confirm debris um, and hopefully that remains the case uh, going forward. Um, so again, recapping the latest information uh, coming from our uh, Emily Leonard in our discussion here back and forth. Houses damages, trees down, and businesses damaged in the Amory area. Damage primarily on the north and west and downtown parts of it. Some people are trapped, but so far everyone, no reports of injuries. And you can't get to town at this point, can't get into town, unfortunately. So, so got a lot of rough stuff going on there at this moment. Um, now. Contrary to that, we have in Itawamba County, Chris Dickinson, sheriff there, says they, so far they are good and his dep deputies are heading down to help out in Monroe County. So um, hopefully that continues to be the final report we get out of Itawamba County. It did look like it reached its peak in Monroe County, um, but certainly at least some positive, uh, positive news there. Um, here's a shot on uh, Maple Street in Amory coming in of some of the damage there illuminated by lightning strike of, you know, some of the trees down, you can see down the road there, kind of covering the road. Um, that'd be Maple Street in Amory, where that report was. I'm, I'm 
happy to see that most trees look like they are still vertical at that spot. Hopefully that, um, hopefully that's, that's a sign of the type of damage we saw out of this. Um, but unfortunately, as we talked about earlier, the debris, the damage from this was lofted very high up into the sky, more than 20,000 feet up into the air. Uh, and when that happens, sometimes that's where we unfortunately get some of those, those worst sort of reports. So I'm coming in here, City Grid, to see if I can find, um, kind of find Maple Street. And as I, as I listen to the background here to the folks in the newsroom trying to coordinate where our folks are, you know, just trying to... <laughs> trying to figure out a way they can even get into town to, to find out, to get the stories out um, tonight. And that's just a reminder that if they're having problems and you know we're talking to law enforcement on where they should go, that I know we have some of the most helping people in the entire country, maybe the entire world in this part, uh, in this part of Mississippi. Um, there's gonna be opportunities to help out these folks in the next couple of days. First responders need to make sure that they're not responding to something that happened with you. When power lines are down, some of them are energized, some of them aren't energized, and that can uh, occasionally lead um, to people end up you know, having problems getting hurt after the fact, and so we don't want that to be the case. That's why we highly encourage you to, um, to, to let the officials that are doing what they do, do what they do. Um, right there, okay, so, and that's, is that Amory? You come on, come on and say it real quick. Uh, Detective Andy Long just called me back and he literally said, go home. There's too many people out on the roads right now. They're having a hard time maneuvering. So too many looky-loos, too many people want to see what's going on. And, 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 and listen, some of them are legitimately wanting to help. Yes, they, you know, they do want to help. They want to check on their loved ones. Best thing to do, though, right now is stay put and stay safe. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate that. Thank you for relaying that message. You know, and it's, it's what do you do? Like, that's, that's what we need to do. We need to stay at home. We need to pray for those folks and we need to plan to help them out in the near future because they'll need it. Um, as far as power outages go, um, you can clearly see where we have had the most, some of the most significant power outages around. Um, this coming from poweroutage.us. Um, and let me make sure that I have the latest data on this. We show about 24,000 customers out across uh, the state at this time, clearly where this, and this is all that exact same storm, that exact same tornado that moved, well, not the exact same tornado, but the exact same storm producing multiple tornadoes that moved through the Amory area when it was back out here um, in southwest, uh, west Mississippi and the Delta and all the way through. That's where all of these are all that same storm there. So as of now, latest number of reports, power outages in Montgomery County at 80%. That's actually an improvement, 83% from where we were um, just a little bit ago. Um, of course, still showing power outages there in Webster County at this time, about 300 customers, about 10% of the folks that are monitored in Webster County without power right now. Carroll County, um, looking at 73%. Not a ton of folks are monitored there in the Carroll County area. Um, but obviously where we had some of the most significant damage reported back in West Mississippi, uh, Sharkey County, showing 94% of folks there without power at this time. Our Pat Peterson with information coming in. Pat? Ethan Foster on the phone. You want to check in? With Absolutely. Him? He's a tough time getting to That's a, uh, Well, okay. Um, Ethan, where are you and what have you seen? Well, Matt, I know you might be, I might be breaking up. The service is not great on the road that I'm on right now. I'm on Mississippi uh, Highway 25 North uh, heading towards Amory. Uh, I know that we've heard that it's inaccessible some parts of Amory. I used to take this road to go to uh, the Votec and Becker all the time, so I'm thinking I may be able to get to Amory on the southeast side, hopefully. But pretty much I came south out of Aberdeen on the highway. That's when the heavy rain really started, and uh, it is really 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 coming down pretty hard here on the road where I'm at right now uh, visibility really low right now there are a few cars on the highway out here in front of and behind me so I don't know who these people are I don't know where they're headed hopefully uh, maybe these are official people but if not uh, like you said hopefully these yeah I know I'm, I'm gonna give him a chance to come back on for a second here yeah, I mean, this is, the, he's in a zone that where there's, I mean, here's what happens. There's a couple things that happen, and let, let's have a discussion here. Okay, so Monroe County, say your power's out, and you're streaming us live on the WTVA. Um, yeah, we lost him there. Okay, so you're watching this live on the app. You're watching this live, you know, on Facebook Live. 
the first responders are going to need data, and I know it does bump people off. FirstNet bumps people off um, to make sure that folks, folks can get on, but there's going to be people that need to make emergency calls, and the cell network has a tendency to be really stressed, in some cases can collapse in this situation and make it more difficult for um, people to get those calls in. So I would say let's talk about some all clears for a moment here. Certainly if you're north and west of this line here, everything north and west. So I would, I would put all of Monroe County, all of Chickasaw County, Grenada County, Everything north, you're done for tonight. It's 11:42. Um, say your prayers for the folks that have been hurt. They'll need some help, and you know, feet on the ground at some point here, but not tonight. Um, and let's go ahead and you know, turn off those devices and move on with our Friday night in Monroe County, in particular, the, so that we can make sure we sustain the cell phone network there for the people that need to get that um, need to need to get back and forth and need to communicate as best they can. That's um, probably also a good idea if you're still watching us um, using up your battery there in Kill Michael. Not well, well, Kill Michael was I think out of power too, but also there in Winona. Um, no guarantees to power it back on tomorrow. Some of these spots will be, some of these spots it won't. So let's say some battery power. If both those spots are past the worst of it. Now let's let's ask this question. I'll bring John in here for a second. What do we think about? Um, about the potential for this to produce more severe weather ahead of this line? Ah, that's a good that's question. I mean, that's storm. What, what, I mean, it's still in, that, those storms are still in a very moist atmosphere. I mean, uh, even though I'm looking at the dew points, the dew points are starting to drop uh, from uh, about Tupelo and areas north and westward. And with the storm still being in a very much a the way that this evening has been, even though they're not standing out big time right now, they still could have the potential. I remember just a, like a little while ago, I know the storm had a long history from the rolling fork. It looked like it was going to fizzle out or something, but it, it was regenerated and look what it did to Amory area and areas adjacent. So these storms still tonight, uh, one of those nights that you just have to still proceed with caution and, you know, watch out for these. Okay, so that's, uh, that's our meteorologist John DeLusick there. I think, I think this one we'll look out for here. Um, they're in Octibaha County. Let's just get a storm track on it just to just to do our due diligence. I show the movement on it toward the northeast. Let's see how fast it's going for just a moment. At about 60 miles per hour. We'll just get a look at that. And then what I think, yeah, let's get that about 60 miles per hour. Columbus back out here. So just some rough times on this as it works its way eastward. Um, some wind potential on this. It's not what we had in some other spots, but as John mentioned, there's still a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, a lot of strong winds aloft. Not inconceivable. This could try to strengthen at some point here in the future again. So you can see Caledonia show about 1213 there, Columbus 1205, West Point 1154. Um, and eventually Kennedy by about 1230. Some other spots, obviously quite a few other spots there um, that I'm skipping over as I'm trying to assess some other information here. So it, I, I apologize that I'm just trying to kind of aggregate some information at this time. Um, with that in mind, where are these pictures? Are these... Uh, that one right there, I think, uh, the, uh, the one that just came in right now. That really so the, these... Uh, house right. damage and flood damage. Uh, there is not, uh, I noticed on that one, there was no city mentioned. But, okay. Uh, Okay, and so that was, that was, oh, the, um, gotcha, I see the house damage you're talking about there. Um, the one before that was Guntown. We had the straight line wind that moved through the Guntown area as well, I believe. John, can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, that was the Guntown one that you're seeing right there, the one prior to it. With uh, some uh, the trees down and also more damage to another carport. Uh, so again, uh, Guntown, uh, albeit uh, a lot of down trees and looks like, some power lines down and uh, things like that, but uh, granted that was just, you know, we still don't know what went through that portion of Lee County, but uh, definitely. We, we suspect it was straight line wind, yeah. but, but, but know. we don't know for sure. Yeah. It was trying to spin when up. Daylight, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, no. no I'm saying when daylight comes around, we'll have a much more of an idea at least uh, to see what's going on. And definitely Amory area, obviously, and a lot of other areas, daylight's going to put a whole new story on this. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. Um, Let's see here. Um, so now you also put there in the discussion, um, still trying to get some staging information where, where the folks are trying to, you know, in Amory, figure out where they're going to have law enforcement thing, kind of have a command center there. Um, it's a reminder that the, the deputies there, the, 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 the law enforcement are asking folks to stay home. Far too many people are out 
just trying to look. I understand this is this is a big deal when the, one of these tornadoes hits. A huge deal for a community for for years it can take to, for it to heal. Sometimes just months. Sometimes it takes years. Um, so let's stay in and uh, let's let's let the first responders do what they need to do tonight. Checking for entrapments as they go and mark through houses that are damaged. Um, and then we can come back and, and, and help out tomorrow. But please, if you know some folks down there, now the phone call we make to them briefly is, are you okay? Okay. The law enforcement are telling people to go home. Okay. Here, behind the scenes for a moment, can we take a quick commercial break? What I want to do is I want to send Fox back. I want to send everybody back except NBC. We're going to come back on NBC here in a moment. Okay. okay. Let me know when we're able to do that. We'll run the, cl the, the, the close and then we'll go to break. Okay. Um, while we're... While we're um, figuring up getting that done here in a moment, um, I'm also kind of looking back through some of the pictures and just um, coming in from the Silver City area, which is where this kind of the midpoint of that, that original track, um, as you can see, some significant damage with, you know, just in this picture here, our Tanya Carter relaying this picture here. Um, what it was a lot of debris strewn, pieces of other structures potentially unless that was all from the roof there in the background. Um, also a picture coming in from Winona of some of the damage that was there. Let me know before we do it. Um, uh, so this is some of the damage. This might be part of the problem they're having in Winona with uh, electricity is that looks like some kind of transmission area where the power lines are all knocked down there. Um, maybe a substation. Hard to say for sure. Um, let's bring John in here for a moment. I think this is substation. Yeah, substation on Highway and 51 South. And here's just a real quick, uh, just added another picture there. That's from the same uh, person right there. A couple of pictures coming in from the Winona area. Again, as you say, that's most likely the uh, troubles because you can see that on the secondary picture, downed power lines like it usually happens in poles down. So the, indeed, that's a, some major, just rural damage right there. That's, and, I mean, that well, cuts off you, people. You're right, and, and there's not as many trees down you yeah. know, there, and there's probably a lot of this out there, because at the very least you had really strong winds for a large portion of the area. But the, the, the deal with this, you never want to drive over power oh, lines no. there. You never know if they're energized or not, uh, and they can conduct the electricity and... Been there, done that. I can tell you 2014, in Tupelo, Mississippi, when we had mm -hmm. power lines. I mean, I left to work here after about being hit, and my gosh, there's power lines everywhere. You just don't know what's alive, what's not uh, when it comes to power lines. So and you can't always, drive over it, right? That's right, yeah. It's, it's dangerous to do that for sure. Yeah. Um, appreciate, appreciate that, John. Right. Um, if we can, we'll send the folks to break, and we'll come back here uh, with um, additional coverage here in just a moment on NBC. Okay, that's fine. I know, I know. That's why I try and tell people to get off the phones. Okay, thank you. I'm fine with that. Let's get her on the desk here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Let's, but let's get her on the desk. 
Yes, let's get Emily on the desk. Mike A. Absolutely. Emily, take your jacket off, though. Never mind. Hang a moss, which is kind of just to tells you what, because I mean, I'm sure communication is down. But look at that. That's kind of a uh, eerie email right there. Not email, but just a little message to WTB. Right there. That's that, right. That's a that's a very strong message. Um, Tree down and someone's hurt and needs help. I'm sure that they're having as we're like we're trying to get in touch with them. I mean, I'm sure they're having troubles getting in touch with somebody just to get help. We're ready to come back on NBC whenever. This is a WTVA 9 News Severe Weather Update. Hey, Chief Meteorologist Matt Lop on here as we continue to kind of assess the overall weather situation. A couple things we're looking at. Number one, our primary severe weather threat for uh, this long track storm with the damaging wind potential continues to kind of exit Franklin County. It's moved to a portion of Franklin County where, frankly, people can't watch us anymore. So we're going to turn that over to the folks up, our sister station, WAAY in Huntsville, in their coverage of that. Um, number two, and possibly just as important, is uh, we're getting a lot of reports out of Amory. People are just out doing whatever they want to do, and the We'll talk to Emily about this here in a minute. Police chief is just, you know, begging people to, to, you know, go home. We just got this message on email a couple of minutes ago there. Um, tree down. Someone is hurt and needs to get to hospital ASAP. And they specifically sent that, you know, to us because the cell phone service is practically non-existent. We can't, we're going to try to get the Amory police chief on so he can make his plea to folks at home, um, you know, on TV and possibly get them to listen. But the reality of the situation is, is that it's, um, you heard we kind of talked to Ethan as he approached Amory and then he cut out. That's not a shock. The cell phone towers in Amory are stressed to the max because people are, hopefully it's primarily first responders talking back and forth. But I know there's a lot of calls probably in and out. Oh my gosh, that was bad. That was really bad. Oh my gosh. And all of that is true, but we need to keep those lines as open as possible so whether it's Amory or Smithville, that we can get essential communications in and out at this time. Um, because unfortunately, it's going to be a very long night for those folks, and they're trying to, trying to make sure that everyone lives through this. Because while we do not have reports of um, really, you, you had that one report a second ago, someone sending us a message that we still have to be able to try to confirm. Um, but, but the fact is, is this was a strong circulation that moved through Amory about an hour ago and then moved through Smithville shortly thereafter. A lot of reports of trees down, lots of reports of houses damaged uh, in Amory. We have not had as many reports of houses damaged in Smithville, but it's really early, and we have heard problems with uh, getting around, navigating, and getting into town there related to that, unfortunately. Another thing that I want to pass along here is that we also have had enough additional rainfall on the back side of this that there is an additional flash flooding risk. This coming in from Baldwin, uh, let's bring John up here for a second. Um, number one, I'm impressed by the fact that we can now, we have cameras that look this good and can see this and capture this as well at night. I mean, but look at the shot here yeah, I know. that you have. I know. That, uh, Where that is this? You, that's from Baldwin, uh, sent uh, Second uh, Street in Baldwin. And it shows you some flash flooding going on. We talked about this. That was on uh, the, the last couple of days. We were talking about not only would we see the threat of tornadoes and damaging winds, we talked about the threat of maybe some flash flooding. And there you go. That shows you there are pockets of heavier rain out there. So please be careful on top of all of this that's going on. You, know? well, you mentioned that there's also flash flood warnings that are in effect for... I mean, we talked a lot about Monroe County, you know, mm -hmm. and the reason I'm going to start there is because the flash flood warning for there is important because you have first responders who are trying oh, yeah. to figure this out in the midst of um, flash flood warnings are in effect and the, the water that's over the roadways, things of that nature. I mean, it's just kind of a double whammy. They're just trying to get, get through things. And you mentioned a double whammy. How about a triple whammy when you have the situation where you're trying to do uh, recovery and finding folks or, you know, making sure that everybody's okay? You're in the middle of some lightning, too, on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's just a yeah. lot of layers to it. These purple boxes we show here are the flash flood warnings that we have in effect for our area for, for various locations. This is primarily where you had that north set of damaging thunderstorms that moved through with the damage reports that we had in and around Lafayette County. Um, 
a couple near Union County. I don't know that we've had very many there. And then Lee, uh, Prentice have not had a lot out of Tishmingo County yet, but there was a ton of water that fell in those spots there. And then, of course, our flash flood warnings to go from where we had that damage back there in Winona, Eupora, back here to Houston and, and Aberdeen. We've just had a ton of rain that has fallen in some of these spots here uh, over the last little bit. In fact, as we look at the, we'll say, last six hours on here, um, rainfall totals in some of these spots have, we'll wait for that data to pass, pop in here. But as you can see, it, and this hasn't fully aggregated everything that's fallen. This is kind of missing the last hour or so. But I mean, at least at least three, maybe four inches of rainfall for some spots here. So it's been extremely heavy rainfall today. I've just a couple seconds before this graphic will reset going to tomorrow. So we'll give it a second to log in here and load that up. Um, while we do that, let's go to our Gabe Maynard, who is in Montgomery County, as they're trying to stay out about, of the way of on. folks that are getting their stuff figured out. Um, you can see power crews in the back there. Uh, Gabe, what are you seeing as of uh, 1157? Can you hear me? Go ahead, Gabe. Yeah, so right now we're, we're seeing that the emergency officers are here, plenty of police officers controlling traffic. 407 was blocked off for majority of the night. It's now starting to reopen. Drivers are starting to get by a little bit more as they progressively get the trees up. Um, you can see behind me, there's plenty of trees down. You hear the chainsaws roaring. That's just what this 407 is dealing with, basically. That's all throughout Winona. Um, and it, the, the cool thing about all of this, even though it is de detrimental with all the damage moving through, there are communities coming through to help build Winona back. You know, everything that has been destroyed. The Choctaw County Sheriff, we talked to him, he came down here just so that way he could help rebuild. So uh, communities are coming together in this whole process, just trying to get everyone back on their feet. Because, I mean, you look at the damage behind me, this is only a minor piece of what is going to be a major reconstruction project. That's our meteorologist, Gabe Maynard. Hey, quick question, Gabe. Uh, again, I'm going I'm to ask this question every time we talk tonight. Uh, any reports of injuries coming in at this point that you've heard of from first responders, people there in the field? As of now, we talked to an EMA director, and we haven't heard of any fatalities in the area. No entrapments from what I can tell so far. Uh, we're still learning new information as we speak. We talked to uh, the sheriff, I believe, uh, earlier, uh, Long 407, and he said the only thing to report was property damage. No fatalities, no injuries from what he can tell so far. Again, we're learning information as this night continues because since it's at night, everything's dark, everything's hard to kind of tell what's going on. So as we progressively get down the road, we're learning more information, and we're continuing to keep you updated on that. When you say get down the road, are you heading south on 407? How far, how far north into town does this get, or how close to town does it get? Uh, we've not moved too far inward. Um, it, I, we probably moved about, I would say, a half mile from where the damage started at the end of 407, um, where I forget the main interstate that's on that, uh, where it merges into, but uh, 51, Highway 51, there you go. Uh, where we meet Highway 51, maybe a half mile inward. So, I mean, it's, and we've probably been going for, what, two hours? So it's it's going to be a long process, Except but you have quick, plenty of crews out here. Uh, power line companies, oh, sorry about that. Uh, power line companies are out here, and there's still no power in the area. Uh, plenty of trees down th throughout, and that's what knocked those power lines down. Um, so it's just going to be a long reconstruction process, to say the least. Okay, so the clarifying, because I'm looking at the map here, I'm trying, I'm trying to find how close into town. So you, you mentioned that at the intersection of 407 and 51, there was damage to the intersection of 407 and 51, is that correct? Not, not there, but that's where police officers blocked it off. So gotcha. then if you continue down the road, I mean, it was almost immediately as the houses started and the tree line started that you saw the damage take place. Okay. That's our um, Gabe Maynard there in Montgomery County, along with our Chris Knowles, continuing to assess the situation there. We'll, we'll hopefully hear from you and Chris here in a few minutes as you, as you kind of continue to figure things out. I appreciate that. Of course, that is the same tornado, the same storm, not the same tornado, different tornado, same storm that tracked up uh, through Webster County, through Chickasaw County. And while I don't have any of those uh, tornado symbols here on the graphic yet, they'll likely be, uh, they'll be coming. We had plenty of tornado debris that was um, reported on here. Uh, in the uh, Monroe County area, we do have our Craig Ford, um, who is uh, unfortunately going through places he recognizes very well um, with more information on some of the damage there in Monroe County. Craig, how are you? 
Uh, actually, uh, doing as well as expected. Uh, I, I don't know how well you can see with the live picture I'm giving you. I'm actually driving right. I'm driving right through downtown on Main Street. Power power is out. Uh, from the looks like it's the entire city. I've not been able to get through uh, or to get a good look at what I'm seeing. You know what's going on citywide. I came in for those of you familiar with Amory. Came in over the Ten Tom Bridge on Highway Six to get into the North Side, and uh, you know it's dark. You can't see a lot, but it's it's obvious. This tornado uh, left its mark here. Uh, one of the one of the um, one of the uh, significant. I, I don't know if I'd call it an iconic business, but it's a recognizable. There is uh, an Exxon station there at Highland Drive, Highway 25. Uh, Highland Drive is the name of it in Amory, uh, but it's Highway 25 that heads out towards Smithville and um, Highway 6. And that, that uh, unfortunately, that uh, store looks like it's pretty much trashed. As you can tell, there is debris all in this. I'm about to come up on Vinegar Bend, and there is shattered glass. i got police coming right behind me. As you can see, it is, or uh, Highway Patrol, as you can see, it is a mess. And that is an understatement and no telling what we will see uh, when sunlight comes. But obviously, you don't need to be in Amory. I'll be perfectly honest. The reason I'm in Amory, I live in this area, live north of here. I was checking on my wife. Of course, she was in uh, storm shelter and all, all turned out well. Of course, cell service wasn't very good. I know my sister-in-law. She lives uh, on the on 25 or on Highland Drive. I know she's got some house damage, but uh, it's go, it's going to take a while to kind of go through. But I don't again. I don't know how much you're able to make this out. Uh, power lines down. Uh, at, at least there's power not coming to them. But literally, and this is just on the north of Vinegar Bend here. Vehicles are having to navigate around these things. So we are, um, you know, we're doing our best, try to get a better sense as to what's going on. But for now, we are on the live drive in a uh, tornado scarred Amory. I'm Craig Ford, WTVA 9 News. Hey, Craig, I want, I want to talk to Craig if we can. Let's keep, let's keep Craig up here for a moment. Um, Craig, you're, you're going to have to translate Amory for me for just a moment. When you say vinegar bend, what do you mean by that? I'm sorry. You know what? You know where Bill's Hamburger is. Yeah, it's that. It's that. All right. So when you go through downtown, you go north. Like you're coming from uh, 278, and you go through, and you see downtown. Yeah. And then that road curves. Yeah. Off to the right. That's yeah. Vinegar Bend. Gotcha. That's where Bill's Hamburger is. Uh, Country Boys Hamburgers, and uh, that's where we're seeing damage. And I'm trying to go north, uh, further north here. On um, on Main Street, but I just I, I I'm going. I tried earlier, and I didn't see a way to, to go north on Highland Drive. And I, uh, to be honest with you, and to be totally selfish, trying to get to my house. I'm told my house is okay, my wife's okay, but uh, as as you mentioned on television, that tornado went took cut a path up Highway 25, and so I have not heard uh, from anybody as far as the damage in. Uh, you know, basically between Amory and Smithville, how, whether there's any in Smithville. Um, but as you can see right now, I, and again, I don't know how well you can see because we can it's see pitch it. we black. Can see, and we can I, see it just fine. I had a chance to adjust good. the camera. I, on the left side, I don't know if you can see these um, see these uh, power poles that are leaning, uh, which was a, a stunner for me. I mean, they're just they're just at an angle here. And I, if you guys, if you guys can hang with me, I'll see how close I can. Uh, I can't turn this camera. I, I have to admit, I'm just looking off at about uh, 10 o'clock here, uh -huh. and I'm looking at traffic on the 10 Tom Waterway Bridge, and it's literally nothing but headlights, bumper to bumper. I don't know if I could show that. I may try to get in a better position to where you could see it. But people are obviously trying to get into Amory. I don't know if they're if they're trying to get to their houses. I don't know if they're trying to sightsee. Obviously, you do not need. Are you approaching the intersection of 25 and Highway 6? Damage that, to your vehicle. Is is you, you cut out just for a moment there, Craig? But yes. Are you, are you you're approaching the intersection of 25 and Highway 6? 
Yes, I, I'm uh, getting close. Uh, for those of you who don't know this this part of the city, this is where the uh, the Pickle Weekly Grocery Store is, Glendale Shopping Center. As I mentioned, that Exxon. Uh, I'm going to guess the reason I'm stopped here. Uh, let me see if I can move this camera and uh, try to give you give you some. We're going to wait on this shot here. We're going to stick with Craig for a moment. He's entering the most. Um, while we keep, can we keep Craig's audio up and go back to radar for a moment while we. While this we is probably. To come back for a second. Let's. let's this keep this that is pay. probably. We'll, we'll down for a moment. I, so I don't know. We. Uh, it's it's, it's our Craig's. understanding. Can, can you hear me now? I, I can hear you. Sorry, they were in my ear. Let's um, stick with this for a second. See the lights, and forgive me. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I am trying to navigate. Trying to get around. Um, uh, you may be able to see that in the distance. All, all those headlights, uh, cars trying to. Uh, right there. This is looking back on Highway okay, Six. Okay, I'm going to turn this back. And and right now I am I am at the, yeah this is this is 25 Highway 6 in Amory this is this stretch of uh, 25 is known as Highland Drive and there you can see there's no way you're going through because no. of the power poles I'm gonna flip off here to the right just a little bit and try to zoom in this is the Exxon station I was telling you about is that Obviously, bank okay that's right next to it there's um, there's that bank is there here. Uh, the the bank the bank looks like it's okay, but then again, that's a pretty that's a pretty sturdy building. So I, I would have been shocked if there was some damage to that. It looked bad on um, radar. So. Off to the right. It, so hang on, I'm trying to a, a, and forgive me. I'm just gonna get What is the here. best way? I'm trying to get to my house on Mount Zion Road. It's not happening. What about Hatley Road? Not happening. You can't get from there, from here to there. Okay. And I know where you live. What about? Uh, you can go. What about from Fulton? You, yes, sir. You can go around. I, I don't know if Smithville is bad. Yeah, I don't either. So, I mean, so. you're aware of that, probably yeah. as well as I am. I don't know how you're going to get there. <sighs> Walk. <laughs> May have to. You know, yeah. you're as close as you're going to get. Right around that corner, right there's a tree, a huge tree on the road. You know that big white house? Yeah. Yeah. There's a tree down right there that it's impassable. Gotcha. Until these guys get their chainsaws cranked up. Yeah. So. And I mean, there's power lines like this. Yeah. For every quarter of a mile, there's three power lines. Gotcha. All right. I appreciate Sorry. it. Appreciate no, it that's the way it is. So. Hey, thank you. Thank you. You're going to have to go west to go north. Yeah, I hear you. Then you can see that. that thank power you. That pole that was dangling. So, um, don't. Uh, I, I don't. I do not know if uh, Matt. I don't know if you heard any we of that conversation of I had with the sh uh, sheriff's deputy. Uh, yeah, it's uh, so. Uh, so you're you're pointed up Highway Six now, right? As you can. By the way, I am going. Let me. See, yeah, and matter of fact, I want to. I want to show you. I'm going to see if I can get into this parking lot here. Uh, this is the Piggly Wiggly parking lot. Looks like this is uh, serving as a staging area. Um, and this is, again, this is, this is, this grocery store has been here, I mean, since I was a kid, probably longer. That's two Piggly Wiggly's uh, in Monroe see, County. And I'm just going to pan around here. There you see the, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but as you can see, you've got all these emergency vehicles, uh, as I pan around and, uh, I'm going to see if I can get down and I want to, I want to give it a shot. Uh, people obviously, you know, are trying to, to to get in the city, and it's 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 not. Um, let me see if I can give you a better sense as to the uh, traffic to come in in the distance. And um, I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna try to zoom in. Oh, oh, oh! Hang on. Almost there. If y'all can get out, the most you can get out, as fast as you can get out, people stay home. Yes. They're hindering us big time. You, hey, you're on live television now, so okay. I will, yeah, you yep. just got it out. So. Assistant Chief Weaver, ask everybody to stay home. All right, Thank we'll you. do it. Thanks. So uh, let me show you, by the way, since we're here, Matt, might as well show you the rest of this uh, um, shopping area or Glendale Shopping Center. Mm. Uh, 
structural damage. Uh, is our great uh, on the side of Amory. And um, and I am uh, just trying to see Itawamba County's got a presence here. Uh, we you know we saw the same thing where we saw various um, or outside uh, counties municipalities came uh, to help during Smithville, and that obviously is happening uh, in Amory. And of course, I'm sure there there are, are folks here who are fully aware of what happened in Winona tonight. Here, so we can get uh, so you can get a better sense of it. And and I'm, I mean, you you, you reposition for just a second. We're going to leave your video up for a second. Um, but but we we were talking to Amory Police Chief Emily. Got him on the phone for like a hot second. Um, is he All there? Right, Chief, you there? Yeah. yeah this keeps happening. Man, yeah, we keep we keep losing him. Are you there, Chief Ronnie Brown? Bowen. 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 I'm sorry, Bowen. My I need my glasses. Sorry. Um, anyway, the, the point is this. The chief keeps trying to call, and as you heard the deputy um, talking with Craig a second ago, I don't know if you heard the tone of voice, which was borderline pleading that people would stay in and stay off of the phones and because they can't find out if people, they can't get emergency chief, calls in. There? Chief? He, we, we get connected, and then on their end, they're getting disconnected. Hold on. We sort of have them. Chief, can you hear me? Why don't you try a FaceTime audio call? It's possible that maybe we can get through on data, even though we can't get through on, on the actual line. <laughs> We're trying. We're trying real hard. Chief. Chief, can you hear me? Chief. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Well, I don't know how long we'll have you. Hey, this is Matt. Um, you're live on WTVA 9 News. Let's let, let's let you say it the best way you can. Well. Lots, lots of damage. Traffic. We've got traffic and we can deal with We can't even get to the people we're trying to get to. Trying to get around them. Don't have anything, please go and find a two drive to help us. Uh, I'm gonna give him a couple more seconds. We actually got him, Chief. You're cutting out um, all over the place. Um, and I apologize, and we'll try to see if maybe we can get back with you in a minute. But I think the, the, the baseline that we got here, and I want to make sure if you can hear me, I might not be able to hear you, but if you can hear me, the baseline that I think we're getting is, number one, people need to stay in. Because, number two, there are very few thoroughfares that are even usable at the moment. And, number three, it, you can't have a difficult time communicating with the folks that you're trying to get to because cell phone service is bad, and because people are on the roads you can't actually get from point A to point B. I don't know if that's clear enough or the best case scenario. Hello, but that's okay. We will try. We'll try to touch back base with you here in a little bit. We apologize that folks are doing that and we we can't get the connection going. All right. Okay. Appreciate. It. Try to see if you. Okay. Bye. Think he could hear you, but. Okay. Yeah, he could hear me, but I couldn't hear him. The outward connection on that was not working and the inward was. Sometimes that happens. You're looking at Craig's video behind me as he is on the north side. Let's bring up radar for just a second here. Um, and then we'll try to, we'll talk to Ethan for a moment as Craig's trying to maneuver there uh, and going back to here to where we were. So Craig is on the north side. So this is looking earlier, right? He is on the north side of Amory where you saw him pointed there and you had the power pole. He's trying, was trying to go up the highway 25 here. When he's over this direction, he turned this direction and pointed down toward the Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly is right there. There's a few other things. I think there's a movie theater in that, that shopping center there. And then he was looking up and you saw those cars on the highway that direction. As we go back to about 1055, this is where we had that damaging tornado. As you can see, it moved through, and it jumps there, but clearly it moved right in here. 
so just kind of clipped the northwest side of Amory. I mean, this could have been massively worse. And there was damage down this, by the way. Most of that, some of that damage could be tornado damage. It's related to the tornado, but some of it might be the, um, the winds from the tornado wrapping into the actual tornado itself. Um, as I go back, I want to look at the wind mode here and see what kind of winds we had going in, because you might imagine it's extremely strong. Yeah, some extremely strong winds with this as it moved through the area there. Um, as you anticipated. So our Ethan Foster is also there in Amory. We'll try to talk to Ethan if we can for a moment here about what he is seeing. Completely different side of town. He was trying to come up Highway 25 toward the Amory area there. As he is talking, I mean, you hear chainsaws in the background there. It's going to be a whole night of chainsaws, a whole day tomorrow probably of them as well. As he's um, talking to folks, trying to tell their story so that you can hear um, what they're going through at this moment. Um, but I think the biggest, biggest number one headline we could say right now is the, the, you know, people a lot of times, you know, there's different things on social media that, that they say about different things. Suspenders mean bad, severe weather, as we talked about on social media. Sometimes that happens without that, and clearly we thought today was going to be a bad day. But one of those other things um, that, that people, you know, on, sometimes on social media, they, they just focus on, on all kinds of different things. But the number one thing is just at this point to remember that we need to stay in. And I don't remember what I was going to say. People talk about the go-to-sleeps. Well, Monroe County, if you are not directly impacted and not a first responder, we need you to go home and go to sleep because the law enforcement is having trouble getting to the people that need help. Now, does that mean need help because they're injured or does that mean need help for other reasons? I don't know for sure. But clearly, I think you heard in the moments that we talked to the Amory police chief a moment ago, and as you heard one of his deputies a few moments before that, they need badly for people to stay off of the phones and to go home. So if you can help out in that in any way, that's the number one way you can help folks out tonight so they can help the people that are in the worst case scenario. Um, let's talk to Ethan, our Ethan Foster there okay. in Monroe County, okay. um, talking to a family right. that clearly have had some, some, some problems All right, tonight. Yeah, Ethan? So uh, we're here with uh, Miss Mia Westbrook. We're on a Boulevard Drive here in Amory, close to the southeast part of Amory. Um, Miss Westbrook just kind of... They're going to see it here in a second. They can't see it now. Here's the bottom of this tree that fell over in your guys' yard. Tell me uh, where you were at when it happened, what you were doing. My mom had just called. We went to sleep, and I heard a bunch of run. It sounded like trains. And we jumped up, and we got in the tub, and we just started praying and crying. Yeah, you guys were asleep, right? Yeah, we were asleep, and I woke up, and I heard it. It's just like trains. And we just jumped up and got in the tub. But, but right, the good news is though, nobody's no, nobody's, nobody's hurt. hurt. Nobody's hurt. It's just a lot of damage. But still got fine. some family members to check on. Yes, we have no service. My we're, cousin Betty. We just got to check on everybody, but we're safe. It's just a lot of damage. Right. Well, we're so glad that you're safe. Thank you for your time. I'm gonna leave you to it. I'm gonna show everybody what this tree looks like. I'm gonna let her use my phone after we get done, so she can check on her mother who also lives in town. But guys, the light is low here, but check this out. I'm gonna take you along this tree that has fallen down here. It's hard to see the house, but this tree is right in front of it. I'm gonna walk you down the trunk here, and you can see mangled up limbs here. It might be a little hard to see, guys. Just bear with me. One man crew out here. I'm also going to walk you over. There's another massive tree that I'm telling you this thing is split in half. You may not be able to see it. It's about 10 feet tall, split in half at the top. There are chainsaws over here. You can see some cars. Another, the, the top half of this tree, actually, check this out. Here's the top half of the tree. Here is the road where people are trying to drive through. I don't know if they're trying to get home, don't know if they're trying to help clear the roads, but like I said, lots of debris here. This is just one section here in Amory. Again, it's hard to see, I apologize for that, but this just one home. Hopefully, again, more cases where nobody was hurt here in Amory. This is just one example, though, of a, a home, just a minor damage to the home, but it could have been a lot worse if that tree would have fallen the other way here. So Matt, again, we're patrolling around in Amory. I'm gonna keep trying to look and see what I can see. This is just something I happen to notice. They're trying to clear the roads here. Again, this massive tree. I'll give you another look at the roots here. I'll turn it around. Check this out. You can see the water there. You can see this massive hole that this tree has uprooted literally just a few feet from this house. Check this out. There it is. 
there's the house. So Matt, again, if you need to ask me anything about what I've seen, go right ahead, but that's what I'm seeing so far. Well, step number one on, on where you've seen, I'm, I'm looking at radar here, just trying, trying to figure out, you said that was South Boulevard Drive, is that accurate? Yes, South Boulevard Drive. Okay, and so that's, uh, and that's right off 278, correct? Yes, yes. As you can see, some, some officials coming through here. And that I'm sure they're hoping more people will start clearing off these roads. What direction versus Boulevard Drive? Yeah, go ahead. What, what direction versus 278 is that tree pointed, would you say? Like, is it pointed away from 278? <sighs> uh, yes, yes. So this would be north of 278, uh, that house, uh, Boulevard Drive here. I'll actually cut across the road here. I've got my autofocus on, but uh, here's kind of an idea of specifically where this is. Uh, the intersection of Fifth Avenue South and Boulevard Drive right here. That house is right past that sign here. Gotcha. Okay, so what the, the reason I asked those questions is that was not in the direct tornado. I anticipate if you are able to work your way up Boulevard Drive, um, that you, you should probably continue to see more um, as, as it approaches Highway 25. I just don't know how far north you're going to actually be able to get. Right, right. Yeah, there are a couple of official cars coming through here. These guys that have been chainsawing this tree off, they've actually gotten this cleared within the last 30 minutes, at least to where it's drivable. That's actually why I stopped is because I couldn't get past that point in the road there where you see headlights coming through. That was blocked by the top half of that tree. They've gotten that cleared out. So while I was walking around, I actually just bumped into Miss Mia Westbrook over there and just happened to see her house. Just again, very glad she's okay. I'm going to make sure that she can check in on her other family members. Her phone doesn't have service right now. I'm imagining a lot of other people here in Amory also don't have service. So want to make sure they get checked up on tonight. Absolutely. Go ahead and do that. And if you can make your way north, go for it. Um, I just don't know how far north we're going to be able to go. I appreciate it. Be safe. Well, one other question before you go. Um, Absolutely. There, there are flash flooding issues there, you know, in yeah. around um, Amory. Are, are you, I mean, I, I see a lot of water reflections there in the ditches. I mean, how, are you running in anything where it's over yeah, the roads? I'll give you, yeah, problems? I'll give you a look. Here's the ground right here. I mean, <sighs> I'm not seeing any covered roads per se. I haven't driven a lot in Amory just yet. i um, seen a lot of darkness because uh, the power lines are out. Um, the, the stoplights are out also. But uh, yeah, I'm not seeing flooded roads yet. Of course, I haven't been around Amory all that much. But I mean, here's one example. This little, uh, you can see that, that puddle there. I had to walk through and drive through off the side of the road here. So I'm sure it's pulling up across Amory. I don't know if roads are flooded yet. Okay, that's our Ethan Foster. Let her make that phone call. Um, thoughts and prayers with those folks there uh, in Amory as we continue to assess the situation. Appreciate that. And one of the other things to note, we have not had a lot of reports out of Smithville. That That's not something I ultimately it's just because we have not had a ton of reports out of that we'll hopefully try to see if we can get more information uh, people who have been aggregating this information through the evening are Daniela Orpeza and our Emily Leonard are continuing to kind of um, figure out all the different pieces and parts uh, we do know that we're going to get more damage reports from this area and we'll hopefully check back in with Craig here in a little bit as he tries to finally make his way back home uh, there in Monroe County but I want to bring if we can are we good to go to Daniela and uh, Emily I guess we are. Good evening, everyone. Are mics on? Yes. Let's hope so. Yeah. All right, we are good to go. We want to thank you so much for staying up with us throughout our severe weather coverage this evening. Danielle and I have been manning the phones, the internet, the social media, all of the things, trying to gather as much information as we can. As we've heard from Craig, we have heard from the <laughs> police chief there in Amory. Mm -hmm. We've heard tried from the, to at least at least tried to, mm -hmm. and we've heard from the detective uh, Andy Long also mm -hmm. with Amory. The main thing right now, stay off the roads. Yeah, I we've both talked to Sheriff Chris Dickinson over in Itawamba County, mm -hmm. and he said everything's good there, but he is sending his deputies over to Amory right now. And then we've also heard that a lot of help is coming from. Lee County, Plannersville Union, Shannon, South Lee, all going to Monroe County right now just to help these folks. And, you know, some of the video we're seeing, the video we're seeing through Craig and Ethan, it's hard to see. Not hard to see because visually, but it's hard to see it happening here. Yeah. And, and for a lot of people who were here back in 2011 when that, that tornado came through almost that same path, it is, it's heartbreaking and it's scary yeah. and it's traumatizing. And right now, the key is to get people 
to a safe place. Yeah. Um, we're hearing a lot of reports of people trapped in yeah. their homes. Thankfully, no injuries, but the entrapments because of the homes damaged or the businesses damaged, that's happening. But also, like you mentioned, they're calling in for help. That's why they need the roads cleared. Mm -hmm. Not only are they calling in for help to get other law enforcement agencies in there, it's dangerous to drive on those roads because you can't see them. I mean, yeah. You could kind of make out what Ethan and what Craig had through their what they were seeing, but it's dark. Yeah. You drive over a power line, mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly, bad news. That's exactly what I was thinking, especially seeing Craig. Like, you could see his video only because of the headlights that That's it. he has that were in front of him and you heard how the deputies sounded. They sounded very stern, especially when Craig was like, hi, can I get home through this way? And he was like, no, no. negative. Mm -mm. And um, so just, we can't reiterate it enough. Go to sleep if you can, stay off these roadways, stay safe and honestly just think about our neighbors right now. and just to let the first responders do what they need to do to help those folks, especially those who are trapped right now. Yeah, and try to stay off the phones too. We've had a very difficult time getting through to people in Amory because of what's happened. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it took us several times to get what little we could from the police chief. Speaking of the damage itself, we're hearing that the damage is on the north, the west, and the downtown Amory areas. Mm -hmm. Homes are damaged, trees down, power lines down, businesses also damaged. They're, like you said, they're calling for help. We saw where Craig was at what they're setting up, a command center, which is the Piggly Wiggly, which mm -hmm. is really close to the downtown area. So there's a lot of hustle and bustle going along, along but please don't be part of that hustle and bustle. Mm -hmm. And I now think take a deep breath. I know. <laughs> and one thing I kind of wanted to mention um, and reiterate what Matt said earlier was that folks were calling us trying to get help. And I think a lot of that is because of the phone lines right now. I mean, I took a call mm -hmm. and it was about someone in um, the shelter near Amory High School and they were trapped because of trees and transfuse transformers that were down right now. And I was like, have you called 911? And he said I, he didn't know at the time, but a lot of this is because of the phones being down. Fortunately, everyone yeah. was safe. Ethan checked that out too, but stay off the roadways. Um, it's also midnight. Go to sleep if you can. Yeah, for sure. And you, you talked, you spoke a lot to the viewers. You were back there answering the phones. I was checking on email. We've gotten several emails. Hey, my friend is trapped on this street. Can you can you pass along the message? We've heard of gas leaks. Hey, my friend says there's a gas leak near the house. Can you pass this along? And we're doing our very best to do yeah. that for you guys. We do want to make sure, though, that they're, they're verified that mm -hmm. these things are really happening. We don't want to unnecessarily send a first responder to a location that they aren't needed. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, the main thing, stay off of the roads and you know, if you do help, need help, call. If you can't get through, just keep trying. Yeah, I would definitely also avoid the area of Piggly Wiggly. That's mm -hmm. where most first responders are in Amory right now because that's where their command center is. You saw them in Craig's video just a moment ago. A lot of them just set up right there and trying to assess where they want to go and what's needed from their community. Um, and again, you might see folks from Lee County and Itawamba County because first responders have been asked to help out in Amory. Um, as far as Lee County, it was Plannersville, Union, Shannon, South Lee, Itawamba County Sheriff Chris Dickinson said his deputies are on the way. Well, you just spoke with a local firefighter who who was working because mm -hmm. some of his co-workers yeah. had to go. Yeah, here in Tupelo, uh, there's some shifting going around just because, I mean, you know, a lot of folks come to Tupelo for work. And so Craig is one mm -hmm. of them, for example. So when you're here in Tupelo, you hear what's happening in Amory, you want to go back home and check that out. So some firefighters here in Tupelo having to rush home right now overnight, middle of their shift, just to go and see if their family is all right. So that leads to shifting in the city for firefighters to help each other out. So that's happening. So it's not only affecting just immediate Amory, it's affecting folks in and around the area who may have relatives or who are just trying to help out. And you know, we, we can't say this enough. So far we have gotten zero reports of injuries. Yeah. And it is early, yeah, like Matt said, it is still early, but the fact that we haven't gotten any so far is 
such good news mm -hmm. and hopefully it will stay that way but we've got a long night ahead of us yeah. definitely we do and this is definitely something we are keeping track of um, power outages is another thing so um, just be aware that crews are working on this right now i've seen posts from tom bigby and as northeast to saying crews are working on this absolutely trying to work on those power outages appreciate that emily uh, and danielle as you continue to kind of you've, you've been working the phones behind the scenes and you're trying to be a lifeline for information for anae uh, john and myself all evening i do want to bring in our anae scales here for a moment um she is uh, looking at some of those power outages like you were referencing a moment ago there and, and has those for us. Anae, what, what do we, I mean, obviously, um, let, let me, there, there's a lot of them, right? Would you like to take a seat? Oh, or, 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 I can take a seat over here. Okay. okay. So, yes, across the entire state, I'm looking here, I'm sorry, across the entire state of Mississippi, it's looking like we're having at least over 20,000 power outages across the entire state. But it's definitely more than that because it doesn't even look like we have an accurate figure of what's coming out of Monroe County right now. It doesn't seem like they've counted all of the. How many? How many there. people does it even say it tracks in Monroe County? It's saying if you mouse over it. And I know that's not. Accurate. Well, that's the uh, that's the outage 43, but about like 4,600. Yeah. I think it, it, that's how many they track in the Monroe oh, County okay. area. But 43, but that maybe yeah. because of the power go outages. Go and take that to three on this that. This is on three. Here, yes. there we go. Yeah. Because the power outages mm -hmm. maybe have caused it's, the interruption on some of that too. That's true. We're saying 43 right here. But click, click on that. Let's see. That. Let's see what power um, power providers. Four County it would be South. Tom Bigby's North. So we wouldn't really have with either of those. You wouldn't have Amory. Uh, uh, that would, that I think, or even necessarily Smithville that would involve necessarily either of those. So the spots have been hit. We don't have monitoring for. I think that might be the reason. That that makes sense. We also have some in Union County. We haven't talked about that a lot. We really have all the other things that have been going on. Go and click on that. Let's find out where-ish. But we have about a thousand people out of power in Union County also. And um, obviously in Montgomery County, we've got over 3,000 people with no power as well. <laughs> That's a lot of people without power. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot of issues. That's most of the county in Montgomery, most people. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's our nay scales there. Um, she's been monitoring that Facebook, uh, social media as we've gone um, throughout the evening there. Um, so those power outages in some cases could last for the next couple of days as we continue to kind of assess uh, where things stand at this point. Um, I do want to go back to um, Montgomery County as we continue to get some reports uh, coming back from that area there. Um, our our fo folks at uh, WONA FM there continue to report multiple homes as we talked about earlier damage there on Highway 407 area and the road closed as you saw with um, Gabe and Chris a little bit ago um, because of down power lines and stuff like that but luckily no reports of injuries reported um, the, they're continuing along 407 there in Montgomery County to kind of assess the latest on that I don't know if we have Gabe and Chris available I know we did a little bit ago okay who do we have available at the moment okay good deal um, so we'll, we'll have that up here in just a moment so as we kind of look at how this all played out one of the things we're trying to figure out as we go through some of the uh, information here is just how significant were some of the injuries related to this. Of course, this storm moved through uh, and really um, put down some of its most intense effort back here when it was around Rolling Rock. We're going back here toward around 8 p.m. or so as it moved there through um, locations approaching uh, Silver City. Uh, it definitely had a strong tornado um, very easily depicted. I don't keep, uh, I don't have my system here keep the, the correlation coefficient or the debris data that far back just so it can run more smoothly than if we did. Um, but unfortunately, numerous reports of, um, of significant injuries back there. The, the question is, Daniela, are we, are we going to, um, I know some reports coming from WAPT in Jackson of uh, some fatalities according to the coroner there in Sharkey County. Um, did did y'all address that a minute ago or not? We have not. Quite. Are we going with it or are we we still just want to double check that? I can double check. Let's let let's double check that. I, I heard Pat in the background in there. Um, what did he say? What we're doing right now and the reason we're dancing for a moment here is I, I'm just trying to like we want to make sure when we say it on the air we have doubled we 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 can confirm it. But um, the chief meteorologist WAPT in Jackson reported a little bit ago reports from the coroner there of uh, multiple fatalities in Sharkey County with this. So um, and that was at the early stages of of how big this was. It went through a couple of fairly 
fairly good sized communities. I mean, you went, went right through Rolling Rock there, and then eventually uh, it went uh, near, it went through Silver City. That's where our stand door with North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters sent us back some, some um, damage pictures earlier on related to that. Um, double checking our stands in Mathis did now as he's working his way back. Um, also, yeah, okay. So this storm, as it tracked there from Chula, you know, we talked a lot about this. And let's, let's back up here for a second and where things are for just a moment. Make sure we've got that all under control before we kind of talk about where we've gone, what has happened, and why it has happened. Um, number one, let's look out here in, I just want to double check, make sure we don't have anything that's overly impressive. Uh, nope, I don't, I don't know that we have enough left to produce tornadoes from here forward. Let's look at instability to kind of double check this. And this is where we start looking at the amount of fuel available for thunderstorms, right? And so storm tracker showing about where the storms are, its expectations, it does seem to fairly well line up pretty close with what reality is. I'm gonna get this to our highest resolution possible on this as we bring it to the short term version of that. Hold on, did I get that high resolution? I have to refresh. Okay, there we are. It's populating data. Okay, so looking at the latest data, it does still show maybe just a little bit of fuel still trying to come in on the back side of this. I don't know that it's quite as impressive as what this indicates there, but as you can see, the majority of the area, I'd say the northwest two-thirds of the area, even just looking at model data, which typically is a little slow, uh, it definitely looks as though uh, things are probably past their peak. So number one thing to take away on this is I would say, let's do our go to sleep for a moment here with an extra emphasis that we need to go to sleep if we're in Amory and Smithville so that first responders could do their thing. But if you're anywhere in this zone here that I've circled on the screen, go to, to oh, hold on. Can't type and talk at the same time. I can do a lot of things to talk, but this is not one. Sleep. Okay. So all the folks here, if you're in this zone, we can go to sleep. Move on with our weekend, say our prayers, thankfulness, and of course for the folks that have experienced the damage today. Okay, so let's talk about the few spots here that aren't in this. And honestly, I could I could have gone down the leading edge of this, you know, so most of um, Lamar County probably counts as that as well. But if you're in Amory, if you're in West Point, if you're in Eupora, if you're in Ackerman, if you're in Kilmichael, if you're in Grenada, Coffeyville, Tupelo, New Albany, go to sleep. We're done. Have a good night. Um, and, you know, hopefully you did not have significant damage. We had obviously folks outside of these tornadoes that have had damage. It's been more sporadic. Um, but, but there has been some reports of damage still outside of that, especially up around Baldwin, uh, some in Guntown a little bit in Union County, a little bit of Lafayette County, a little bit of Prentice County there as well. I want to bring in our meteorologist, John DeLusic here for a moment. John? Oh, a little uh, thing I found on the weather one, I was just checking out uh, on our other weather computer. I'll get uh, it, hold Basically, on. just to show you one little thing that's uh, interesting there. I want to go back about several hours. Mm -hmm. Now remember the tornadoes, how they started off, and we always look for boundaries mm -hmm. for a tornado. And if you look at this line that I drew, basically the line of the track of that storm, and if you look right along that storm line, the peak was always about like 70 degrees, 71, 72 degree dew points, and now in the last hour or two, that has kind of downtoned and certainly has our storm. So, I mean, I'm, you know, you always look for these little boundaries, and that's what I found here. I guess uh, Matt's headed over. So that's kind of the secret yeah. sauce on this one. Well, I mean, not so secret. We knew that this could have been, yeah. could have been an issue. Yeah, this, I mean, this was the, 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 the issue was that that one storm got a lot of fuel. And if you just look at it, like gasoline, and this was like gasoline to that storm, just feeding it. And if you look at uh, all the way up until it was around the Amory area, it refueled that storm, basically. And the storm, that, you're looking for what we call dew points. I know it's a technical term, so a lot of people don't know. It's just a measure of moisture in the atmosphere. Yeah. And on that peak, I mean, right, it rode the broke. wave right yeah. there the there whole way through. It just, I mean, it was just right. You know, we talk about the ingredients. You know, we talk about how the ingredients have to combine. It's kind of like a recipe for, you know, brownies. You have to have everything in the yeah. right amount. You can make a single amazing brownie. But 
it's a lot easier to make a whole plate of brownies, right? Indeed. Because the, the recipes are typically for a whole plate, but you can make one really, really good brownie. And so this was one really, really bad brownie, one really, really bad tornado where the recipe was just perfect. It had the right strong winds aloft and it continued to produce strong tornado, strong tornado, strong tornado, lift a little bit, strong tornado. And then now the latest, it's like, it's not as intense that moisture level, I mean, still there, but it's not as intense of a difference. And, and, uh, and, uh, we, and you know, we're well, really I mean, and, and let's be honest, like yeah. they still have tornado warnings on that back up in the Huntsville area. And sure, sure. It's probably the exact same storm. Let's look. Yep. Yep. Just following it is that. Following exact that. And, same you almost, and you could almost, in all theory, just pull that line all the way right up toward the Huntsville area because if you look at the direction, it's kind mm -hmm. of been riding at the wave. It's like a, like a surfboard riding a wave. And that one surfboarder, I mean, you know, maybe not everybody gets that good wave, but that one surfboard can really go on a wave like that. And that was a wave right there. Unfortunately, about as bad as a wave can get. That's our yeah. meteorologist, John DeLusic, with that analysis. Appreciate that. Um, I, I want to bring this back here again as we retract that wave. Again, that whole storm as I'm going back in time here to when it uh, touched down in southwest Mississippi. Um, I do want to bring in our, um, our uh, Daniela Orpesa and Emily Leonard. We were talking about that potential for fatalities. Now that confirmation, unfortunately, coming down. Um, y'all, What do y'all have? So, there we go. According to ABC News, so far they have reported seven people have died in the tornado that went through Sharkey County. That's kind of where all of this started, down in Rolling Fork, Sharkey County, and then obviously it moved. But according to their, their report from the Sharkey County coroner, Angelia Easton, Seven people have died. They have not yet confirmed their ages. And it's just the beginning of the night. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm looking here. While you're talking, um, that storm. So Sharkey County would have been around the Rolling, um, rolling Fork area, right? Um, now report coming in just the last couple of moments. Um, one fatality in Humphreys County in Silver City and two injured. Um, broadcast media reports an adult male died and two children were in critical condition after being trapped in a tornado damaged home. Additional people were trapped in homes with active search and rescue efforts underway. Um, so unfortunately, you know, fast map, math on that's not good. So um, we're still at the beginning of a night. The fact that we have not heard those sorts of stories out of Winona is positive. Um, I'm still concerned uh, for Amory and Smithville. The fact that we have not heard a word out of Smithville yet, have we? Craig's still trying to get there. Craig's trying to get over there. Do, do we have we the Smith? We have Ethan ready to go. We want to talk to him. And we have Chris and Winona ready to go. Okay. Um, Let's do Chris first, and then we'll go to go up there to Amory, because I think, because I think I think we'll, we'll we'll do Chris, and then we might be better off cycling them back, um, and then we're gonna go back and try to catch it in the daylight, especially because I mean we keep getting the reports, no reports of of, of, of injuries there, so let's let's we'll bring them back in the day. Um, so Chris and Gabe. Our meteorologist Gabe Maynard, Chris Knowles, are uh, in the Winona area. They've been uh, there throughout a good chunk of the evening as they've as they've kind of monitored this um, uh, damaging storm. Uh, Chris, what do you have? Yeah, so right now I'm right off of Highway 51. So right behind me, well, over here it's a, a mobile home was over here and it got. It, it's, it's destroyed. Uh, some law enforcement officers told me that the family that was over here was able to come to the house. It's a bigger house back off in that area, and they were able to get over there, and that's how they were able to uh, make it to safety. Now, down through here, there are many down power lines right here, a lot of power lines down, and all the way down Highway 51, where we were at earlier, where they cleared those trees out. You really still can't drive there because there are a lot of power lines down right now. And as well as right here, you can probably see this actual, this light pole that's down right here. And a lot of tin and siding from the houses are in the fences. Trees are down everywhere. And so they're working right now. The crews are working to try to get that family uh, with three children. It's a migrant family, what they tell me, that was at this house there, at the, the bigger house. They're trying to get all of them out right now. 
and to safety uh, just because there are a lot of trees down and so it was hard for them to get them out. So that's what we're looking at right now off of Highway 51 here in Wyoming. Okay, um, Chris, I mean, general sense at this moment here, um, are people abiding by trying, most people trying to stay in and stay off the roads? Um, would you say that's the case? Because we're having big troubles in Amory where people are just out there and getting in the way. Yeah, they are trying to stay off the roads. Um, earlier on 407, there were a lot of people coming out, but they were turning everyone around. The roads are pretty much clear here now. Even on 407, most of the crews have gone away. So a lot of people are staying off the roads now. A lot of people are at home. I've been on Facebook, and I've been seeing a lot of them texting from their homes saying that they're safe, they're in their homes, but no, they're without power. But most people are off the roads right now. It's, it's pitch black. Ashley, you go through the main part of Winona, it's pitch black. You can't see really anything at all. Okay, that's our Christopher Knowles there in the Winona area. Hey, you and you and Gabe probably need to go ahead and head back home if you can. Um, you all have had a long night. Um, appreciate your hard work, um, and, and I'm sure we'll be back the next couple of days. Y'all be safe getting home, okay? Okay. Um, Gabe and Chris heading back uh, late this evening. Uh, we, we continue to monitor Entergy. Um, in particular, they, they have those outages in that Winona area, just trying to see if we've seen any kind of improvement. And honestly, it doesn't, uh, looks like I've, my Apple TV is disconnected. So give me a second here to get it reconnected again for a moment. Give me just a second. There we are. As we're looking at uh, those power outages that we have there back toward the Winona area. This was a strong tornado as it moved into Winona, crossed 55, moving in there. We have barely, by the way, we've barely scratched the surface on some of these damage reports that we have out there um, because of, um, I mean, honestly, just because people are still um, trying to clear the roads to get out. The, so, so we're hoping we don't have more, but as you can see, Winona there, uh, it does not look like we enter energy covers locations southeast of Winona, and this is where we know the long 407 here that we had quite a few um, trees that were down along this road. So um, it's it's conceivable there's actually quite a few more power outages than what this necessarily indicates there. Um, but as you can see, the grid going down uh, 51 all the way out, all the way down to the Vaden community, uh, as well as kind of back there closer to Duck Hill um, or south of Kill Michael, I should say. Um, all the way down into Tallah County, in southern Montgomery County as well. So a lot of power outages there. All related to that as I just kind of look around toward Webster County. It does look like Duck Hill, excuse me, is back with power, and they have power restored almost to the north side there of Winona, getting at least closer to that. So some improvements there, at least according to the folks over at Intergy. Um, so again, this was a strong tornado, and this is the same storm that then caused all the damage that we had up there in Amory. I can't emphasize that enough. Sometimes it only takes one what we call long track supercell, and everything was just wrong for this one when it put down the, this um, second or the actual. Well, it's at least third tornado, maybe fourth tornado. We'll have to see. National Weather Service will do their damage survey on that when it moved into the Amory area. Um, our um, folks there in the Amory area, we're getting kind of uh, organized so that they can come back on, give us more information as we're kind of to assess the situation. The number one headline I can tell you for Amory, and again, I'm going to put the word earlier on here big. This is not now. This is earlier, so we're just kind of going through and assessing what has happened. Um, but the number one thing I can tell you is law enforcement are borderline pleading. I mean, maybe they are pleading with, with folks at home to stay in and uh, just just not get out and get off the roadway so that they can do what they need to do to get to people's homes, to get them out, try to save them. So um, because they're still trying to work those initial calls, the cell phone service is collapsing. If you're still on Facebook Live, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill my Facebook Live here behind the scenes um, so that maybe you'll go to sleep. Go to sleep. Please get off your phone. Okay. And if you're watching us because there are power outages in the Amory area and you're on your phone, save your power. There's no guarantee that that phone is going to get charged very easily tomorrow as well. So go ahead and shut the thing off. Um, we appreciate you watching. appreciate the phone calls you made earlier. Um, but let's all do our part to try to get that cell network back up and going in the uh, Monroe County area. All right? Yeah, so let's Ethan do that. So we have Ethan and Craig ready. Wherever you want to go to, well, we, we, we were going to try to go to Ethan. And she said, hold on a second. And so I'm not sure if Ethan's back. So, okay, is, is Craig still around? 
Let's do Craig then, if we could, and we'll come back to Ethan here in a second. Um, let's talk to our Craig Ford, as you saw earlier, uh, a little bit ago. He was on the north side of, uh, okay, he's on the north side of Amory. Last time we talked to him, he had turned onto Highway 6. He's trying to find a way to get east of Amory, closer to the Smithville area, and struggling to do that. Um, Craig, can you hear me at 1252? Hey, hey, Matt, I, I, you're breaking up on me. I am still in Amory. I'm still at uh, hi Highway uh, 6 and 25 or Highland Drive and Main Street. Uh, one thing that has changed is that, you know, earlier when, when I was driving through downtown and all, you know, pretty much I had no problems other than the fact that, you know, you had things blocking the road. Well, they've now shut down traffic uh, down Main Street because you've got a cleaning, you've got folks out trying to clean all the debris out. So, uh, you know, it's baby steps. It's going to take a while to try to get all of this uh, taken care of. And, and of course, you know, daylight tomorrow is going to, uh, you know, will be a flurry of activity as if there's not enough now. Uh, I, earlier, I showed this to you. And again, I, I have lived here uh, for many, many years and I have never seen this. And I'm gonna see if I could focus on this. Just the, um, unfortunately, it's not doing very well here, but the, um, the amount of traffic that I am seeing, I'm just going to have to back out because I'm just not in a position where I could focus that shot, but you see all those flashing lights? That's in the parking lot, but out in the distance, this is on the 10 Tom Waterway Bridge. It's just not, I'm just not in a position. I apologize for that, but uh, it's just nothing but traffic. You know, it's it's a parking lot, and I'm assuming so. Uh, I'm assuming now a lot of that is just. There we go. That's a little bit better. I'm assuming that's just a lot of folks. Uh, you know, they're trying to. You know, they're trying to get in to help, or they're trying to get an idea as to you know how bad the damage is. But as as we showed you earlier, it's obviously pretty bad. Uh, as a matter of fact, if for me to get around. For me to get where I need to go, I will probably be walking. The good thing is, uh, you know, we're seeing some flashes, and you could probably help me with this, Matt. I'm hoping there's no more rain. How's it looking? I'll have to open me back up real quick here. Give me a second to get to this latest scan. Um, there are, interesting that there are Although some Although I will flashes. tell you, I'm hearing thunder in the distance. Yeah, there, there are some, some lightning flashes just south of you but i mean I, I think you're probably mainly done with the rain the issue is is that we there, there is some concern this turns into an additional flash flooding threat because it, the north side of that line just hasn't completely settled out yet um so yeah you're getting some lightning flashes close but it does not look like um, it matt i apologize I'm, I'm 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 losing i'm losing you on the phone okay um, um quick headline the bottom is line is no big stuff as you said earlier Law enforcement does not want anybody in Amory right now. Uh, it is a mess, and it will be a mess for a while. Okay, that is our Craig Ford there on the north side of Amory. Appreciate that. I um, hope you can eventually make your way home tonight. I know that it's a, it's, it's a rough night. By the way, let's shave this shot over shot one, if we could, please. Um, so... So, I mean, clearly, as you saw some issues, this is this is another shot here coming from Amory. I'm trying to figure out exactly what the building is here. There are not a lot of places where you have a decent sized parking lot like that. So I, we'll, we'll have to figure out exactly what that location is. I'm not sure, but it is in the Amory area. Clearly roof damage with the roof partially peeled off uh, into the parking lot there. There also looks like there might have been some kind of scaffolding there, so I don't know what kind of work was necessarily being done. So still some questions on that, but um, uh, one of those, that's the armory. Okay, so the armory's up on 25. So that's down, this is the farthest northwest, northeast we've been on 25. Gotcha. So, so we'll talk to Ethan in a moment. So this is, um, he is he's going to be pr probably on this part of town. So this up, 25 is going to be kind of up this direction here is where the armory is uh, there in Amory. Um, and we also had a picture come in, same person a, a few minutes ago, Holly, sending us uh, one of these shots from the Amory as well. I want to show this. Um, um, 
because it's a reminder. This is why I don't want to be on the road. Well, you know, someone someone mentioned that they they scraped their oil pan up and, and messed up their car because of um, some damage um, with what, flooding and stuff that was going on. I think either Baldwin or Guntown. Um, and so you, you're driving over this. You're going to put holes in your tire. Uh, you know, so just from a strictly selfish standpoint, you're going to cost yourself money from getting out in this tonight. What what catches my eye, John and Ana, are those trees, right? Those might have been dead trees before, but those trees um, don't look like they have very many branches on them. That's when I start seeing trees that look like that, I get extremely concerned, uh, and, and I and I very very happy for these folks here that still have homes because that that's yeah. some scary stuff now obviously there's significant damage to those homes and power lines down a lot of problems in this picture but trees don't look like that very often when homes still look like that our Ethan F Foster is there in the Amory area right now um, he's been kind of working his way up he has um, some folks there that are trying to put together the pieces as of um, almost one o'clock in the morning Ethan All right, so again, Matt, I'm here live on Boulevard Drive, just a few steps up where you saw me earlier. I went and checked on a neighbor across the street. They were fine. The neighbors were worried that he might be uh, unable to, to get to the door to get out. But anyways, want to go ahead. Uh, give me your name again, sir. Uh, my name is Caden Collins. Caden Collins here. He was here earlier kind of helping get some debris um, cleared off of the road. Uh, you're from here. Yes, sir. I actually live uh, just about four or five blocks that way on 5th Street, uh, kind of close to this boulevard area over here. Okay, so he met me here on the street as I was getting ready, started telling him about some damage he's seen. So tell me wh what you've seen so far. We won't talk about what we've heard. We'll just talk about what you've seen with your own eyes that we can confirm on the ground. Tell me what you've seen. Well, yes, sir. Apart from the obvious, you know, debris that we've seen just across boulevard here, I've seen a numerous amount of uprooted trees uh, just down here closer towards like the south, or, you know, the southern side on the outer bands of where the tornado was heading and of what I've seen there's been a numerous amount of blocked roads of you know a lot of police authority that have been blocked around here can you give me some specific roads over we talked about Main Street that kind of some specific areas just oh, for everybody watching yes sir uh, anywhere going like towards Main Street if you're heading down uh, you know, uh, Fifth Street in Amory uh, anywhere towards the northern part there was a tree that was blocking about two sections just barely able to squeeze my car through there since it's a bigger SUV but we were able to get get through. Um, luckily, you know, nothing happened there, but I've stopped and I've tried to help as many people as I could. And at one point I even had to move uh, a bunch of like bigger debris just so the uh, Monroe County's like mobile ops center could actually get out there and help people near uh, Main Street and the northern side of Amory. You mentioned some specific buildings, Piggly Wiggly, the gas station. Talk a, lot, a little bit about some some landmarks people might recognize, might uh, uh, know by the name if you mentioned them. What have you seen as far as those buildings go? What kind of damage is there to those kind of individual buildings? Can you name some of those buildings? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Piggly Wiggly uh, near the Main Street area and kind of closer to Old Highway 6 if you were to head towards Nettleton. Uh, it's not completely flattened, but it's definitely damaged enough to where it's probably going to take at least a few months to fix. And while I couldn't get a full visual, since again, we have no power here at the moment, right. and the roads were blocked off Exxon from what I remember seeing the sign was blew out it was just standing on the poles that kept it sturdy and the entire uh, roof complex for where like you would pump your gas and stuff is completely gone um, just in that area alone it's probably gonna be backed up or at least blocked for a couple days yeah, anything else you've seen specifically either along Boulevard Drive here anything else that you haven't mentioned yet anything else we can tell people to be aware of obviously Matt's gonna harp on this too because he should there's too many people driving on this road here since I've been standing here the only reason I've been able to see on camera is because there's so many headlights driving we've seen I've seen a few officers but again unless you work for Aberdeen Electric Monroe County Power or you're an officer of the law or someone that's supposed to be out here right now thankfully we have people helping clear out these roads but again if you're not doing something like that and you have somewhere to go don't come out to sightsee you're gonna make it harder for the people that need to be out here again give me your first and last name so I can thank the people for you yes sir my name is Caden Collins okay that's Caden Collins he lives around here he came to help thank you so much Caden give me a handshake right. there appreciate your help brother again Matt that's what we know right here down on the ground and again I've heard of some damage that I haven't been able to confirm for myself but again that's what we know so far down here on the ground on Boulevard Drive
Appreciate that. That's our Ethan Foster there in Monroe County in the Amory area. I mean, he basically came off of 278 there on the southeast side of town. He's just kind of worked his way up. We probably, um, um, he might be able to hear me, might not. Just um, get some video and then we probably want to cycle you on back home. Um, because unfortunately we're going to be covering this for uh, more than a few days, especially if we're having trouble even navigating folks like Craig um, back out to the west. Have not had a lot of reports out of Smithville, but I don't think it's for lack of damage. I think it's just for lack of ability to communicate. Um, we, I'm just going back here through some of my comments, my emails back and forth with folks. Um, you know, reports of trees along 25 South going into Smithville, uh, coming from Itawamba County, some damage there. So the fact that we have damage on the north side of Smithville, and when this came through, it was clearly stronger. Let me see if I can go back on my debris far enough to catch it. Uh, right. Nope. There we are. So it was definitely stronger on the south side of Smithville. So the fact that we had damage on the north side of Smithville there tells me that um, unfortunately um, things are worse than what the information we're getting. So we will have more of that information coming up tomorrow as we continue to kind of assess this. So let's reset here for a moment. Um, Chief Meteorologist Matt Lawpon alongside our meteorologist John Lelusik and Nay Scales. I want to bring uh, Emily and uh, Daniela back in here a moment just to kind of kind of recap some of these um, unfortunately uh, high end injury and um, fatality reports that we've seen from across the state on what has been um, unfortunately a deadly night in Mississippi. Good morning. Good evening, everyone. I guess I should say good morning. It is right. now 102. Thanks for sticking with us this evening. But if you can go to bed, go to bed. That is for yes. sure. We have been monitoring social media, emails, phone calls, you name it, trying to figure out what's up and what is down from what happened in Amory and all across right. Northeast Mississippi. The latest thing that we have heard is from ABC News. From They have heard from the coroner of Sharkey County that at least seven people have died mm -hmm. in Sharkey County. They're not releasing the ages just yet, but seven is the current death toll there in Sharkey County, mm -hmm. which is just outside of Jackson area. Yeah. And I think what's hard is knowing that it is one o'clock in the morning. It is very much dark there. They're still going through all of the damage. All of that is on the ground right now. And we can only hope that this is the it, you know, that we don't hear anymore. But again, just keep your prayers with those in the Delta right now. As for the governor, he did say that they have activated medical support to this part of the Delta because they are in need of it right now. He said they are surging more ambulances and other emergency assets for those affected. Search and rescue is active right now. The Mississippi Emergency Management Agency also taking to social media, just giving some updates saying, again, search and rescue assets are deployed to Sharkey and Humphreys County. Health assets assessing the local hospital there, human services assessing the needs of those affected and damage assessments to begin in the morning. And so that is down for the Sharkey County, Humphrey County area. Closer to home, obviously, our focus down in Montgomery County as well as mm -hmm. Monroe County. We have not heard too much out of Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. They are very busy yes. at this hour, but and they're very busy in Amory as well. I just got another text message from uh, Detective Andy Long. He's with the Amory Police Department, and I you know, just asked for any new updates, any new reports, and his his quote to me was, still doing rescues, needing non-essential to quit looking and to, to make that into layman's terms from yeah. from cop speak there is if you are not a first responder please go home mm -hmm. stay home yeah stay out of the city they yeah. told us earlier that you can't even get into the city mm -hmm. at this point um, lots of homes damages damage lots of trees down you saw the picture that Matt yeah. showed I mean it just looked like someone took a chainsaw to the top yeah of those trees and then businesses also sustaining a lot of damage in the downtown area of Amory as well as the north and the west mm -hmm. portions of Amory as well. Yeah and going back to what you're saying about telling people to stay off the phones even and going to sleep and staying off the roadways we do know you have a servant's heart and you're just wanting to help out but you are helping out a lot just by staying out of the way, letting these first responders do what they need to do because it's not just first responders from Monroe County or Amory. They are getting a lot of help from 
deputies in Itawamba County, first responders in Lee County. A lot of first responders from Lee County have been dispatched. Plannersville, Union, Shannon, South Lee, all going to this area to help out. So there are more cars on the roadway because they're first responders. But if again, if you don't have to be out there, please just go home, go to sleep. Yeah, and uh, the police chief, Ronnie Bowen, lots of damage, still working on possible entrapments. And the text messages are coming in very strange orders. Yeah. It's hard to, for us to get a hold of them because service is very, very spotty mm -hmm. at this point. So we're getting as much as we can to try to pass along to you guys. But I mean, we just absolutely cannot stress it enough. Please stay off the roads. Mm -hmm. There is a command center set up right now at the Piggly Wiggly in uh, in Amory there, that's where a lot of law enforcement's gathering. That's kind of their, their central hub there. Um, but they're still just trying to, to, to weed through the debris. It's dark, yeah. which makes their jobs 10 times harder. Mm -hmm. And they're just trying to, you know, make sure that they can get the people out, get them the help that mm -hmm. they need. And then another thing, crews from Tom Bigby and mm -hmm. from Northeast also out there right now. All Matt? Right. And so this whole line here um, started with the storm that when it moved back through uh, Rolling Fork in southwest Mississippi, it was this uh, same strong storm. Uh, with me on the phone is one of our storm chasers with the North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters, Stan Dora. Um, uh, I appreciate you talking with me. You were on this storm back at basically the beginning. Um, what did you see tonight? Uh, yeah, I was up on a storm up south of Cleveland, and it fizzled out. So I saw this one, I think it was at Lake Providence when I first saw it on radar, and was trying to move on it. It went tornado warned. I was trying to get ahead of it before when it crossed uh, there near Bel Belzona and Silver City, but rain was just absolutely pouring down. I couldn't see, so I had to stop and let it pass. So you... And then I just thought, well, go ahead. No, 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 I was going to say, so, so you were in a safe position rather than trying to punch the core and, and you weren't able to see the tornado itself, I'm assuming, right? No, I never saw the tornado. I was in rain so hard, I literally couldn't see past the end of my hood. Man, but, but you know, unfortunately, um, what you did see was not pleasant. No, once I got to Silver City, I started seeing damage. I took a couple of pictures, but then all you could hear was people, hey, somebody's trapped over here, you know, yelling, screaming. So I went over there and said, let me just see how I can help. And uh, came up on a pretty, i just say it was a pretty bad scene injury-wise. And uh, I'm hearing reports that they're still alive, and I hope that's the case because it, was, it wasn't looking good when I was there. So th this would have been you came up on, on the location where, where the one person um, has passed, um, and, and obviously the, the other people were in very critical condition. Yes. You know, a lot of times people see these videos on TV as storm chasers like running and yelling as they're, you know, trying to follow this. But, I, but, but you know, you guys with North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters, you know, you, you kind of act as a, a stopgap sometimes between first responders and that. Sometimes you get to see things in a very raw moment. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, that was, you know, that's why we chase is trying to get the warning out to people so what we, you know, what I saw tonight doesn't happen anymore body that it doesn't have to but well, I said these homes they were in they were not the best of construction so they had they had no chance against however strong this tornado ends up being mm. Mm. I mean, what I was seeing you know there were no wall complete wall collapse you know there was just destruction's the only way I can put it yeah, I mean, from the pictures we've seen, and I have the picture that you sent in. It looked like some kind of 18-wheeler or something that, that, that had the back ripped off of it, and you could see the, the yes. decapitated trees in the background. I mean, I'm t I'm t I take it that was a pretty common sight. Yes, it was actually worse than that where I was. But at the time, you know, I was trying to assist paramedics, so taking pictures just was nowhere near a priority. It's not, it's not a priority. We say that on the air all the time. It's not a priority. Um, I, I, I appreciate the hard work, the miles you put in on, on all these and the, the rest of the folks there at the North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters that, that help us out behind the scenes. I appreciate you calling us and letting us uh, hear your story tonight. Of course, our prayers with those folks. Anything else you want to add? I think that's it. 
think that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. Okay, Stan Dorth with North Mississippi Storm Chasers and Spotters. Thank you for joining us on WTVA 9 News this evening. Thank you. Um, so, so Silver City, you know, one of those locations where we've had at least one fatality. Um, the the off-air version, let's just say that, that the, 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 those two children, at least one of those children in particular, needs um, some massive prayers tonight. Um, but prayer works, and hopefully uh, that child can pull through. Um, that storm eventually continued to produce the tornado and likely that strong tornado when it approached the Winona area. We are getting information in from the mayor of Winona. Um, um, saying we have some major damage to homes on both uh, 82 and 51, especially on Highway 407. Several homes on 407, which is where you saw um, our Christopher Knowles and our um, Gabe Maynard earlier on today. Um, near Tom Bibbs Road to Enterprise Drive have been heavily damaged. It's coming from Aaron Dees, the mayor there uh, in Winona. Uh, crews are working to clear power lines. They have asked the public to stay back and let them clear the areas. This is important so that they can allow residents to access their damages. They will be working through the night to clear debris. 90% of Winona is without power, and it may be up to 3 p.m. Saturday before it is restored per Entergy. Um, one positive note spoke with the fire chief. Uh, and he said that a house-to-house -house welfare check uh, was done and there are no casualties. Thanking God for this. And when possible, we'll get out to help people. Um, and, of course, this is Winona, and we pull through. Mayor of Winona there, Aaron Dees, appreciate uh, that information, you know, he shared with us this evening um, as we continue to try to put things back together. So, as of 1.13 in the morning, here's what we're going to do. We're going to be suspending our... Uh, continuous coverage coming up here at 115 here in a couple of moments um, here. And so I just want to kind of do a one over on what we have uh, out there now just to make sure there's nothing of concern. I mean, obviously, this has been a, a long event and most almost all these reports of significant damage, whether it's there in Winona, whether it was in parts of Chickasaw and Monroe County and, of course, Silver City and back there toward Rolling Fork, like we talked about a minute ago. It was all the same storm that still continues to have a confirmed tornado on it back up there close uh, southeast of the Huntsville area, unfortunately. But looking at this, I do not see anything that looks like it's going to produce a tornado anytime soon based on what's left here. So what do we have going forward? Number one, if you live in Winona or Amory or Smithville, and you're still watching us on your phone, turn it off and go to sleep. We're going to go off the air here in just a minute. Um, first responders need those television, not those television, those phone lines to be able to talk back and forth um, with, with, with people that they're still trying to do some search and rescue with. Luckily, it sounds like most of that is through in Winona, but Winona got more of a glancing blow than necessarily the north side of Amory. Um, we'll have to see just how bad that damage was, and of course near Smithville. Um, over the course of this weekend, we're going to continue to have coverage. Our next broadcast starts at 5 a.m. on WTVA 9 News today. Um, you're going to see our Anae Scales, who's been here um, all through the evening. She's going to be with you with the latest information um, on what storm reports are with this and where we're going um, forward. Our um, AC Barker will be here with that. As we go into tomorrow, we'll have live coverage uh, tomorrow evening on WTVA 9 News as we continue with the tornado recovery. Um, but the headline tonight, at this point, no reports of fatalities and very few reports of injuries in the WTVA 9 News viewing area. But there have been reports of at least eight fatalities in the Mississippi Delta to this point as we go into tonight. Hopefully things improve, but keep it here for the very latest information. This has been a severe weather update from the WTVA Severe Weather Authority.